Chapter 1040. Fair Wind Antiques and Paintings, Coiled Dragon Statue. King Shui could only smile wryly at his mother's words. King Yi also couldn't hold back her laughter. The expression on her son's face seemed really helpless. For Yun Duin to come to the King clan, this was like a permanent home to her. The few women could also look after one another now that they were living together. At the same time, this could also be considered making Yun Duin's status known. Influential figures naturally knew of this situation and they had nothing to fear about the less influential figures. King Shui was already making preparation to go to the other four continents in the future. So naturally he had to settle the matters here properly before he left. Then there were also the Demon Gate and Buddha sect. This was also the reason why King Shui had never unleashed his wrath on the Buddha sect. He didn't want to make the relationship between them to grow strained. With little fatty with him now, he naturally had nothing to worry about. Over these few days at the king residence, little fatty's strength had increased tremendously once again. King Shui's medicinal pills were to help enhance his strength and stimulate his body's constitution. Since King Shui could concoct those medicinal pills like the violet key pellets, naturally he would concoct more to ensure that there were at least enough for the king clan. Even if they couldn't consume those now, the medicinal pills could be stocked up for future use. King Shui glanced at Ye Jiang and Dai King. He hoped that they would be able to join him to the other four continents when the time comes. Yu Ruyin too. He hoped that they would have attained the required strength by that time. However, he could only sigh when he thinks about the remaining time. He must go this time. If they couldn't make it this time, they could only wait for another five years. Although the span of five years wasn't long, it wasn't short either. Five years were enough for some things to change. Even if he could leave right away, he was still a little worried. He still had a little more than one year. In this more than one year, he had to settle the Lion King's Ridge. He also had to pay a visit to the ancient ruins in between before going to the other four continents. If he missed this chance, he'd have to wait for another five years. However, he wanted to go over there as soon as possible because Dai Chen was alone and he was worried. What are you spacing out for? King Shui turned around and saw Yi A Jiang by his side. Her snowy white dress and her otherworldly temperament caused King Shui to once again be in a daze. Yi A Jiang reached out and pinched King Shui's waist. King Shui had a forced smile on his face while holding on to the delicate finger that was pinching him on his waist. Yi A Jiang only tried to pull her graceful jade-like hand free from King Shui's grasp. If we're not from the same clan, I would have definitely thought that you didn't need to eat. King Shui chuckled mischievously. Yi A Jiang's face was tinted red. Who said that I'm from the same clan as you? you little pervert. She knew it too that King Shui was saying that she was otherworldly. Even so, she still felt warm in her heart when he heard this little man. This little man had decided to march onwards to even the Lion King's Ridge for her sake. Furthermore, it was a decision that he had made since more than a decade ago. Master, Yi A Jiang instantly knocked on his head. Do not call me master. When King Shui saw Yi A Jiang huffing angrily, he scratched his head. Little sister Jiang, let's go shopping. He said hurriedly. Yi A Jiang laughed out loud. Her laughter was so melodious that it was alluring, and she also didn't know how to react. They were in a very good mood after this banter and she went outside together with King Shui. Not too long after that, Dai King, Kang Hai Mingyu and Yun Duan, who had King Yun in her arms joined in too. With the little lass, there were six of them. King Shui took King Yun in his arms and they exited the king residence together. 
The four women were all beauties of the universe. In addition to King Shui, who could also be considered a beautiful man and a little princess who looked like a doll, they were quite conspicuous on the streets. There was almost no one who knew King Shui. Average people couldn't reach to such heights. They could only know some details about him through some special existences in the Fair Wind City. Even if he was going to battle one day, it would be in the high altitude, where ordinary people couldn't see. This was their first time coming out in the Fair Wind City. They weren't really planning to buy anything. They just wanted to feel the atmosphere around here. But the little lass in his arm would want this, or that occasionally. King Shui would buy anything she requested. King Shui always felt that he had fallen a little short of this little lass expectation as a father. Yi Ye Jiang and Dai King had thrown a few glances at King Shui. The sight of him holding his daughter was especially harmonious and pleasant to look at. It was needless to talk about Yun Duan. Kang Hai Mingyu was also looking at him with a smile. Without realizing it, this man had been subtly changing over all this time. Fair Wind Antiques and Paintings Kin Shui saw the signboard that suspended in front of the enormous building. This building had caught his attention because it looked very simple. This caused it to stick out like a sore thumb among the other vibrant and beautiful buildings. The words on it were done with vigorous brushstrokes. They appeared to be simple yet impressive. He could tell that this was the work of a great expert at just the first glance and it seemed to have some age. This was probably a long-established store. When King Shui came to this world, he was very interested in antiques and paintings. He was interested in finding some magic treasures. He had no knowledge of antiques and calligraphy paintings, but he had powerful spiritual sense, so he'd still come in and take a look around since he happened to stumble across these. Let's go in and have a look. King Shui smiled at the other few women. After the women nodded, King Shui led them inside with little lass in his arms. The inside of the shop was very wide. It was about 30 meters in length and width. This fair wind antiques and paintings store had five floors. The moment they went in, they were assaulted by the scent of books and scrolls. King Shui was very fond of this kind of scent. It was kind of like the fragrance of books. There weren't a lot of people in the spacious hall. The area of a thousand square meters seemed very empty, with only a few dozen people. A few guards stood at the entrance and there were also a few guards in the middle of the store. The guards were all peak Xianxian, and there was also an early martial king among them. This made King Shui felt that the fair wind antiques and paintings might have some interesting things. Since the store name had fair wind in it, this most likely implied its relation to the government. It seemed like this place had some connection to the city lord of Fair Wind City. The first floor was probably filled with the most substandard objects. He was looking at the variety of items. Each of them appeared to be very old-fashioned. There were sculptures of demonic beasts, household utensils, furniture, calligraphy paintings. They were of different sizes and colors. If these items were brought over to his previous world, they would be priceless objects. It was a pity that they could only be average objects in the world of the nine continents, with very little collection value. Objects of more than 1,000 years could be easily found here. They were nothing special even if they were above 1,000 years old. A Xianxian cultivator could live for about 500 years. Cultivators above martial saint level had the lifespan of more than 1,000 years. So these, antiques, of 1,000 years old didn't hold much value. He went along the side of the store, taking his time to look at those strange sculptures of demonic beasts. Some of them were made out of bronze, gold, silver and stone. 
King Shui scanned them with his spiritual sense and discovered that they were nothing of interest. Some of them had faint spiritual key on him, but they didn't pique his interest. So after scanning him, he switched his target to the flight of stairs that led to the second floor. King Shui signaled the few women with his eyes and then went upstairs with the little lass in his arms. The stairs were made out of violet-colored wood. This type of violet pearwood was above 1,000 years in age and was stronger than ordinary steel. He could feel how solid it was by stepping on it. It didn't make any hollow thumping noises that could be heard when stepping on ordinary wood. The moment he reached the second floor, he sensed that the spiritual key here was more intense compared to the first floor. There were also guards here, but the weakest of them was early martial king, while the strongest among them was grade 6 martial king. Through the increase in strength, King Shui could tell that the objects here were more precious than the first floor. It was a little more narrow here compared to the first floor, but there were a lot more people on this floor. Other than their collection values, antiques and calligraphy paintings could form a type of ancient key that could bring great benefits to some cultivations. Sun Yan for one could absorb the spiritual key in precious stones. Hence, many people wished to get their hands on something valuable because antiques with spiritual key were very rare. There were many useless key. It was also very difficult to sell them to suitable buyers. Although the profit was great, it was difficult to earn. King Shui took a look at the objects with spiritual key on them first, but then discovered that none of them were really useful. He shook his head. Just when he was about to leave at the end, he instead discovered something that didn't really stand out. It was a coiled dragon carved out of jade stone. The craftsmanship was quite exquisite, but unfortunately, there wasn't even the slightest trace of spiritual key on it. The only thing about it was that it was quite beautiful to look at, slightly impressive and magnificent. On top of that, the dragon carving was quite vivid and lifelike. Coiled Dragon Statue King Shui picked up the thing that looked neither like jade nor stone. But he smiled. It was about a foot long and was vivid and lifelike. Even so, it could only be considered as an attractive item. However, attractive things were abundant in the world of the nine continents. This was nothing special. Lass, is this attractive? King Shui chucked at the lass in his arms and smiled at her. King Yu was touching it with her tiny hands, as she happily agreed that it was attractive. Just then, a middle-aged man approached them from the counter. Sir, how can I help you? How much is this jade stone? King Shui casually asked. Well sir, you really have a fine taste. This is the coiled dragon statue. There's only one in our store. The owner has specially ordered that this coiled dragon statue is to be sold to only the destined one. That's enough. Just tell me how much this stone is worth. I don't have all day here. My daughter is quite fond of it so I'm thinking of buying it for her to play with. King Shui told the middle-aged man while looking at the little lass. These salespersons made sales with their mouth. They could convince people that black is white, especially in this kind of antique stores. Although he didn't know much, he knew that these people were sly. King Shui could only guess about this coiled dragon statue. He wouldn't be surprised if there was only one of this coiled dragon statue in the store, because many things here had only one in stock. For things like these without any spiritual key, no one would pick them up even if they were strewn across the streets. Even King Shui himself couldn't be sure of this coiled dragon statue so this middle-aged man standing before him was definitely only blabbering on mindlessly. Well, I'm going to give you a 20% discount. That'd be 1,000 tails of silver. The middle-aged man said in a serious tone. If this was an authentic coiled dragon statue, like the one that King Shui had in his mind, 
he wouldn't mind paying 1,000 or 10,000 taels of gold, or even more than that. 1,000 taels of silver was nothing to King Shui. However, it was still necessary to haggle when making purchases. Just like now. If people said 1,000 taels of silver and King Shui agreed to it, then the other party would definitely think that they had sold it with a too low price. Then they might find an excuse to not sell it. Or sometimes even if the buyer offer higher price, they wouldn't want to sell it. 200 taels. King Shui said, without even batting an eye. In fact, that coiled dragon statue would be sold at 100 taels if it was another buyer. But he could tell that King Shui and the women by his side weren't average people through their temperament and aura. 900 taels. I can't go lower than that. The middle-aged man said with a smile. Boss, if it wasn't for my daughter touching it, I wouldn't even want this. 300 tails. King Shui's reason almost made the other few women laughed out loud. The cheeks of that middle-aged man across him twitched. The little princess is as fair as a jade. So adorable. For your daughter, I shall offer it at 800 tails. The middle-aged man spoke through his gritted teeth, seemingly with great pain. The few women behind King Shui laughed. They couldn't hold it in anymore. The owner was indeed quite amusing. King Shui bought it with 600 tails in the end. Chapter 1041. The price of insulting someone. After King Shui purchased the statue, he immediately tossed it into the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. Although this coiled dragon statue wasn't enormous, it was very heavy. He didn't want to test it at the moment, so he decided to leave it alone, so he had something to look forward to. He took another look around and decided that there wasn't anything else of value, so he went upstairs once again. The few women also followed behind King Shui, smiling. King Shui was in a good mood after getting his hands on the coiled dragon statue. Although he wasn't sure yet if it was a valuable treasure, he was still very happy about it. King Shui's eyes lit up when he walked into the third floor. The room had become even narrower on this level, but the number of people here was about the same as in the second floor. The room was filled with the noise of well-dressed people bargaining. Most were cultivators, but there were also some wealthy merchants. There were only two guards on the third floor, but both were grade 8 martial kings. In Fair Wind City, a grade 8 martial king was considered quite decent. Besides, regardless of where they were, cultivators above Xianxin were all respected, because most of the population was made up of ordinary people. Tisk, tisk, so many beauties. Just then, a voice rang out from the stairs. King Shui looked towards the source of the voice, the little lass in his arms. A few young men stood at the flight of stairs. They seemed to have come from upstairs. The person who spoke was a handsome young man who stood in the middle. He appeared to be in his thirties, and had a pair of deep eyes, as well as a straight and sharp nose. His eyebrows made him look very heroic. He was a very handsome man. However, he was currently ogling the few women by King Shui's side not even bothering to conceal the lusty light shining in his eyes. King Shui knew that this youth was either a wealthy person or an influential figure from the way he dressed. On top of that, he had a very arrogant look on his face. He seemed very haughty and conceited, as if he stood on top of the world. Young Master Tai, such gorgeous beauties are rare sights. Why don't we treat him to some wine? The other young man beside him chuckled. He was also dressed gorgeously. This youth was taller and more strongly built compared to the first. He had a pair of bushy eyebrows and manly facial features. He was a fine-looking man that gave others the impression that he was a gentle and kind man. King Shui smiled but didn't say anything. 
The few women beside him didn't even bother to spare a glance at them. Young Master Ding, you see that little girl? I wonder which beauty is her mother. The young man who was addressed as young Master Tai laughed lightly. A dim flame was already burning in his eyes. That was the flame of lust. Young Master Tai, you'll get your answer if you ask. Don't worry, your brother is aware of your interest. I won't snatch her from you. I have my eyes on that woman who looks like a fairy in the white dress. Young Master Ding had a very lecherous smile on his face. King Shui's ears were very sharp. Although they weren't speaking really loudly, he still clearly heard it. However, he didn't have much reaction because these people were nothing more than clowns in his eyes. The few women didn't make any moves because King Shui was there. They knew that King Shui would take care of this. Before King Shui even moved towards them, the few young men had come over instead. Hello, beautiful ladies. I am the fourth young lord of the city lord manor, Tai Kangian. I'm interested in making friends with you. Why don't we introduce ourselves to each other? Tai Kangian talked in an overly familiar way, as if fearing that people wouldn't know that he was one of the young lords from the city lord manor. He then pointed at young Master Ding who was beside him. This is the grandson of the Fair Wind Antiques and Paintings Store, Ding Haiyang. What are your names, my beautiful ladies? King Shui's existence was completely ignored and this greatly annoyed him. How could anyone ignore such a handsome man like himself? The few ladies appeared to not hear him as they looked at each other. My husband, the air here is quite stale. Shall we leave? Kang Hai Mingyu said with a smile. Tai Kangyun's countenance changed at Kang Hai Mingyu's remarks. All the things he had said earlier were completely disregarded by these people. No one had ever had the nerve to disregard him, young Master Tai. Miss, you're really not giving me, young Master Tai, face. Tai Kangyan took a step forward and blocked Kang Hai Mingyu's path. Who do you think you are? Why do I have to give you any face? Kang Hai Mingyu said in a tranquil voice. There was no emotion in her eyes. Her gaze infuriated Tai Kangyan. He was handsome, from a good family background, and had seduced quite a few women from good clans through promises and threats. Many of them were discarded like old shoes as soon as he became bored of them. This time the few ladies here were all peerless beauties. His eyes were especially sharp and he had been able to tell that at least two of them were married. Although their body figure was still very ladylike, he was able to tell that they were married women through their temperament. As they said, lust could cause one to be irrational. Tai Kangyan took pleasure in loving women who had birthed a child. Now that he had met one that could definitely drive him crazy, how could he let her slip away? This was Fair Wind City. He considered himself the rule here. Bitch. I gave you a chance to redeem yourself, but you didn't take it. Kang Hai Mingyu lifted her hand. But then, King Shui reached out and grabbed her wrist. This caused Kang Hai Mingyu to look at King Shui, who was smiling, in confusion. Even the other party and the people around them were staring at King Shui. This man is so handsome. How can he be such a scary cat? His woman has been insulted by someone else and he still doesn't dare to say anything. Yes, this woman is feisty though. Such a tragedy for her to end up with such a cowardly man. Are you crazy? That's young Master Tai and young Master Ding we are talking about here. Who in Fair Wind City would dare to provoke them? I think this man has a clear view of the circumstances he is in. How can he still be a coward when his woman has been insulted? If it were me, I'd have killed that man long ago. All King Shui did was grab Kang Hai Mingyu's hand. He hadn't even said anything yet, and he was already being looked down upon by the people around them. 
The voices of everyone around them were mixed up. Even if their voices weren't too loud, he was able to hear everything clearly. Ming Yu, hold the little lass. Remember not to let her watch this. I don't think you should lift your hand against this guy. My heart will ache if your hand is soiled. King Shui passed King Yun to Kang Hai Ming Yu. Piffed. The people around them choked. What was this? They had thought that this guy was a coward earlier. It turned out that he was worried that his woman would soil her hand from delivering a slap across the faces of those people. This man really was on another level. Kang Hai Ming Yu held the little lass in her arms and let her lean on her chest. The face of young Master Tai, who was standing across them, had already turned scarlet, blue veins popping out on the side of his foreheads. King Shui could tell that the man across him was a typical spoiled brat of a rich and powerful clan. He was an uncultured and incapable spoiled brat. Without his clan's protection, he was basically nothing. You really don't know what is death. If I can't make you die today, I'll change my surname into yours. Tai Kangian bellowed in rage. Please don't do that. I can't afford to be embarrassed by someone like you. King Shui laughed while rolling up his sleeves. Finish him. Beat him to his death. Tai Kangian yelled loudly at the few people beside him. The three people behind him were all dressed like cultivators. Most importantly, the two guards on the third floor were also standing by Tai Kangian and Ding Haiyang's sides right now. After all, Ding Haiyang was nominally the young master of this fair wind antiques and paintings store. The three people behind him rushed towards King Shui. You're really not watching where you're going. You didn't even bother to ask who exactly our young master Tai is in Fair Wind City. They even shouted loudly. Ah, as soon as the person who took the lead finished speaking, King Shui immediately delivered a kick. His words immediately turned into a blood-curdling scream. The two people behind him were also sent flying. Blood leaked out of the corner of their mouths, but they weren't dead yet. King Shui had already gone easy on them. He had sent a martial king flying with just one kick. Not only that, he was also half dead. The leader among the three people who had rushed towards him was an early martial king. But even so, he had become half dead from that single kick. Just what was the strength of this young man? The two people at the back were also heavily injured from the impact. Tai Kangian and Ding Haiyang were dumbstruck by the turn of events. But soon enough, Ding Haiyang roared. Get reinforcements. Beat him to death. How will I be able to go out again if I, Ding Haiyang, am bullied by someone else in the Fair Wind Antiques and Paintings store? The two guards in the shop unsheathed their long swords at his shout. They lunged at King Shui from both sides. They heard some movements from upstairs, too. King Shui's figure didn't budge even an inch at the sight of those two people with murderous intent. He immediately delivered two slaps in the air. He didn't even have to lay a finger on the grade 8 martial king cultivators. Just his key aura was more than enough to kill them. They came and went very quickly. Just two slaps were enough to make them half dead. Do you know what I hate? King Shui slowly walked towards Tai Kangian and Ding Haiyang. The two of them were already panicking, their faces turning pale. Tai Kangian involuntarily took a step backward. Don't come near me. My father is the city lord. If you dare lay a finger on me, he won't let you get away with it. P.A. The sound of a slap on the face reverberated. A trail of fresh blood leaked out of the corner of his mouth. Is the fair Wind City's City Lord Manor very powerful? Trash like you would be shit if you were removed from the City Lord Manor. Tell me, what do you have to show off about? You are trying to hit on my woman and have insulted her. Do you think you can still live after that? King Shui lifted his leg and kicked him. Ah, 
A blood-curdling scream rang out. The fresh blood of the city lord manor's young master Ty sprayed everywhere. Allowing a trash like this to live would only be a scourge in the future. King Shui turned his gaze towards Ding Haiyang next. P.A. Just a slap to his face was enough to knock out more than half of the teeth from his mouth, and send him flying. Don't kill me. I'll give you money. I'll do whatever you want. Ding Haiyang was really terrified right now. If King Shui was able to kill Tai Kangian effortlessly, then he would be able to kill him too. He was really frightened. Even if he was dizzy from the slap, he was still aware that he could be killed at any moment now. So he got up and started begging for mercy endlessly. Just then, about ten people came down from upstairs. King Shui smiled. There were also peak martial saints among them. Not only that, there were two of them. Among the people who had arrived, there were old men, middle-aged men and young men. They were led by two old men. A look of anger flashed across their eyes when they saw the few people who had been injured. However, as soon as they saw King Shui and the few ladies, their angry looks gradually softened up. Sir, the two juniors are immature. If they have offended you, I shall make an apology to you here on their behalf. The old man was very humble and was even trembling. It was fortunate that he had witnessed a bit of the battle with the Buddha sect back then. The moment he saw King Shui, he was able to instantly recognize him. He was scared witless. Regardless of the city lord manor or the Ding clan of the Fair Wind Antiques and Paintings store, they were nothing compared to the Buddha sect. Old sir, I am a person who knows my place well. The two of them were trying to snatch my women in the name of City Lord Manor and Ding Clan. Not only that, they also verbally insulted my women. Sir, how do you think they should be dealt with? King Shui questioned in a calm voice. The old man's countenance paled. His body trembled like a leaf in the wind. I'd smash his four limbs and also his penis before handing him to you, sir. The old man's heart was dripping blood. Even so, he couldn't afford to let these two people drag the two clans down. They must be courting death to be insulting the women of other people. Help! Grandpa! I know my mistake. Spare me this once. Young Master Tai was the one who insulted someone, not me. This kind of punishment was worse than being killed. What would life be if one couldn't move or have sexual intercourse? Ding Haiyang was shouting himself hoarse. Sir, spare me this once. I shall work like an ox and work like a horse to repay you. Sir, spare me this once. I will give you a nice painting as a gift. You'll definitely like it. If you don't, you can kill me then. Please spare me this once. Chapter 1042. Heaven Shaking Drum. Seal of Xuanshan Second Part of Scroll Fragment. The Ninth Portrait of Beauty. King Shui didn't plan to exterminate them yet. Tai Kangdian was dead as he insulted Kang Hai Mingyu and nobody could save him. Ding Haiyang was beaten until he was half dead previously. He nodded. You don't have to die but I have a condition. Please say it. I will listen to you. Ding Haiyang was pleasantly surprised. He felt as if he had been reborn once more. I don't want to hear any negative news about you ever again. You can give it a try if you can do things cleanly. King Shui said as he smiled. Rest assured. I will not dare to do it anymore even if you gave me 100 guts. Ding Haiyang hurriedly said, the existence of life was the foundation of enjoyment. If one's life was lost, everything else would mean nothing. The old man was also nervous as he watched at the side. They knew that the stronger a person was, the more worthless a human's life was to them. Today's incident was sufficient for the other party to exterminate the entire Tai clan and Ding clan. For the other party to hold back, 
it must be due to all the good deeds that the ancestors of these two clans had done. You can go retrieve whatever calligraphy or painting you mentioned just now. If you can't satisfy me, you are still going to die. King Shui's gentle tone sounded just like a voice of a demonic murderer to Ding Haiyang's ears. I'll go now. Right away, Ding Haiyang bowed and said promptly before he dashed up the stairs at lightning speed. Old man, Tai Kangian is dead. Please relay this message to the city lord. I'm worried that I couldn't hold myself back from attacking. King Shui turned around and told the old man. Rest assured, sir, this old man knows just how to handle this situation. No one shall disturb you in Fair Wind City. The old man could tell that King Shui was a person who disliked troubles. It wasn't that he was afraid of troubles, but more like he didn't have the time to deal with all these trivial matters. King Shui was very satisfied with the old man's response. He saw that there were many people in the surrounding but there were basically no outsiders anymore. They were all people of the fair wind antiques and paintings as the others had already fled. Sometimes, being an onlooker came with a great price. Even if there was anyone who wanted to continue watching, they would be asked to leave sooner or later. Sir, let us go upstairs and have a seat. There are still a few items that I have collected in my humble store. I'll show them to you. If you're interested in any of them, you can have them as a token of appreciation. This was such a good opportunity. There was no way the old man would miss the opportunity to have a connection with this formidable cultivator. If the other party was pleased, the Ding clan would benefit for a lifetime without doing anything. All right, if I'm interested in any, I'll definitely offer you a good price. King Shui smiled and said, he turned his head to look at the few ladies. King Shui, we'll return first. Come back early. Kang Hai Mingyu smiled at King Shui. That's fine too. He walked over to hug and kiss the little lass after he finished speaking. He then watched them walk down the stairs. For the first time, Fair Wind Antiques and Paintings had closed its door. King Shui felt that it wasn't too surprising that such an incident happened. If people of Ji Yunlang's caliber could feel how terrifying he was, then these people who were still in the Fair Wind City would never have thought of it. Besides, he didn't look too old either. The higher they went, the smaller the area became. The fifth floor was no longer open to the public. King Shui and the old man entered the fifth floor while the others all waited on the fourth floor. The old man respectfully gestured for him to take a seat and personally poured King Shui some tea. You know me. King Shui looked at the old man with a smile. I was fortunate to have seen you once. The old man respectfully replied. King Shui guessed it right away. It must have been during the battle with the Buddha sect. Otherwise, it was impossible for him to be so respectful after only seeing him once before. Since he had seen him before, this saved King Shui a lot of troubles. Just then, Ding Haiyang came over with a large chest in his hands. He then gently placed it down in front of King Shui. Sir, I have bought this from a peddler. You may have a look, Ding Haiyang said while he opened the chest. His hands trembled as this was a matter of life and death. If he couldn't satisfy this person before his eyes, disaster would befall on him. The large chest was very simple and unadorned, yet it looked sturdy and was also very heavy. However, Something familiar caught King Shui's eyes at the very first glance right after the chest was opened. It was a familiar-looking scroll of painting. Very familiar indeed. All this time, he never knew what these scrolls of paintings could be used for. He already owned eight of these scroll of paintings, and now, he saw another one. Still, he was elated about it. The Portrait of Beauty. 
He didn't even need to open it to be certain, because the materials used for the painting were very unique. Hence, he didn't need to open and look at it to confirm that it was a portrait of beauty. The ninth portrait of beauty. King Shui decided not to open the scroll. Instead, he looked at the other items. There were only two other items, but these two items made King Shui very excited. Perhaps he should say that it was one of them that made him very excited. The heaven-shaking drum. It was an exquisite small drum with the size of a foot. There was nothing alongside it that could be used to hit the drum. There was a trace of a desolate and ancient aura in its exquisiteness. However, not even the slightest trace of spiritual ki could be felt from it. King Shui smiled. He thought of the coiled dragon statue from earlier as well as the items back then, the spirit gathering lamp and the soul shake bell. These items need to be refined. He wondered to himself if he really wanted to be a beast tamer in the future after he saw all of these items. The last remaining item was a worn out page and it actually had a faint spiritual key on it. He reached out to pick it up. It was only then that he saw the words on it. Seal of Xuanshan, second part of scroll fragment. King Shui frowned. What could this be? Seal of Xuanshan, second part of scroll fragment. He flipped it open to take a look, and discovered that this was a battle technique. Seal of Xuanshan, second part of scroll fragment. He had to search for the seal of Xuanshan, first part and third part of scroll fragment before he could cultivate it. King Shui continued to read the description below, but it was all over the place and difficult to understand. However, he also knew that this was a type of absolute seal battle technique, a spiritual battle technique. From the name itself, it sounded like it was extremely powerful. Unfortunately, he couldn't cultivate it. Sir, please have a look. Ding Haiyang wasn't that confident when he saw King Shui looking through all these items with a calm expression on his face. It was because he didn't know the values of all these items. He actually felt that the best item in there was the scroll fragment, but it was a pity that the scroll fragment couldn't be cultivated. As for the small drum, it couldn't make any sound and was indestructible no matter how it was hit. On the contrary, he had seen the portrait before. The woman in the painting was as beautiful as a saint. Initially, he was reluctant to take it out, but he had babbled about it when they were downstairs. Hence, he had to take it out for the sake of his life. That scroll of painting was the most precious item in his heart. If it wasn't for the matter of life and death, he wouldn't have spoken about this scroll of painting. Acceptable. It felt as if King Shui's words had lifted a heavy rock off from Ding Haiyang's heart. At the same time, the old man also brought few or more few items over. A pair of jade lions abundant with spiritual key. It was fully charged with it. There was also a jade pendant. He could feel a cooling sensation with just a touch of it. It had a slight effect in boosting the spirit energy, which could slightly increase the recovery speed of spirit energy. King Shui was very interested in these. There were also a few other items, but King Shui wasn't interested in them. However, his own clan might need some of them. Old man, if you can't bring yourself to give these items up, I won't force you either. If you can give them up, I'll buy them. Offer me a price. King Shui said with a smile. You're kidding, sir. If you like it, I will be very glad too. These items are nothing too pricey. The old man told him with a smile. King Shui laughed too. The old man actually hoped that King Shui would owe him a favor. Perhaps if not for a favor, then it was to get closer to him and to bridge their connections so that if something happened in the future, maybe King Shui could lend him a helping hand. He he, this is for you. 
See if you're satisfied with it. King Shui took out a bottle of tiger vitality pills as well as a bottle of constitution nurturing pills and left it on the table. Sir, I've said that these are gifts too. Are you not satisfied with the items I'm giving? King Shui was still smiling when he asked. I dare not. The old man quickly picked him up. With a wave of his hand, King Shui stored all the items into the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal then stood up. I'm going to stay in the Fair Wind City. I won't let anyone bully the people of the Fair Wind City. But I do not wish to see any of your people bully the weak either. Right after he finished his sentence, King Shui's figure disappeared into the staircase in a flash. In another flash, he was gone. As soon as King Shui left, the old man sat on the chair. His back was already soaked in cold sweat since long ago. He then picked up the two porcelain bottles and opened them. His hands trembled when he saw the medicinal pills in the porcelain bottles. It was worth it. These were much more expensive than those few items. King Shui didn't think about the matter with the Tai clan from the city lord manor of the Fair Wind City anymore. He knew that the Ding clan's old man would handle this. He would pay a visit to the Cold Ice City tomorrow. It was about time he visited Hai Dongqing to see how she was doing recently. The cultivation speed of the lady on the portrait of beauty was simply indescribable. It seemed like there was no problem on achieving the realm of martial emperor. He wasn't certain what Hai Dongqing's current strength was. It should be more or less the same as his. After he went back, the ladies asked the situation and King Shui told them what had happened. A matter like this was nothing to the ladies anyway. Death was not sufficient for profligate sons like Tai Kangian. King Shui gave Luan Luan the jade pendant and then distributed the other items to the few ladies and the children. Everyone had their own share, especially the children. He had an early dinner, and then he entered the realm of the violet jade immortal. King Shui picked up the coiled dragon statue first then scrutinized it for a moment again. He then activated the key of the ancient strengthening technique and tried to refine it. When the key of the ancient strengthening technique was channeled into it without any obstruction, King Shui was ecstatic. It was indeed the coiled dragon statue. It was something akin to the spirit gathering lamp, only that it increases the ability of demonic beasts to resist attacks. This also meant an increase in the demonic beast's defense. The spirit gathering lamp increased the five elements energies of demonic beasts in terms of offense, spirit energies resistance. The coiled dragon statue on the other hand increases resistance to physical attacks as well as one's defense. Very quickly, he had completely refined the coiled dragon statue and filled the quota of the day. King Shui was already extremely happy with just the coiled dragon statue. After he put it down, he picked up the heaven-shaking drum. Earlier on, a trace of spiritual key had appeared on the coiled dragon statue after it was refined. This type of precious treasure was truly beneficial to him. He wasn't sure how others would use it. Was he supposed to keep holding it? It would be useless if he kept it in the interspatial silk sachet. However, he could use it if he put it in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. Ever since he owned the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, his fate started to gradually incline. It could be said that he wouldn't be who he was today without the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. This was a type of formless coincidence. Perhaps this was an inscrutable twist of fate, some sort of unknown profoundness. This was the so-called fate of the mystery within a mystery. King Shui couldn't tell what was this heaven-shaking drum made out of. It had the size of a foot, but it weighed around 300 jin. He hit the drum lightly with his hand, but no drumbeat was heard. It was as if he was hitting a stone. Feeling slightly apprehensive, he refined it for a little while. 
when the key of the ancient strengthening technique was also successfully channeled into the heaven-shaking drum, he wanted to let out a blissful roar. As long as the coiled dragon statue and heaven-shaking drum were refined to the same grade as the spirit-gathering lamp, the demonic beast's overall strength would increase by about a fold. This meant that the golden-scaled dragon elephant, five-headed demonic spider and the rest would also grow more powerful. It would be great if he had another treasure to enhance speed. But for now, he was already feeling content. When he was done refining these two things, he finally shifted his attention to that familiar-looking scroll of painting. He was very curious as well. Just who would be the woman in this ninth portrait of beauty? Was she someone that he knew? Chapter 1043. She's the lady on the portrait of beauty, Dongqing's breakthrough. King Shui looked forward to the twelve heavenly meridians as he thought about it. He slowly picked up the painting scroll and unrolled it by slowly pulling downwards. As the painting was revealed, the person on the portrait came into King Shui's view, starting from her dark silky hair. King Shui's heart stirred when he saw her eyes and he quickly unrolled the scroll of painting at once. The lady in the portrait was dressed in plain white clothes. Her sleeves were a little long and less than half of her palms was uncovered. Even so, it was aesthetically harmonizing for King Shui to look at. Her body figure was gorgeously slender and she had the aura of a sacred scent. King Shui stared into the beautiful orbs of the lady on the painting. Her eyes weren't as brilliant as the stars. They weren't otherworldly like Yi A Jiang's or deep like Kang Hai Ming Yu's. They also weren't extraordinarily refined like Dai Chen's or elegant like Hai Dongqing's. King Shui couldn't quite put a finger on it. If he really had to put it into words, then her eyes were somewhat elegant, somewhat refined, somewhat pure and deep. The sacredness of her orbs was alluring. She seemed to have a wave of strange energy within her that could make one have the urge to worship her. She was a woman of unparalleled beauty, and this wasn't even taking into account her appearance. She was beautiful for her aura and the feeling she gave to others. Tan Tai Xuan. The ninth portrait of beauty was Tan Tai Xuan. Although he wasn't completely surprised, he was still a little surprised. He wasn't that surprised because he had already thought beforehand that Tan Tai Xuan's beauty was on with those of the ladies in the portraits of beauty. He was surprised because he had coincidentally met her before. The beauty he had met was actually the ninth portrait of beauty, even though he had only been fated to meet Tan Tai Xuan once. King Shui was a little puzzled. He had met some ladies only after he had seen their portraits of beauty, and he had met some ladies before seeing their portrait of beauty. Yet he had still met them all the same. Why did he always seem to be able to meet them? Each lady on the portraits of beauty was gifted with outstanding talents. They were destined to be extraordinary and they were all peerless beauties. Hence, it wasn't too strange for anyone who got their hands on the portraits of beauty to be able to meet the real ladies on the portraits. But then again, the chances of that happening shouldn't be this high. He thought about how, if he had missed this opportunity, he would have never known that Tan Tai Xuan was one of the beauties from the portraits of beauty. The portraits of beauty were the most perfect women that the art maestro had sketched out, from their body shape to their grace, attire, and skin. These were all complete fantasies. To be able to meet this kind of beauty was a great fortune to one's eyes. King Shui had met Tan Tai Xuan once at the southern sea country, but she was wearing a veil back then, so he had only seen those divinely graceful eyes of hers and the outline of her gorgeous face. However, he was also able to see her beautiful jade-like nose, and her alluring and graceful lips from the painting that caused King Shui to be in a daze for a very long moment. 
Among the nine women on the portraits of beauty, he had been involved with eight of them. However, King Shui posited there was one more woman by his side that was also on the portraits of beauty. He was already able to guess it, although it might not necessarily be the case. He had already collected nine out of the twelve portraits of beauty. One of the beauties in the remaining three portraits should be by his side. He was quite confident about it due to the twelve heavenly meridians. The southern sea and the southern viewing continent. What were the chances of him visiting the locations? He was about to leave for the other four continents. It seemed like he wasn't going to be involved with every one the ladies on the portrait of beauty after all. Forget about it. I'm not going to think about this for now. King Shui got up and hung this portrait of beauty on the magnificent mountains and rivers screen, side by side with the eighth portrait of beauty. Looking at these portraits of beauty was already a great pleasure in itself. No wonder that Ting Haiyang had been hiding this portrait. If he hadn't needed to save his own hide, he probably wouldn't have taken it out. However, he mentioned that he had gotten this from a peddler, meaning he didn't get his hands on it through an honest method. He must have pulled some strings. Cultivate and then refine. The coiled dragon statue and heaven-shaking drum had reached grade one quickly. He was also very pleased to see that the spirit gathering lamp's effects had been increased by quite a lot. However, they were still only grade one, so he would have to give them some time. The spirit gathering lamp was currently only grade five, which depressing King Shui. During the first five grades, it leveled up very fast. However, after it hit grade five, it hadn't leveled up for a very long time. Even so, the additional strength that it had gained was very powerful. King Shui was very satisfied about that, so he was also hoping that the coiled dragon statue and heaven-shaking drum could reach grade 5 soon too. King Shui had cultivated the great golden Buddha palm to the sixth wave. It could now be considered King Shui's greatest killing technique. Of course, this was other than the marrow nibbling golden silkworm in the central palace blood essence pool, because King Shui wasn't too sure about it either. That little thing was terrifying enough, even in its current state. Other than that, the demonic beast armor manifestation seemed to have reached a bottleneck. Although it was in its infancy, it had grown another meter in size compared to the earth diamond bear. However, its rate of growth had slowed down. In any case, it was already quite decent right now. One shouldn't be too impatient when it came to cultivation. The next day, King Shui got up and made his way to Cold Ice City. Time was running out and New Year was just around the corner. After New Year, it would be about time for them to leave for the northern sacred Lu continent. He was slightly nervous, but still really looked forward to it. The number of times he had visited Cold Ice City could be counted on his fingers. King Shui had deep and good memories of this city. Despite the freezing temperature there, he felt warm in his heart because his beloved Hai Dongqing was here. He felt lonely out there because that the person he loved wasn't in that place. His loneliness stemmed not from the city he was in but rather his innermost heart. Snowflakes were dancing in the air of cold ice city as usual. The current snow wouldn't stop for at least another three days. King Shui made his way towards the familiar manor. That was the manor that Hai Dongqing stayed alone in. The current heads of the clan were Hai Dongqing and Hai Dongying. Hai Dongying usually handled the affairs of the clan. Hai Dongqing would only step forth when there were issues that he couldn't handle. The manor was very quiet. Two guards were standing silently at the entrance. Sir, please halt. One of the guards who appeared like a snowman moved in front of him and blocked King Shui's path. He was very polite. King Shui was equally covered in white snow right now. 
King Shui knew that Hai Dongqing was around. He could sense her aura. I am here to look for Miss Hai. King Shui informed the guard with a smile. What is your name, sir? I shall help you notify her. The man who was blocking King Shui's path asked politely. Just tell them that I am King Shui. King Shui. That name was too familiar among the entire Hai clan. He looked at King Shui doubtfully for a moment. The other guard had already turned around and had run inside of the manor. Mr. King, this way please. The man hurriedly invited him in respectfully. Quite a few of them had heard of King Shui's name, but not many knew him personally. Even so, he wasn't worried that this visitor was an imposter, so he immediately led King Shui inside after he snapped back to reality. The sound of footsteps traveled in his ears. King Shui saw that familiar silhouette of the peerless beauty whose grace was bone deep. King Shui was the son-in-law of the Hai clan. They had held a wedding reception before. The two guards tactfully returned to their posts by the entrance. There was a room near the entrance with two guards resting inside. They guarded the entrance in shifts. Hai Dongqing stared at King Shui for a moment before throwing herself into his arms and embracing him tightly. King Shui wrapped his arms around her delicate waist tightly too. A faint fragrance wafted into his nose. Ching Er, why have you become thinner? King Shui, Hai Dongqing felt sweetness in her heart. She was embracing King Shui so happily that she was at loss for words. The snowflakes that fluttered in the air fell onto the two lovers who were embracing each other tightly, causing the scene to appear even more sacred and pure. Ching Er, have you been well these past few years? After a long moment, King Shui looked at the face that was as beautiful as a painting and as graceful as a poem. I've been great, but I missed you a lot. Did you miss me? Don't lie to me. Hai Dongqing chuckled and cupped King Shui's handsome face with both of her hands, smiling. She was very happy right now. She didn't expect to suddenly see King Shui. Although she had also seen him in the past a few times, this was different. This time was their first time seeing each other since they got married. I rushed here because I couldn't stand missing my Qing Er any moment longer. King Shui blinked and smiled at Hai Dongqing. The elegant woman felt very sweet in her heart. Although she had already broken through that stage of relationship with King Shui long ago, she still felt shy and charmingly rolled her eyes at him. The feeling of being in love was an unusual feeling. It made even the soul tingle. Hai Dongqing lifted her head to look at the snow. Carry me to my room. She said shyly. Her arms were wrapped around King Shui's neck. Her voice was gentle, yet sounded as if it was imbued with some sort of magic. King Shui immediately slid his hand around her waist and lifted her up. He was already kissing on her sexy lips while they were making their way to her room. The living room's door was kicked open. Inside, the room was warm like the spring season. King Shui was very rough. He sucked wildly, as if wanting to suck Hai Dongqing's delicious tongue over into his mouth. They only pulled apart when both of them began to run out of breath. King Shui smilingly looked at Hai Dongqing's lips that were already slightly swollen. In addition to the red tint on her face, she was exuding a charming aura right now. Her beauty was shaking him to his core. King Shui's hands made their way onto her perfectly round, perky, and beautiful rear. He looked at her face that was as beautiful as an immortal while kneading her butt with his hands. They stared into each other's eyes while they indulged in the ecstasy that caused their hearts to race. One of his hands left and made its way towards Hai Dongqing's breast. Her breast was so full that it couldn't even fit into his palm. He alternated between squeezing it and letting it go. The sensation caused Hai Dongqing to moan softly, 
much to her embarrassment. Strip. I really want it. King Shui looked at Hai Dongqing excitedly. Hai Dongqing's face grew even redder as she stripped her clothes shyly. It took a moment for her fair breasts to be exposed. In that instant, her breasts bounced right out. When Hai Dongqing saw the infatuation in King Shui's eyes, she felt sweet in her heart and shut her eyes. I like it the most when you look at me. King Shui planted a kiss on her lips and said. She opened her beautiful eyes shyly and watched King Shui sucking on her delicate nipple. A wave of pleasure coursed through her entire body. It was as if tears were coming out of her eyes. They had sex with each other until the wee hours of the morning without even having dinner. Hai Dongqing's body was very sensitive. Not long after they started, she had already orgasmed from King Shui's kisses. At the end, she really couldn't withstand his relentless attack. After this round, his strength hadn't really increased. However, Hai Dongqing's strength was decent enough. King Shui found some medicinal pills that were suitable for her and performed the gold needle acupuncture to stimulate her hidden potential. These things enabled her to break through to Martial Emperor. Hai Dongqing, who had just broken through to Martial Emperor, seemed to be slightly astonished. She had broken through so easily. Everything seemed a little unreal to her. She actually had no idea how strong King Shui was, but she had always believed that he had been very powerful, since very long ago. By the time they finished doing all these, the sky had already turned bright. The King clan has now moved to the Fair Wind City. Mother wishes to see you. King Shui looked at the woman who was now an early martial emperor. She hadn't even used the hallow pill yet. Oh, although I have met mother before, I still feel a little worried right now. Hai Dongqing came out feeling fresh from a bath after her breakthrough. She winded her jade-like arms around King Shui's neck as she spoke nervously. What are you worried about? Mother is a very amiable person. Chapter 1044. After arriving at the other four continents, we can have eight to ten children. King Shui could not help but laugh at Hai Dongqing's childish behavior, so he tried to comfort her with words. After a breakthrough to martial emperor, an aura of power lingered around her. The aura, on a beauty, would emit an aloof energy that made it difficult for people to get close to her. In the morning, the two of them made breakfast and ate together. Hai Dongqing was very happy as her face lit up with a warm smile, and she gazed tenderly at King Shui. Ching Er, after we finish our meal, let's go to visit your brother and Hai clan's elder. King Shui smiled. Time was on their side. They could afford another night's stay before heading to Fair Wind City. Hai Dongqing nodded gleefully. She knew that it was because of her that King Shui was very accommodating towards Hai Clan. He loved her and loved everything related to her. Thinking about it, Hai Dongqing softly approached and kissed King Shui across the dining table. Stunned, King Shui lifted his head and gazed at his shyly smiling woman. To the best of his recollection, it was the first time she had courageously taken the initiative. King Shui laughed and embraced Hai Dongqing on his lap. This meal consisted entirely of them feeding each other, of course, not excluding lots of touching, kissing. By the time they finished their meal it was already getting late. Thus, they rushed to the Hai clan residence. It wasn't far. They could directly take the carriage and the two men driving them were also the ones responsible for guarding the gate. After half an hour, the carriage stopped at the main door of the Hai clan residence. King Shui and Hai Dongqing came down and headed towards the house. The stones on the road amplified the sound of their footsteps. Most of the Hai clan members were still living here. Young mistress. The door guards respectfully greeted Hai Dongqing and she nodded as she walked into the residence with King Shui. 
Hai Dongqing was originally the clan head, but the position had been passed to Hai Dongying. Hence, people often greeted Hai Dongqing as the young mistress, and Hai Xia as miss. King Shui wasn't clear about this, but he did not question it as he wasn't concerned about it. He knew that no matter what happened, Hai Dongqing had an important status in the family. Upon entering the house, there were children playing around and King Shui knew they were Hai Xia's children as he had seen him before. The kids greeted Hai Dongqing gleefully shouting, Aunt! King Shui laughed as he heard this appellation. Hai Dongqing blushed as she gently patted the heads of the children and glared at King Shui. Hai Dongqing's age was similar to Hai Xia's, but Hai Dongqing was one generation above Hai Xia. Hai Dongqing was the aunt of Hai Xia, so the manner in which Hai Xia's children addressed Hai Dongqing was appropriate. Do not laugh. Sure, sure. I won't laugh. Tonight I have something to discuss with you. King Shui said with a smile. Soon after, they met Hai Dongying, Hai Xia and Hai Long. After their first meetup, Hai Xia and Hai Long respectfully greeted King Shui as uncle. The issue was not whether they were older or younger. Regardless, they had to adhere to seniority in the family hierarchy. Elders had to be respected, but those who were stronger had to be respected as well. They were not reluctant to address King Shui as uncle. At the same time, they were being respectful toward Hai Dongqing. How would she feel if her nephew addressed King Shui directly by name? After greeting Hai Dongying, King Shui's sudden visit brought a smile to their faces, uplifting their hearts. The current joyful atmosphere within the Hai clan was caused by King Shui. Aunt, today you look different from usual. Hai Xia said after taking a long glance at Hai Dongqing and failing to hold back her thoughts. Hai Dongqing's face blushed red like the crimson sunset against the evening snow. Seeing this, King Shui was aroused. She thought that it was probably due to spending the night with King Shui. Perhaps that was the reason. Moreover, her niece liked to tease her. Aunt, I'm not talking about that. It's not what you think. Hai Xia laughed as she tried to explain and Hai Dongqing smacked her perky butt, making a loud noise. King Shui chuckled. Since Ching Er has already made a breakthrough to Martial Emperor, Xia was probably trying to talk about this. What are you shy about? Hai Dongqing was stunned as she came to a sudden realization and blushed even more. She pinched King Shui in anger before calming down and laughing along. The rest were so shocked about her breakthrough that none of them laughed along with the joke. The people present were all of Hai Dongqing's closest friends and family. Even though she was shy, it wasn't a big deal and Hai Dongying was reassured that Hai Dongqing was happy and blissful. His younger sister had reached martial emperor in such a short time. In Green Cloud Continent, she was already the family's pillar of support and she still was. Everyone entered the living room. High Clan's elder no longer concerned himself with the High Family matters, and hence would not partake in any High Clan discussion. He led his life gardening, planting and playing with the grandchildren. As one got older, it became pleasant to look at the younger generations. The greater the gap the closer it felt. Looking at the current situation, King Shui could foresee having to stay for the night. They even invited Hai Clan's elder for dinner, as they wanted to let the elder enjoy the happy blissful atmosphere. After all, Hai Clan had someone in the martial emperor cultivation realm. This was a surprise for the Hai Clan. They were blessed with incorporeal wealth and potential. If news of the existence of a martial emperor in Cold Ice City spread, it would shock many. This would make the High Clan, the dominant force of Cold Ice City. King Shui knew that several regional forces, such as Demon Gate and Buddha Sect, 
were tracking his whereabouts. Hence, King Shui and Hai Clan guessed that they would have found out quickly. Acquiring information was no challenge for these big powers. Furthermore, King Shui never wanted to hide anything. Even if they did not know about it, King Shui would mention it. This meal was celebratory, and one by one, they congratulated Hai Dongqing. They knew that her fast progress was greatly due to King Shui. During the meal, Hai Dongqing mentioned that she would like to visit the King clan together with King Shui, as well as inform them that King clan had already moved to Fair Wind City. Aunt, uncle, since it's rare for you to visit, you should stay for the night and head off tomorrow instead. Hai Xia told King Shui and Hai Dongqing. King Shui nodded. Besides there was no rush and he could afford one or two more days. He took out some pills that were similar to the Tiger Vitality pill and shared it with them. He had crafted a decent quantity of them. These pills were quite useful, but after taking them, there was a long duration before they could be used again. It was a short trip anyway. Thus, when the sky began to darken, King Shui returned with Hai Dongqing to her manor. He left her to cultivate and entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. The battle skirt of Golden Back Giant Crocodile Emperor had been prepared for her, and together with the Violet Jade Sword made of pure gold, it was adequate for her to replace her previous weapons. Previously, these battle armor, battle skirt, as well as the violet jade sword were made as spares. Hence, this time there was no need to specially make them for the occasion. Furthermore, most of the time was spent with Hai Dongqing's so he used the remainder of his spare time to enter the realm of violet jade immortal to cultivate. The realm of Violet Jade Immortal had reached the seventh level, so King Shui did not want to waste any time. One day within the realm of Violet Jade Immortal was like 100 days on the outside. Thinking about the future made him more determined to work harder than ever. Before entering the realm, he explained to Hai Dongqing that his progress had reached an important stage whereby he had to cultivate every single day. Hai Dongqing knew the importance and hence allowed King Shui to prioritize his cultivation because they still had ample time to spend together. Meals were consumed while cultivation progressed every day. Unknowingly, his abilities had slowly improved with the course of time. By the time he took the opportunity to look back on things, the path he had tread had become long and continuously wound up and down into the distance. Reminiscing about things that happened in the past, they seemed fulfilling, way more meaningful, enriching and gratifying than his previous life. Men do not wish for glorious achievement but a life with no regrets. By the time King Shui was done cultivating, it was almost the second day. As King Shui cultivated, he used nine continent steps before entering the realm of Violet Jade Immortal and after he was done with his practice. This way, he could utilize the nine continent steps twice a day. Returning from his cultivation, Hai Dongqing was also cultivating in her backyard, familiarizing herself with her sudden increment of ability. King Shui watched her from afar, without making any movement. After about half an hour, Hai Dongqing then decided to take a break. She lifted her head and glanced around, spotting King Shui silently watching her. In a heartbeat, she was full of spirit and energy as she ran towards him. She appeared as though she was treading gracefully in the air, exuding an ethereal feeling. Why didn't you call me when you got here? Hai Dongqing hugged King Shui and spoke languidly. King Shui hugged this elegant and delicate woman tightly. Only he could see this side of her. In the past when King Shui had interacted with her, he could only see her independence, see her as a pillar of support for a family. Never had he dreamt to be able to see such a womanly side of her. Oh my Ching'er is getting more alluring. If this goes on, 
I predict I'll have to keep staying here, said King Shui as he teasingly touched her earlobes. Then you shouldn't leave. Ching Air can support you. Hai Dongqing smiled, beaming with joy. Ching Air knows about the other four continents, yes. I've told you about them before. King Shui laughed as he tried to divert the topic. Besides, this was the topic he wanted to discuss with her about. Yes I'm aware. Are you heading to the other four continents? Hai Dongqing asked in astonishment, tightening her grasp on King Shui's arm. Yes. Hence, we should try not to have any children. King Shui smiled. Hai Dongqing was not aware of the reason hidden behind his words. After hearing what King Shui said, Hai Dongqing was stunned. Her body could not help but quiver and her heart felt bitter. She knew the situation with the other four continents and the five continents. He's heading towards the other four continents. If she was pregnant with his child, then she would not be able to go to the other four continents. Sure. We shall not have children. King Shui, Qing Er will be your woman forever. Hai Dongqing replied as tears fell uncontrollably, small crystal beads trailed down her cheeks. My dear, why are you crying? King Shui tried to pacify her but the tears wouldn't stop flowing. They were impossible to stop. Do you dislike Qing Er? What nonsense are you spouting? You don't know how much I cherish you and how much I want to protect you my dear. Don't try to hide things from me. Do you not like children? King Shui looked passionately at Hai Dongqing and laughed. Nobody said that. I already have a number of children and I love children. Why do you not want me to have children then? I love kids as well. Hai Dongqing glanced at King Shui nervously. If we have children here, you'll have to stay here for at least 20 years. Don't you want to head to the other four continents with me? We can have children there. We can even have eight to ten of them. Do you think I'm a pig? Eight to ten. She felt relieved after hearing King Shui's reassuring words. She lifted her head and saw his smirk, and she suddenly came to the realization that she had been teased. What a jerk. All you do is bully me. King Shui, I want to head to the other four continents, but I'm aware of my lack of strength. Hai Dongqing felt a sense of disappointment, she too wanted to go to the other four continents. If she reached King Shui's level, they would probably remain at the other four continents in the future. Chapter 1045, The New Year, King Shui's Hesitation, Grade 8 Soul Shake Bell. After hearing Hai Dongqing's words, King Shui got a little anxious. According to ordinary circumstances, it would be difficult to anyone who wanted to head to the other four continents, not just her. Could it be that he had no choice but to make them stay here for another five years? This problem was rather complicated as he had promised to bring him to wander about the world of the nine continents. However, he did not think that it would be divided into two portions, and a round trip would take ten years to do so. If Dai Chen wasn't there, he wouldn't have been so worried. He was at a loss now since he had originally planned to head there five or even ten years later. However, since he intended to go over, he decided to go ahead with his decision. With your husband around, there will be hope. Trust in me. King Shui took out two hollow pills as he said this and had Hai Dongqing consume them. It was successful. The two hollow pills increased Hai Dongqing's strength by 200 stars. This surprised Hai Dongqing so much that she could not utter a single word out. King Shui then handed her the battle skirt and the violet jade sword to Hai Dongqing, which she happily donned. She then sensed her strength and looked at King Shui. She wondered what level her man had attained. When she heard that King Shui wanted to go over to the other four continents, she was already suspicious. She doubted if he had 5,000 stars strength. However, the moment she held the weapon, she understood everything. 
Do you feel confident now? King Shui laughed while looking at the speechless Hai Dongqing. Hai Dongqing nodded her head with all her strength. It's late now, we should rest. King Shui hugged Hai Dongqing with a smile and disappeared to the back of the courtyard after a few flashes. The next day, they bid farewell to the Hai clan and rode the golden-scaled dragon elephant to Qingfeng city. Time was running short. He should rest properly before the new year and start to make some plans. Once he left, there was no saying what would happen. Before noon, they had reached King Clan at Qingfeng City. When King Shui and Hai Dongqing appeared in the King Clan, many people recognized her. Back then, during the funeral of the old ancestor of Heavenly Palace, she came together with the Hai Clan. Furthermore, she knew some people in Green Cloud Continent, Dai Chen and Dai King were amongst them. As he introduced her to his mother and family, King Yi pulled on Hai Dongqing's arm and said, I don't know what is so good about this brat. All his women are so outstanding and beautiful. King Yi shook her head helplessly and continued to speak to Hai Dongqing. King Yi was being very welcoming and that made Hai Dongqing relaxed. Hai Dongqing then gave out the gifts that she had prepared for King Clan. Even the children got gifts. In fact, each and every one of them was given gifts. She had insisted on asking King Shui in advance. Not only did she prepare gifts for King Shui's children, but she even prepared gifts for King Zi's children as well. King Shui saw Hai Dongqing carrying King Yu and King Yun. The two girls and King Long did not reject Hai Dongqing at all. As she carried the children, she looked extremely happy. She really did love children. It was only three months till the new year and it made King Shui feel a little helpless. He didn't know if Wenren Wushuang would be back by the new year and it was difficult for him to look for her now. He would not be able to go to northern sacred Lu continent to check things out. He did not have much time left and could not afford to be delayed. In the end, King Shui chose to stay behind and wait since he had no other choice. Feeling helpless, he could only busy himself with cultivating. A month passed by in a flash. Hai Dongqing stayed with King family and went back home to live for two days before she came back again. Cultivation. After such a long time, it was clear who was talented in what aspects. Thus, he would not allow him to learn to big a variety of skills. In the past, he had done so to see in what areas they were talented in. During this process, the skills they were talented in would improve very fast. Unknowingly, they spent a long time cultivating what they were interested in unconsciously became the cultivation they majored in. After that, they would continue to cultivate in one or two other areas. The formations and the nine palace steps were necessary to learn and King Shui did not know if he should be happy or depressed. Yu Chang was very gifted and extremely interested in poisons. As long as one could stay alive and lived a better life than others in the nine continents, no means were too despicable. Poison was a type of strength. Within this month, King Shui had started imparting knowledge of poison to Yu Chang. King Shui actually disdained the use of poison, but it had saved him a couple of times. In crucial times, poison could be depended on to defeat the opponent. He was strong in mixing and using poison as both poison and medicine were closely related. King Shui taught her how to obtain, avoid, detoxify, and mix poisons. That meant that Yu Chang had to learn the nine palace steps and hidden weapons technique. Simultaneously, another child who was fond of this was King Ming. King Shui facepalmed himself. Both his daughters liked walking among the darkness and dancing on blades. King Mu was especially interested in assassination, fatal blows and hidden weapons. 
He did not know when this little fellow learned that smearing poison on her sword would increase its potency. It was because of this that she developed a strong curiosity towards poison. This made King Shui worried and he did not dare to be too far away from her. It was also because of this that he was unable to control them and so he could only give them lessons. King Mu was small, but she had a bad temper and was a little iniquitous. The thought of this gave him a slight headache. After all Yu Chang was older, learned faster and with her gift on top of that, King Shui placed his focus on her. He also gave them each a jade lion. This item was good at resisting poison. Aside from that, King Shui used the violet jade to forge a necklace and bracelet which was capable of resisting poison as well. The battle armor and the battle skirt that King Shui gave to King Clan had formations and talisman scripts carved on it. There were two types of formation, a spirit gathering formation and a spirit sealing formation. It was when he was at the Jade Mountain village, he had to seal Qi Ao and Qi Feng's aura. He successfully carved the spirit formation onto the pendant. After that, he learned the spirit gathering formation and tried carving it on the battle armor, the battle skirt, and the battle boots. Fortunately, it could be considered to be successful. Having the spirit gathering formation carved on the battle armor and the battle skirt was equivalent to being in the spirit gathering formation while wearing them. This could allow cultivation speed to increase and also increased the speed of recovering strength. Relatively speaking, the use of the spirit gathering formation was extensive. The carvings of talisman characters on the battle armor and the battle skirt were a type of talisman scripts. It looked abstruse and impressive. Not only did it not affect its beauty, but it could also increase the brightness of the color. This was indeed killing two birds with one stone. Unfortunately, the effects of the spirit gathering formation was unable to overlap. If the battle armor was worn inside a spirit gathering formation, the effects would not multiply. The carvings on the battle armor made it convenient as it was like being in the spirit gathering formation during battles. It possessed a lot of advantage. In short, it was very strong. In a month, the coiled dragon statue and heaven shaking drum had reached the third grade and that made King Shui very happy. The spirit gathering lamp did not seem to have move or change. On the other hand, the soul shake bell had risen to the eighth grade and King Shui was nearly moved to tears. The realm of the grade eight soul shake bell was already brilliant and it could be used against 20 demonic beasts. There would be chances of the enemy demonic beasts going mad, rebelling, going into a frenzy or even lead to a sudden death. Okay, there is no definite probability, this should be good thing. King Shui thought, it now should be able to deter any demonic beast. This was great as it was crucial that the soul shake bell increased by another grade. The Lion King's Ridge was a great beast tamer sect and if the soul shake bell increased by another grade, it would be receiving coal in winter. TL note. Receiving coal in winter means receiving help when it is most needed. He hoped that by the time he went to the Lion King's Ridge, the coiled dragon statue and heaven shaking drum would have reached the fifth grade. He did not dare hope for a higher grade than that since the spirit gathering lamp had stopped at the fifth grade for way too long. The tempering of the spirit channeling jade never stopped, but its progress was very slow. Despite this, it could still increase the speed of cultivating by quite a quite lot. It was better than nothing as many little things could add up to something great. The realm of the demon binding ropes should be increasing soon. In any case, the time taken for it was more or less the same as the soul shake bell. Once these items were used, it could change the entire situation. It was almost the new year and King Shui had made up his mind. By the end of the year, he would bring Ye Jiang, Luin Luin, 
and Lin Zalan to the northern sacred Lu continent. As for the ancient ruins, he would check up on the situation there before allowing them to come along. There may be good opportunities in there, but it carried some risks. As for the other four continents, King Shui estimated that the probability of him going alone was great. They would only be able to go five years later. That would be a good as he could fetch them on his own by that time. The ancient ruins was in the northern sacred Lu continent, and he could not move the king clan anymore. At least there was the Buddha sect and the demon gate to look after. King Shui thought deeply and realized that he could not bring many people. However, little Fatty had to come along. It was once again the end of the year and the festivities of the new year grew stronger and stronger. The area was decorated with lanterns and colored banners and everybody had a festive smile on their faces. However, there was still no trace of Wenren Wushuang. The world of the nine continents celebrated the new year in mostly similar methods with some variations. Although he was celebrating it in the central continent this year, his whole family was there, and this made him feel that it was no different than celebrating at the king village. Compared to the adults, the children would find this as a happier thing. Over the few days of New Year, he would let them play crazily. Aside from visiting friends and relatives, those who held up the king clan could not afford to fall behind in their cultivation. There was not many places they would have to go. They would go to the demon gate and Buddha sect Little Fatty. However, they did not visit the Huoyan clan. There were no eternal friend or eternal enemies, but within this short period of time it would be difficult to change. He was either considered famous or he had a bad reputation among them. When King Shui saw the old man of Buddha sect, it was already the third day of the new year. The old man was skinny, but he was kind to King Shui. He knew that the old man didn't have too much time left. At the Buddha sect, King Shui felt that this old man was trustworthy. The gift he was gave him for the new year was the lifespan pellet and the physique enhancing fruit. King Shui did not have too high of a regard for these two items. However, to others, these items were far too precious since it could increase their lifespan. Old Master, I am going to the northern sacred Lu continent. After delivering the great formation, I will be heading to the other four continents. However, I can't let go of things here and I'd like to ask you if you can look after them. King Shui did not beat around the bush and went straight to the point. You don't have to worry about this. Although I'm not the strongest here in the five continents, nobody is willing to fight this weary old body to the death. The old man smiled. If you have any wishes, you can let me know. I may not be able to help you now but I might in the future. King Shui took the initiative to ask, hoping that the old man would view his request with great importance. As long as I'm alive, I will not let anything happen to the king clan. The old man said while smiling, I believe you. Could it be that you do not have any wishes? King Shui laughed. The Buddha sect was strong in the other four continents previously, but it is a pity that I don't know when they started to become bottom feeders. I believe that you are capable. Therefore, if you have the chance, I hope you will be able to help little Fatty at the other four continents and not let the Buddha sect be so pathetic there. Just wait till I have the ability and I will definitely help. It would be difficult to do so at this point, but I promise that the day will come. King Shui assured the old man. Chapter 1046, Grade 3 Nine Continents Boots, Powerful, Nine Continents Steps. Celebrations for the new year passed by very quickly. During this time, King Shui used the best formation flags to set up several nine palace eight trigrams formations around King Clan's manor. It was because they were heading for northern sacred Lu continent. In the end, there was King Shui, 
Yi A Jiang, Luin Luin, Dai King, Hai Dongqing, Lin Zanan, and Little Fatty. Yu Ruyin was joining him as well since King Shui had informed her. There were many people who came to send him off, including Demon Gate, Buddha Sect, and Tang Manor. However, there were also many of them who would be heading for northern sacred Lu continent since they had also received news about the ancient ruins. King Shui and the seven others rode the huge golden-scaled dragon elephant and went on their way. This time around, they were heading for northern sacred Lu continent's ancient ruins. King Shui had originally wanted make the trip with Yi A Jiang, Luin Luin, and Lin Zanan only. However, he couldn't win against the other ladies and he felt that it would be good for them to go train themselves too and thus he had agreed. With their cultivation level, they'll definitely be able to enter. However, as Mingyu Gelu and Kanghai Mingyu needed to take care of the children, they stayed behind. With them around, King Shui would feel assured as well. Moreover, he was only going to head for northern sacred Lu continent. King Shui waved as they sent him off and only turned away until they were no longer in sight. Thinking of how the next time they met might be ten years or even several decades later, he couldn't help but feel a little sad. King Shui had left almost all of his stocked items in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal behind in King Clan. Kang Hai Mingyu, Mingyu Gelu, and the other members of King Clan also had a heavy heart. They knew what the situation was. In the past, when King Shui went off, they hadn't felt like this before. King Shui didn't say anything. When the matter with the Lion King's Ridge was over, he would tell the ladies who were with him and let them inform the other members of King Clan. This time around, he had decided to head to the other four continents alone. Of course, this was on the condition that the matter with the Lion King's Ridge was handled successfully. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a need for him to head for the other four continents. The northern sacred Lu continent was situated in the north and it was about the same size as central continent. The temperatures here were relatively lower and many places were all extremely cold. There would be ice-cold tornadoes which could frost up iron and have them shatter into pieces. This showed how terrifying the cold was. On the way, everyone was very quiet, even Luin Luin. Everyone knew what was going on, especially Yi A Jiang, Lin Zanan, and Luin Luin. King Shui currently didn't know much about the Lion King's Ridge, but he had the confidence to deal with them. He headed for the ancient ruins first, hoping to come into contact with some amazing encounter. Maybe he could get his hands on a treasure or have a certain martial technique leveling up. It would be best if he could attain a breakthrough to the eighth heavenly layer. However, everything was basically possible except attaining the eighth heavenly layer. He didn't hold on to any wishful hope and it was just a fleeting thought. At the thought of the ancient ruins, King Shui thought of Yu He. He might encounter her somewhere. If his guess wasn't wrong, she would definitely be there. Moreover, when they parted last time, she was heading for the northern sacred Lu continent. A day passed by and the sky was just starting to turn dark. They managed to reach Tongjiang city and decided to stay for the night. King Shui already had everything planned out. They would travel in the day and the night, then he would enter the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal for his training. Before entering the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, King Shui performed the nine continent steps as usual. However, after he used it once, King Shui was stunned. He like a person who had made a hole through the paper on the windows. He was used to traveling with the nine continent steps and advancing 200,000 li before using it to travel back. This time around, he did the same but there was great joy surging in his heart. He could feel that his nine continent steps had leveled up. Excited, 
King Shui quickly entered the realm of the violet jade immortal. Then he entered his consciousness to sense the nine continents boots abilities. Refined from the star fragments and strange beasts in the world of the nine continents. Has a mysterious and unfathomable ability. Increases speed by two folds. Reduces depletion by two folds. Hard for even a martial emperor to harm it in the slightest. Comes with the battle technique nine continents steps. Him. King Shui noticed that it has changed. In the past, its speed had increased by one fold. Reduced depletion by one fold. Additionally, those below the martial emperor level wouldn't be able to inflict any damage. Right now, it could actually increase his speed by two folds and reduced depletion by two folds. Furthermore, even a martial emperor would find it hard to inflict any damage onto it. It seemed that this upgrade was very powerful. Just the additional one-fold increment to his speed would let King Shui become terrifyingly strong. Nine Continent Steps Activating the Nine Continent Boots and the Nine Continent Steps allows the user to instantly travel 400,000 li in a straight line. Currently at the third level, Realm of Subduing Dragon and Tiger, can be used four times in a day. The user of the Nine Continent Steps could concurrently bring along with him all living things within a 10-meter radius from him, including humans, demonic beasts and others. Prerequisite. Martial Emperor Level. King Shui was completely stunned from this tremendous surprise. This was simply as if someone had given him a pillow when he dozed off. The Nine Continents Boots was too powerful. This was truly a divine artifact. Although it couldn't be considered one yet, to King Shui, it was already one. King Shui left his consciousness. In the past, he would need to look at the Nine Continents Boots directly, but now he could sense it even from his consciousness. He liked this feeling. This gave him the feeling as if he was one with the Nine Continents Boots. Him. It recognizes its owner. King Shui was suddenly stunned by this strange thought. He had a spiritual connection with the Nine Continents Boots. He had gotten hurt on multiple occasions, causing it to be dyed in his blood on multiple occasions. It was already imprinted by him. He didn't know when it had started and when he gained this connection with it. It was a very warm feeling. It might have started to recognize its owner since a very long time ago, but since the Nine Continents Boots wasn't strong enough, the connection was very weak. When it leveled up the other time, it should have become slightly stronger and now that it had upgraded again, the connection was even stronger than before. Going through one round of tempering. Each time he tempered his magic treasures, he would also temper the Nine Continents Boots. Moreover, he would use the Nine Continents Steps daily and thus the leveling up of the Nine Continents Boots should be related to both its usage and its tempering. Next, King Shui left the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal and headed back using the Nine Continents Steps. He then used the Nine Continents Steps once again. This time around, it was 400,000 Li. He then went in the opposite direction again. He arrived above Tongjiang City's Cloudway Inn when he tried to use the Nine Continents Steps once again. There were no more reactions. A total of four times. It could already be considered quite powerful. With each usage allowing him to travel for 400,000 Li, four times would equal 1.6 million li in total. It was four times stronger than before. In this vast world of the nine continents, the nine continents steps could undoubtedly be called a paragon. A paragon which could allow one to kill and rob another, chase a target over long distances and also escape. King Shui once again entered the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal and was even more motivated to got through his cultivation. The changes to the Nine Continents Boots had filled him with a strong determination. 
all the living things that were within a 10-meter radius away from him, could be brought along with his nine continent steps alone. Non-living things could just be stored in his realm of the violet jade immortal. It was about a circle with an area of over 60 square meters. He could bring along a lot of people, but it was a pity that he would need to recall his golden-scaled dragon elephant. It was just too big. However, King Shui was already satisfied. With that, not only would he be able to save some time on his travel to the northern sacred Lu continent, it also made their journey a lot safer. They could just skip over the dangerous areas and when they encountered danger, he could just use the nine continent steps and escape with the others. Right now, to King Shui, dangers would usually mean a powerful group of demonic beasts. Demonic beast armor manifestation. Nine waves great golden Buddha palm. These two were the skills which King Shui had prioritized. Of course, he wouldn't forget about the primordial flame whip either. The battle technique which he had created was also extremely powerful, especially the primordial flame drill. Once King Shui started his cultivation, he would be completely engrossed and intoxicated, not bothering about any worries. Here, there was no one who would disturb him. He left a Jade Emperor bee in the room to constantly keep a lookout and alert him if a commotion occurred outside. Hundred Forms of the Tiger King Shui repeatedly tried to draw out each form of the tiger. The more he progressed, the more he found it hard to bring out its charm. However, right now, he did his drawing very leisurely and was very relaxed. He felt that this method greatly suited his current situation and his progress was much better than before. The next day, they continued on their journey and after King Shui explained the situation, the golden-scaled dragon elephant which was flying in midair suddenly disappeared. Nine continent steps. King Shui was only trying it out since this was the first use. Even if he were to fail, he could still head back. When he tried this previously, he could travel immediately and a faint glowing energy circle had formed around his body. This time around, it was the same, except the glowing circle was bigger than before, big enough to encompass the group. So this was how it worked. King Shui let out a sigh of relief. It could finally be done. Right now, it would be easier for him to bring the people around with him. The grade 3 nine continents boots and the nine continents steps had such great power already. If given time, would he really be able to travel across the southern sea just like that? Once they stopped, King Shui performed the nine continents steps once again. King Shui used it three consecutive times and left the last one for when they were ready to stop and find a place to stay for the night. Alternatively, King Shui could also use it after he came out from the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. That would be the last little bit of time in a day. Right now, the speed at which they were traveling could only be described as monstrous. Compared to the past, this was too exhilarating. In the end, he only used the nine continents steps four times and left the remaining time for the ladies to train. This would save a lot of traveling time in the future and increases one's cultivation time. Moreover, if the journey wasn't urgent, he could just travel using this method and stop by at places he was interested in. In the day, they would cultivate and King Shui would enter the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. In the end, the five-colored cane was still eventually returned to the old man. A cultivator's weapon was his second life, and although it might be a bit of an exaggeration, a weapon was truly very important to a cultivator. It was one's pride. Therefore, King Shui returned it. However, in exchange, the old man gave him a very large piece of five-colored stone. King Shui decided to reforge the Big Dipper Sword in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. 
He wanted to merge in some of the five-colored stone into the Big Dipper sword and see if it could increase the prowess of its spirit energy attacks. This led King Shui to think of his previous life. When priests went about conducting rituals, many of them would use the Big Dipper sword, or swords made from the wood of peach trees. Thinking of this, King Shui smiled. It was because he felt that his Big Dipper sword was definitely stronger compared to those counterfeits. King Shui enjoyed forging. Everyone would actually have desires to create and desires to destroy. When he thought of this he thought of those nurturing plans or programs, as well as the people who had strong wishes to live a flirtatious life. In a sense, this was embodied the idea of creation and destruction. There was a five-colored glow on the five-colored stone and it had very strong spiritual key. Even ordinary people would be able to sense that the five-colored stone was very precious, just like how gold would shine. He smelted and heated up the Big Dipper sword. He then set fire to the five-colored stone, letting it turn into liquid and slowly drip onto the Big Dipper sword. King Shui's spiritual sense encompassed the Big Dipper sword, and just like a formless hand, he used his spiritual sense to slowly guide the process, spreading out the liquefied five-colored stone. Chapter 1047 Big Dipper Sword Five-Headed Wind Fire Wolves The melted five-colored stone dripped slowly onto the Big Dipper sword, filling the atmosphere with a dense yet suffocating ancient aura. However, the appearance of the Big Dipper sword remained unchanged. The first day and the second day went by. On the last hour of the seventh day, a distinct sound akin to a nail dropping on the floor rang out. He quickly took out the five-colored stone while wiping the sweat on his forehead. At that moment, he was elated. He had succeeded in refining his Big Dipper sword, but he had no idea what type of change had occurred to the sword. Perhaps the sword could boost the strength of psychic attack instead. Big Dipper Sword Big Dipper Sword Formed from the convergence of unique silver sand of the heaven and earth, the materials were then forged into a sword by a skilled blacksmith. The sword has the ability to unleash a lethal damage power as well. The Big Dipper Sword could also increase the user's power by four times, and increase the speed and attack speed by 20%. There would be a 20% chance of increasing the attack damage by multiple times for each attack, subsequently decreasing 10% of the damage received. The user would also have a certain chance of receiving an unexpected surprise from the sword. Additionally, the sword has the ability to double the power of psychic attack. Doubling the psychic attack power, King Shui had no idea how much that would be, but he was still happy to see that nonetheless. The Arhat Rosary beads were powerful, and it could double the power of the psychic attack too. However, these beads have other significant strength that made also them very powerful. Because of that, the five-colored stone was also considered powerful. Even though it was just a simple twofold increase of the power of the psychic attack, the outcome of this ability was already incredible. With the existence of the Arhat rosary beads, the twofold increase of the psychic attack would still apply without being affected by the limitation of the world's regulation. This allowed King Shui's power to go beyond terrifying in an instant. The Nine Continent Boots had also allowed King Shui's speed to receive a tremendous boost, increasing his confidence in his pursue against the Lion King's Ridge as well. The accumulation of power he had acquired would be beneficial for him when he managed to cross to the other four continents as he could face more challenges and confrontations from external forces. When he finally exited the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, it was still quite early. They had decided not to progress in their journey during the day, and King Shui would only use the Nine Continents steps when it was time to pitch their tents and call it a night. After they had sufficiently rested, 
they would cultivate again on the next day. When the sky became dark, he would use the nine continents steps again and repeat the cycle. Everyone felt carefree as they continued to journey using this method, especially King Shui. He would only require six hours in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal and could spend the rest of time guiding the others in their cultivation progress or researching something else. King Shui was more liberated at night as he would go and spend his time at the private tent of either Hai Dongqing, Yu Ruyin or Dai Qing. It was his way of rejuvenating himself with these women. The other ladies suspected something fishy going on between Yu Ruyin and King Shui. However, no one would say anything about it considering King Shui's tendencies with women. With that said, King Shui wanted to tell everyone about his relationship with Yu Ruyin, but she wouldn't allow him to do so. He had no choice but to wait patiently until it was the right time to explain. He was quite open about his relationships and couldn't care less about other people's opinions of him. King Shui never cared about what others thought of him as long as his conscience was clear and he had nothing to regret. Time passed by so quickly, and they were already in the middle of the wilderness between Central Continent and Northern Sacred Lu Continent. The closer they were to the Northern Sacred Lu Continent, the colder the air became. Those with a higher level of cultivation were able to withstand both cold and hot temperatures, which was why they were more than capable of traveling around the world of the nine continents. The world was a vast place, and in most cases the east and south would always be warm, whereas the west and north would always be cold. However, there was rumored to be warm places in the north scared Lu continent, as well as cold places in the southern viewing continent. Normal people were not able to stand certain degrees of coldness or hotness, and they would easily fall ill. Worse still, they could endanger their lives when their body temperature could not withstand the sudden change of the atmosphere ranging from extreme cold to hot temperatures. At this moment, the sun was already high in the sky, indicating that it was in the afternoon. King Shui had just come out from the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal as the others were already cultivating their skills. He positioned his bed directly in the sun and lay down to allow the sun to warm his body. Daddy, you're like this again. I don't even want to train after seeing you relaxed like this. Luin Luin approached King Shui and pinched his nose. Him, my girl, Cultivation is always important no matter what. Daddy is tired so I'm taking a nap. Is that an eyesore to you now? King Shui said with a smile as he shifted away from Luin Luin's hand. He he he. Luin Luin let out a distinct laugh and continued to pinch his nose relentlessly. In the end, King Shui gave up and let her hold his nose with her dainty fingers. This should do it. King Shui smiled as he escaped from Luin Luin's grasp and gave her a knock on the head with his curled index finger. Sob, I'm already a grown-up yet you still hit me on the head. Aren't you afraid that your knocks will turn your precious daughter into a dimwit? Luin Luin pouted as she rubbed her head gently. King Shui didn't use a lot of strength of course. He sat up and said with a smile. You're too smart for your own good. A knock or two will be fine. Meanwhile, Yi A Jiang was cultivating her sword technique. She would train for a while and then become lost in her own thoughts. King Shui wasn't sure if she was daydreaming or gaining insights for her sword technique. Their current location was at the borderland of Central Continent stretching towards the core of Northern Sacred Lu Continent. The wilderness between Central Continent and Northern Sacred Lu Continent was a notorious danger zone. King Shui didn't dare make any careless moves as he needed to protect those who were traveling with him as well. Lin Zanan sat leisurely on a patch of grass under the sun not far from where King Shui was sitting. When King Shui invited him on this journey, 
He had already conveyed his plans to him about what he would do in northern sacred Lu continent. Lin Zanan had been with the Qing clan for about ten years, and not once had the thought of seeking justice from the Lion King's Ridge crossed his mind. It wasn't because he didn't want to think about it, but because his opponents were too strong for him. He was waiting patiently for the passage of time to erase the memories of the past, and when everyone forgot about it, he would return to look for the descendants, he wanted to know if they were still alive or not. King Shui sat beside Lin Zanan and asked, Grandpa Lin, is something the matter? The worried look on Lin Zanan's face triggered King Shui to initiate a conversation. For Lin Zanan, the descendants of the King clan were like his own as he was there throughout their growth period. He turned around to look at the devilish young man, a descendant of the King clan who would bring the ultimate glory to his family. It's been so long. Some things just aren't fated to be forgotten or vanish into thin air. Even though I couldn't calm myself these past few years, I've become more accepting of a lot of things. But now, I feel restless going back to northern sacred Lu continent again, said Lin Zanan as he shook his head lightly. Grandpa Lin, if you feel restless, it means you still have someone you care about in your heart. You still can't forget the past. King Shui understood Lin Zanan's feelings. Anyone would be anxious if they were going back to their home to me, even if they had bad memories of that place. Maybe so. The bloody disaster of those years is still vivid in my mind. Living is just suffering to an old age. Lin Zanan sighed as he expressed his helplessness to King Shui. We will make them atone for blood with blood. Grandpa Lin, I am your grandson, so I will vent your grievance on your behalf. King Shui's determined tone was assuring, but it would be frightening to his opponents if they heard it. King Shui wasn't lying when he said those words. Those were his genuine feelings, stemming from the bottom of his heart. I'm very happy and lucky to hear that. However, I want you to be discreet in whatever you do. You are a man of prodigious mind, but you must learn to be patient. It will be extremely beneficial for you if you can spend most of the time being patient. I understand. You have watched me grow up. I won't do anything that I don't have confidence in, King Shui said with a smile. There are just some things in which mistakes cannot be made because they will cost your life. Thank you for the reminder, Grandpa Lin. I understand that now. King Shui understood that sentence very well. This was the first time that he had heard Lin Zanan speak words that weighed heavy on his mind, perhaps due to the influence of the circumstances. King Shui used to be nonchalant about these things, but this time he finally understood the gravity of Lin Zanan's words. He would always remember those words for the rest of his life. Upon seeing King Shui's expression, he laughed. It was a genuine happy laugh. The surroundings echoed with the continuous roars of beasts, but the golden-scaled dragon elephant and his other demonic beasts were undeterred and let out their roars as well. Those cries were a form of intimidation. They could ward off demonic beasts and prevent them from drawing closer, including demonic beasts roaming in a group. This area was notoriously known as a danger zone, and they had already entered the core of this region, the most dangerous territory of the zone. King Shui had so far used the Nine Continents steps to evade harm once, from the beast tide that roamed across the field of mountains. Demonic beasts were everywhere, and this was his first time seeing such a view. It was terrifying. If he was by himself, he could still push through these demonic beasts without problem. But without the realm and ability upgrade of his nine continent steps, he would be toasted sooner or later. Luckily, he always left the last use of the nine continent steps to the last hour of the day, which he had decided that he would continue to do for the remaining days. If he could do that, 
then he could assure the safety of his family in the process. Today was once again the last hour of the day. King Shui and the others used the nine continent steps four times in a row. But what awaited them was a tragedy. Because when they finally stopped at their destination from the last nine continent steps, King Shui could feel a terribly powerful aura lingering in the air. His first instinct was to shroud the others in safety as quickly as possible. King Shui was shocked and quickly followed the strong aura. Before he left, he said, Little fatty, protect them for me. As soon as he was done, he called out his golden-scaled dragon elephant and the other demonic beasts, and commanded him to stay with the group. King Shui left to pursue the strong aura all by himself. He did so because there was only one strong aura present. He was able to sense stronger auras based on his current power, and that aura was definitely terrifying. This could be stronger than the berserk dragon he had encountered way back when he was at Giant Beast's Mountain. Other than that overbearing aura, there were other auras that were slightly weaker than the initial one. It would be the second day in four hours from now, so he didn't expect to encounter something like this after the last usage of the nine continent steps. This deadly coincidence was nothing but rotten luck. Woo woo. A series of frightening cries rang out, which caused King Shui to frown. The surroundings were composed of large hills and King Shui could sense the intense aura being emitted from the other side of the hill. This hill was about 200 meters tall, which was considered a slope in the world of the nine continents. Everything happened in a mere moment. Even if he were to lay out a formation, it would be too late. King Shui wielded his big dipper sword and jumped towards the sky. It was then that he was able to see the giant demonic beasts in front of him. Five-headed wind fire wolves. Four of them, in fact. Behind these four was another demonic beast that had six heads and a crystal-like body. A mutation beast. Six-headed crystal beast. The five-headed wind fire wolves were all blood-red in color. They were also known as fire demonic beasts that possessed an unprecedented speed with a body size of around 100 meters on average, which was roughly similar to the size of his golden-scaled dragon elephant. However, the six-headed crystal beast had a body size of 50 meters, which was half that of the wolves. The crystal beast had a full body of crystal armor as well, and the heads were all azure blue in color. Overall, the proportional stature of the crystal beast was robust and dignified, as if it was a king standing behind its soldiers of wolves. King Shui had seen this beast before in the historical records. The wind fire wolves have a 1 is to 10,000 chance of evolving into a crystal beast but the chance of survival of the crystal beast was also 1 is to 10,000. Only one amongst 10,000 crystal beasts would live, and only one crystal beast would appear amongst 100 million wind fire wolves in the world. The six-headed crystal beast already possessed a terrifying ability, which was the capability of utilizing water, fire, and wind elements. Most importantly, the strongest ability the crystal beast could use was the sixth level flame of ice fire. This formidable ability was of the same type of attack as King Shui's primordial flame, with the exception of its flame being ice fire. Most flames would be terrifying as the intensity went up, but the flame of the ice fire could instantly freeze the air and subsequently cause an explosion. King Shui remained silent as he proceeded to take out the Soul Shake Bell and started shaking it violently. When the spiritual power of the bell had been used up, he then moved forward and stomped in the direction of the demonic beasts. It was a tragedy. When the Soul Shake Bell had its power depleted, a sense of fright overcame the four five-headed wind fire wolves as their eyes began to show signs of fear. Meanwhile, 
The six-headed crystal beast remained steady without showing any reaction in its expression. Chapter 1048. Six-headed crystal beast. Battle. The result was beyond King Shui's expectation. He thought that at least one of the five-headed wind fire wolves would be inflicted by the soul shake bell or even run away from the battle. But all of them were still at their original spot, unmoved and unharmed. Despite the unexpected outcome, the wolves displayed signs of fear, but only slightly. Upon seeing the six-headed crystal beast behind these wolves, King Shui found something odd about it. The crystal beast remained calm and unfazed while the five-headed wind fire wolves were visibly shaken, as evident by the fear in their eyes, but there was nothing unusual that had happened. This was the frightening effect of the six-headed crystal beast, a dignified presence of a king. Woo woo! Suddenly, the six-headed crystal beast let out a short howl. The four five-headed wind fire wolves, which were known for their speed and fire-based attacks, broke away to four different directions and rushed towards King Shui in an instant. King Shui took a step quickly. Nine palace steps. Nine palace confusion steps. King Shui flashed past the wolves and avoided from being surrounded. He unleashed a combination sword technique with his big dipper sword as he jumped behind one of the wolves, seemingly to test their strength before he could think of a strategy against his opponents. Among the heads of a five-headed wildfire wolf, the middle head would always be the largest. The other four heads surrounding it were slightly smaller, but comparatively similar in size with one another, except for the middle head. These four heads were also blood red in color. The bloody red eyes were cold, but fierce as they focused their sight at King Shui. The slightly smaller four heads were situated to face all four cardinal directions, with the fifth and largest head in the middle. One of the heads was facing King Shui directly, baring its teeth before it unleashed an attack from its mouth. A shot of blood red flame which was three meters long and as thick as an adult's thigh, traveled towards King Shui in a quick motion. Blood flame burst. This was the five-headed wind fire wolf's strongest attack, which was also considered as its most lethal attack. Even though one of the smaller heads initiated the attack, the flame traveled in an unprecedented speed, almost instantaneously. The bloody fire of about 10 feet long looked like a ferocious serpent soaring through the air. The tail of the fire seemed bushy, almost like a giant umbrella that swung towards King Shui with the intention to sweep him up into its grasp. Primordial Flame Whip King Shui clearly knew that using physical strength alone would be anything but helpful towards his victory so he decided to strengthen his psychic abilities by unleashing a few moves on his opponents. The flaming whip that was thick as an adult's arm swirled in a zigzag motion, like a water dragon rushing out from the sea to ram against the blood flame burst. At the same time, King Shui's silhouette flashed away as he evaded the attack of the giant tail. All the while he was fighting against the five-headed wind fire wolves, the six-headed crystal beast did not make any move and stood somewhere nearby to observe the fight. The gesture of the crystal beast was quite unusual for a demonic beast. In spite of that, the crystal eyes on the giant head in the middle was extremely nimble. Bang bang! A series of clashing sounds rang out. The blood flame burst had been scattered away by King Shui's primordial flame whip. As the flame was scattered by the whip, the other three heads of the five-headed wind fire wolf simultaneously shot out three consecutive blood flame bursts, which formed a triangle as the flames were aimed towards King Shui's direction. Primordial Flame Whip Twin Dragons Pursuing Pearl The primordial fire snake spouted by King Shui's big dipper sword was split into two intercrossing each other as they rushed towards the incoming blood flame bursts. Bang! 
The other three five-headed wind-fire wolves followed suit and spouted blood flame bursts at King Shui as well. At that moment, the whole surrounding was filled with rotating flaming snakes. A series of explosions rang out in the air like the rumbles of thunder. The five-headed wind-fire wolves were as agile as the wind as they managed to trap King Shui in the middle by surrounding him every single time. Of course, he would shift his position continuously and evaded the blood flame bursts entirely. Primordial Fire Snake. Rotating Snakes. Before the primordial flame whip that King Shui had unleashed could be retrieved, it exploded in midair which scattered the primordial flames into countless strips of fire. They were about the thickness of an adult's finger, which rained down around his surrounding like lightning strikes. King Shui was protected in the middle, while the scattered primordial flames acted as a shield that blocked all the blood flame bursts aimed at him. Wu Wu Wu. The six-headed crystal beast let out an abrupt long howl. Wu Wu. The five-headed windfire wolves replied with a series of wolf cries. In the next instance, the largest head on one of the wolves facing King Shui spouted a stream of blood-red colored flaming cloud towards his direction in an abrupt motion. Blood Flame Cloud. This was another form of the blood flame burst, but only the head in the middle of the wolf had the ability to unleash this skill. A 10-meter wide blood-red flame swirled in a wavy motion, like a slight tidal wave of the blood sea. It was a horrifying image as the blood flame cloud was crashing towards King Shui as if it could devour him. The swirling cloud also emitted a strong force of constriction onto him, intending to confine his movements to prevent him from evading. An attack based on spiritual energy. The surroundings around King Shui was still raining with the scattered primordial flames. However, as the blood flame cloud drew closer, the scattered primordial flames were slowly absorbed by the cloud as soon as the flames touched the incoming blood-red cloud of flames. It was at this moment that King Shui had began to take the situation more seriously. He was initially relaxed when he realized he was facing a group of fire elemental opponents. However, now that he had discovered that his flames were still lacking despite possessing the formidable primordial flames, he wished with all his might that his heart of rock would reach the grand perfection stage as quickly as possible. Suddenly, King Shui swung his big dipper sword to the sky. A giant golden Buddha palm appeared from the sky and hold off the bloody cloud in an instant. Bang! Internal explosion. A thundering explosion echoed in the area. The bloody cloud had vanished, and so did the golden palm. At that moment, King Shui laughed. The Nine Waves Great Golden Buddha Palm was indeed powerful and domineering. After he tested his abilities for a while, he was able to understand his powers and skills a little more. The six-headed crystal beast was still glaring at him with hostility and King Shui never once let down his guard against this fierce spectator at the sideline. Nine waves great golden Buddha palm. Six waves golden palm. The Big Dipper sword was struck with an immense strength as it unleashed the six waves golden palm against one of the five-headed wind fire wolves. Woo woo. The wolf that was being targeted started to shiver in fear as it watched the golden Buddha palm inched closer to end its life. The look on its eyes were of desolation and despair. Poo poo. Howl. After everything went quiet, King Shui was stunned. All he could see was a pool of mud left on scene and he couldn't believe that this was his own doing. This was the formidable prowess of the Nine Waves Great Golden Buddha Palm. Woo Woo. The remaining three five-headed wind fire wolves let out a series of deep howls. Demonic beasts of such strength were smart to an extent and those with exceptional talents would be able to communicate telepathically, 
just like the five-headed demonic spider and the old turtle in the Crystal Palace. King Shui had already killed off one of the wolves and he didn't intend to stop at that. He was overwhelmed with an extreme sense of pride and a surge of confidence after he tested the Nine Waves Great Golden Buddha Palm, which could use his spiritual power to initiate and ignore the limitation posed by the regulations of the world. His Big Dipper Sword could double his psychic attacks as well. Even after one of the five-headed wind fire wolves was killed, King Shui took a quick glance at the six-headed crystal beast and found its large crystal eyes unexpectedly calm and unwavered. This caused King Shui to palpitate with fear for a moment. The eyes were looking at him with indifference. I know you can understand what I'm saying. Why don't we make a deal? King Shui spoke as he linked his mind with the six-headed crystal beast. It was a brief moment of silence after that. King Shui became suspicious. Perhaps his opponent couldn't understand him. That can't be, he thought. King Shui still couldn't tell what this demonic beast wanted in the end. The voice he used in the telepathic communication didn't sound like a human's voice. It was a metallic voice, like a stiff tone of a musical note. This must be the next advancement of his telepathic communication. How bold of you. If you can come out alive in this fight, then we can talk about your conditions. A voice of a young lady rang out in his sea of consciousness. The voice was metallic and unlively, which was something that surprised him. He didn't expect that the good-looking six-headed crystal beast was a female of all things. King Shui wasn't quite sure what to make of the telepathic communication, because the metallic voice he had heard could be of a male and female and in different ages too. However, it wasn't all that bad as this was the best way to communicate with demonic beasts, but only of those with formidable power and intelligence. King Shui looked at the three five-headed wind fire wolves that were already crouching on the ground. He knew they couldn't move anymore because in the world of demonic beasts, the strong would always be revered. This truth was more cruel than that of humans. Once they had submitted themselves to the ruler, they must submit with absolute obedience, just like how these wolves were submitting themselves to the six-headed crystal beast. They could never run away no matter what happened to them. He gave up trying to kill the remaining three five-headed wind fire wolves as they didn't pose as threats to him anymore. King Shui wanted to tame a demonic beast that was as powerful as this six-headed crystal beast, but it would be extremely difficult to do so. In any case, he had to defeat this beast first before he could even tame it as his own. He raised his Big Dipper sword and conjured a primordial flame ball as big as an adult's head from the sword tip. The intense ball of flame cackled as it grew larger. With a stabbing motion that was aimed towards the six-headed crystal beast, the primordial flame ball was instantaneously released, leaving a trail of ghastly flames behind it. Woo woo! The giant middle head cried out in a low howl. The head below it opened its mouth, and shot a trail of azure blue flames swiftly to counter against King Shui's primordial flame ball. Buzz buzz. The clash of the two flames sounded like the discharge of electricity, yet like the loud strikes of lightning and thunder. The surrounding area was filled with the ghastly images of the flames, which was then followed by the visible explosion of the air. Primordial Flame Whip. King Shui's Big Dipper Sword pulled out a 50 meters long, pure gray serpent that was as thick as an adult's arm. The color was of the purest gray color he had ever seen, and there was no trace of black shadows against the gray surface of the primordial flame whip. As soon as the lifelike whip was pulled out, the whip lashed towards the six-headed crystal beast without hesitation. Woo woo! The middle head of the six-headed crystal beast opened its mouth, and let out a few howls once again. In that instant, 
A circle of transparent crystal surrounded the crystal beast like a force field which shielded the crystal beast inside from harm. Clack! The crystal shield vibrated slightly, which was to be expected as an attack based on spiritual energy would slowly dissipate once the attack had been intertwined. It would continue to dissipate until one of them eventually run out of spiritual energy to continue, or unless the attack had managed to hit the opponent directly. However, one fact remained. The six-headed crystal beast have, as its name implied, six heads. Woo woo. One of the beast's head opened its mouth, and spouted some sort of liquid onto the crystal shield which was quickly absorbed by the shield itself thus stabilizing it from shaking any further. Then at that moment, the six-headed crystal beast flashed towards King Shui, with two of its head breathing out two azure blue fire snakes that spiraled quickly towards his direction. The fire snakes were thin, but they spiraled in a form of a drill as it flashed towards King Shui like a meteorite falling to the earth. Primordial Flame Dragon Drill King Shui raised one of his hand, while the other conjured the primordial flames in a vibrating motion. This was the strongest primordial flame attack he had, the primordial flame dragon drill. Strangely, the primordial flame dragon drill was soundless this time, as if everything had become surreal. However, King Shui was aware that the flames were extremely lethal and he wouldn't dare test the fatality of the flames even if he was curious about it. He wasn't worried anyway, as he would only be inflicted with 30% of the damage if the flames were to touch his body. The prowess of the spirited snake turtle and the Arhat rosary beads had King Shui beamed with excitement. He didn't actually expect that the spirited snake turtle would become this strong one day. The fire snakes had been neutralized. King Shui was surprised. Even though he hadn't used the ace in his sleeves, the six-headed crystal beast didn't use its entire power either. The power of a demonic beast would last longer in most cases, but King Shui hadn't exhausted much of his energy, so he wasn't worried that he would run out of strength for the time being. However, he had a feeling that the six-headed crystal beast would eventually fall as it wouldn't last forever for the remaining time of the battle. Chapter 1049. He who is pure, tame, rocks might. King Shui sent over an oppressing pressure. This would increase the pressure on the crystal guard which would then allow him to deal with this six-headed crystal beast. He had the confidence to deal with it since he still had a trick up his sleeves. Primarily, he wanted to tame this demonic beast. It would be good even if Luin Luin was the one to tame it since it would be a waste to kill it. It was time to give it a push. Demonic Beast Armor Manifestation Golden light flashed across King Shui's body and a huge but faint image of a golden-colored beast appeared on King Shui, encompassing him. Great Earth Golden Beast Demonic Beast Armor Manifestation. Although it was still in the adolescent stage, it increased his strength and spiritual energy by one fold. There wasn't much left due to the impact of the world's regulations, but it wasn't bad either. King Shui was most satisfied with the additional one fold of spiritual energy. This was something which wouldn't be restricted by the world's rules and was a full increment of one fold to his spiritual energy. This made King Shui's attack much stronger and the crystal guard tremored furiously. The primordial flame dragon drill was also gradually pushing in toward the six-headed crystal beast. Woo woo! Two of the smaller heads shot out a gush of mist toward the crystal guard causing the trembling crystal guard to stabilize. The main head, on the other hand, shot out over ten azure blue-colored ice bolts. The ice bolts were only the size of a fist and they shot out in a straight line toward King Shui. The azure blue ice bolts looked very beautiful and King Shui could sense its chill from afar. 
It was made of ice flames of an extreme yin nature. Nine palace steps. Great reversal. King Shui immediately disappeared from his original position, but his spiritual energy battle against the six-headed crystal beast didn't stop. This was the powerful aspect of the Nine Palace Steps Great Reversal, to be able to forcibly exchange positions with the opponent. Therefore, the ice bolts which were flying toward King Shui were now flying toward the six-headed crystal beast. In that moment, King Shui could see confusion and worry in its eyes. Emperor's Key. In that instant, King Shui used his Emperor's Key as well. That was his powerful trick. Boom boom boom. It was also painful to hit oneself. Moreover, things had happened very suddenly, causing the six-headed crystal beast to be unable to react in time. It all happened too quickly. Pa! Piffed. The crystal guard broke. The earlier attack was the six-headed crystal beast's powerful attack and was carried out by the main head. Moreover, King Shui's primordial fire snake was constantly corroding the crystal guard and King Shui had also suddenly used Emperor's Key. With this combination, the six-headed crystal beast's crystal guard was completely crushed. The primordial flame whip lashed the six-headed crystal beast, creating a crisp sound. The six-headed crystal beast let out a low howl and spewed out clouds to block King Shui's attacks. King Shui's primordial flame whip lashed the six-headed crystal beast's body, but it seemed that the damage inflicted wasn't much. It only left behind a mark on the crystal-like body. This showed how resistant the six-headed crystal beast was against attacks. King Shui and the six-headed crystal beast were separated by an azure blue ice barrier. However, before he could break the barrier, he sensed a dangerous aura. Nine Palace Steps. One Step to Heaven. The Nine Palace Steps was extremely complex and it comprised of countless steps. King Shui disappeared from an unbelievable angle, and after he disappeared, he saw that the spot from which he had just vanished was being clawed by the six-headed crystal beast. His afterimage was still there. The claw had flaming azure blue-colored clouds on it, and the moment it attacked, the flaming clouds became a flaming drill which held a terrifying destructive prowess. This time around, King Shui had managed to dodge it thanks to the Nine Palace Steps. If one were to think that the six-headed crystal beast was only powerful in terms of its spiritual energy, then he'd be in big trouble. This demonic beast was extremely fast and if King Shui didn't have his nine palace steps to dodge that move from earlier, his head would have been crushed. It was a fatal blow and its huge claws were much bigger than King Shui himself. This speed was simply terrifying. King Shui's nine palace steps had only leveled up not long ago and his speed had also increased by one fold. However, if he didn't have the nine palace steps, there was no way for him to be able to dodge this attack. In the nine palace, he was the sovereign. In the nine palace, his speed was unrivaled. In a sense, it would make others seem slower or he would be seen as stronger. Great Golden Buddha Palm. King Shui waved his hand and performed the first wave of the Great Golden Buddha Palm on the six-headed crystal beast. Woo woo. Pa. The six-headed crystal beast didn't think much of the attack and slapped King Shui's golden palm away. King Shui didn't panic. Right now, the six-headed crystal beast was already in his grasp. When he progressively performed the fifth wave of the great golden Buddha palm, he managed to confine it. Right now, he had used the demonic beast armor manifestation to increase his spiritual energy attacks by one fold. Moreover, the six-headed crystal beast had also been weakened by King Shui's emperor's key. The huge golden palm firmly held down the six-headed crystal beast and King Shui readied his primordial flame whip. All right, now we can talk. 
Are you going to submit, or continue to fight? King Shui was very relaxed now. Bastard. I'll never submit to anyone. Kill me. A metallic female voice rang out. It wasn't melodious, but was still an interesting sound. Pa. King Shui lashed his primordial flame whip upon the six-headed crystal beast. A clear mark appeared on it. Submit to me. I can let you become even more powerful. If you follow me, you will definitely not regret it. King Shui tried to persuade it. Dream on. You're not a pure person. I'll never submit to you. What the? I'm not a pure person. King Shui had a strange feeling and even put down his primordial flame whip. I promise that I'm a pure person. Submit to me. King Shui said shamelessly. The six-headed crystal beast refused to look at King Shui anymore. King Shui was torn. It was a great pity to kill it, but he wasn't able to get it to stay with him willingly. If you were to encounter a pure person, would you submit? King Shui communicated with it through his consciousness. I said that even if I were to submit, I'll only submit to someone pure. However, not every pure person will be able to get me to submit to them, said the six-headed crystal beast furiously. With no other option, King Shui called out for the others to come over. King Shui knew that Luan Luan had the heart of seven orifices and he wanted to see if she was able to tame her. King Shui didn't let the others get close, even though the huge golden palm was still firmly securing the six-headed crystal beast. Luan Luan made a few sounds and King Shui saw a hint of a glow in the six-headed crystal beast's eyes, which relaxed him slightly. If Luan Luan could tame it, it would be of great benefit to them. In the end, Luan Luan opened her eyes in surprise and looked at King Shui. Father, she refuses to follow me. She says that I'm a devil. The primordial flame whip once again formed in King Shui's hand and he lashed it down hard. Since even Luan Luan wasn't able to tame it, then he could only lash it to death. All right, lass, you can go tame those over there. There shouldn't be any problems and they are considered quite strong too, said King Shui as he pointed to the three five-headed wind fire wolves. As expected, it didn't take Luan Luan long to tame the three five-headed wind fire wolves. The heart of seven orifices was very powerful. Cases such as the one with the six-headed crystal beast were a surprise. It had a powerful spiritual energy and intelligence. Hence, it was most difficult for one to be able to tame a mutated demonic beast king like this. It required a chanced encounter. Pa pa pa. The six-headed crystal beast let out terrible cries. Bloody trenches had formed on its body from King Shui's whipping. Even if it had a strong physique, it wasn't able to withstand such attacks. King Shui, it wasn't easy for this six-headed crystal beast to grow to what it is today. Only one in every one billion wind fire wolf is able to reach this level of achievement. It's very pitiful as well. Let it go this one time. Yi A Jiang thought of her own background. It might be because the six-headed crystal beast was very beautiful and its big crystal-like eyes had a lonely, persistent, and stubborn feel to them that she felt pity for it. King Shui was stunned and looked at this fairy-like lady. In his heart, he had always felt that she was the purest. He stopped. Jiang, why don't you try taming it? It's a pity to let it go. Don't you want to try taming it? Of course I'd like to, but this is something that cannot be forced. Let it go this once. It is a ruler and the chances of it being tamed are just too low. Yi A Jiang shook her head. After all, she came from a beast tamer clan and knew that the odds of being able to tame it were almost zero. Even Luan Luan had failed, so she really wasn't holding out any hope. Even if a demonic beast like this was tamed, it would be like a friend. The level of taming and submission would be the lowest. 
King Shui could refuse to listen to many people, but not her. Ye A Jiang held a very important place in his heart. He loved her from the bottom of his heart, and wanted to make her happy. Otherwise, he wouldn't have made the decision to head to the Lion King's Ridge a long time ago. Back then, it was still wishful thinking on his part. King Shui removed the great golden Buddha palm and said, Leave. If not for the fact that my woman has taken pity on you, I would have most certainly taken your hide. It'll definitely be good for making clothes. He continued to leave his guard on the highest level in case there were any accidents. Right now, he was still using the demonic beast armor manifestation and other skills. Dai King and the others were very astonished as well, but not overly so. They were already used to the various things that happened to King Shui. Yi e Jiang didn't say anything after hearing King Shui's words but merely threw him an annoyed glance. The gaze from this fairy-like lady almost crushed King Shui's soul. Wu Wu. Hearing King Shui's words, the six-headed crystal beast seemed to be letting out a cry of objection toward him. Its blood had already dried up. Its terrifying recovery abilities were really astonishing. Woo woo. The six-headed crystal beast let out a low howl toward Yi A Jiang. Yi A Jiang stood there and looked at it in a daze before looking at King Shui. Jiang, what's wrong? Is it threatening you? If so, I'll go skin it. King Shui put on an act as if he was going to go ahead with his threat. Woo woo. The six-headed crystal beast let out a furious cry. Yi A Jiang held King Shui back speechlessly. It said that it wants to follow me and it'll continue to do so as long as I'm alive. Unless I don't want it, then it'll leave. Ha ha, Jiang is the purest person. All right, you can keep it. Shall I also follow you as long as I'm alive? King Shui laughed. Rascal, are you asking for a beating? Yi A Jiang blushed and gave King Shui a punch before she walked over to the six-headed crystal beast. This made King Shui a little worried, but he knew that there was nothing to be worried about. It was because demonic beasts were not scheming creatures and they tended to keep their word. The more powerful the demonic beast, the more this applied. The six-headed crystal beast lowered its head slowly and when Yi A Jiang's hand landed on the biggest head, King Shui was at ease. If it hadn't agreed to submit, it would definitely not allow a human touch its main head. Chapter 1050. Seven-headed crystal beast, sees northern sacred Lu continent. Yi A Jiang smiled and touched the crystal beast's beautiful head, mumbling something softly. She could also understand the demonic beast's language. After all, she came from a beast tamer clan. Dressed in a set of snow-white clothes and wearing a faint smile, Yi A Jiang stood before the huge six-headed crystal beast. This made her appear very sacred. When she stood next to the six-headed crystal beast, it presented a very harmonious and beautiful vision, and even King Shui was stunned. Many scenes, of how it would look if other people were to stand next to the crystal beast, flashed across his mind. However, he still felt that the most suitable was for Yi A Jiang to be standing there. King Shui was very happy. Having Yi A Jiang tame the beast made him feel even happier than if he had tamed the beast himself. The six-headed crystal beast was more powerful than any of his demonic beasts. Of course, that was excluding the marrow nibbling golden silkworm in his central palace blood essence pool. Even he wasn't sure if it could deal with this six headed crystal beast, but the chances were very high. Luin Luin tamed the three five headed wind fire wolves. These three five headed wind fire wolves were more powerful than Luin Luin's other demonic beasts. They might only fall short when compared to the golden-scaled dragon elephant. This was because they were not as powerful as the golden-scaled dragon elephant's overall abilities. 
Over 30 minutes had passed and they had managed to subdue the six-headed crystal beasts so King Shui planned to just rest there for now. King Shui decided to just set up tents on the mountain slope. Ye Jiang was very happy. The six-headed crystal beast had already recovered from its wounds. It was only subdued because King Shui was around. Otherwise, even with everyone here and all the demonic beasts, they wouldn't be a match for the six-headed demonic beast. Little Fatty was also becoming insanely powerful. King Shui gave the hallow pills, the crimson pellet from the nine-headed moon wolf's core, and other medicinal pills to Ye Jiang and told her to give it to the six-headed crystal beast. They had already set up their tents not far away and King Shui watched as Ye Jiang fed all the stuff he had given her to the six-headed crystal beast. She first started with the hallow pills, beast pill and so on. The six-headed crystal beast experienced great growth and King Shui continued to sense its progress. The six-headed crystal beast seemed to be especially excited, and it was as if taking two hallow pills just weren't enough. This made King Shui think of the seven-headed scarlet serpent in the medicinal herb Sacred Land. After the hallow fruits were refined into hallow pills, each person or beast could only take two of them. The amount of strength gained would be relatively high, and it even gave King Shui the feeling of reaching the great perfection stage. When the six-headed crystal beast saw the crimson pellet from the nine-headed moon wolf's core, there was a strong craving in its eyes. It was only then that King Shui recalled that this crimson pellet was the one from the nine-headed moon wolf's core. Nine-Headed Moon Wolf. The Six-Headed Crystal Beast was a transformation from a mutation of the Wind Fire Wolf. Most of its blood was still that of a wolf's and with the Nine-Headed Moon Wolf being a legendary divine beast, could it be? Both were wolf-type demonic beasts with multiple heads. When Ye Jiang fed the Crimson Pellet of the Nine-Headed Moon Wolf's core to the Six-Headed Crystal Beast, she didn't give it much thought. This was because she didn't know that it was the crimson pellet of a nine-headed moon wolf's core. After taking the crimson pellet, the six-headed crystal beast leapt up into the air. All six of its heads let out a low howl and rippling circles, that looked like crystals, were emitted from its body. King Shui, is it going to be all right? Ye Jiang asked, feeling worried. Don't worry, it'll be fine. This might be a big opportunity for it, King Shui smiled and said. Really? asked Ye Jiang with great surprise. Woman, I'm jealous. Console me, said King Shui pitifully as he looked at Ye Jiang. Piffed, are you looking for a beating? What are you talking about? Ye Jiang blushed and complained. King Shui took her hand feeling very happy as he looked at how beautiful she was. Ye Jiang smiled and shook her head helplessly, letting him hold her hand. She lifted her head and looked at the brilliant crystal beast. It was now encompassed by a crystal-like layer. They couldn't hear much from the outside, and could only hear sounds resembling a low rumbling thunder, which weren't very loud, but were very deep. King Shui expanded his spiritual sense and sensed as the six-headed crystal beast's body went through amazing changes as it constantly grew stronger. Various signs of vitality were increasing and it was a rapid transformation. After the three five-headed wind fire wolves had taken the crimson pellet, they had also completed their evolution. Since they were of the wolf lineage, the effect was much greater. Out of the three five-headed wind fire wolves, only two of them evolved into six-headed wind fire wolves, which was a bit disappointing. Luin Luin looked at the three wind fire wolves, sensed their powerful abilities and felt especially happy. Right now, Luin Luin could be said to have become an extremely powerful beast tamer. After consuming the crimson pellet and going through the evolution, they were now completely tamed by Luin Luin. 
Right now, they would exist only for Luin Luin. This was the life of a beast tamer. Moreover, Luin Luin also possessed the heart of seven orifices. Luin Luin lifted her head to look at King Shui and Ye Jiang, breaking into a smile when she saw them holding hands. She knew that this, mother, of hers wouldn't be able to marry any other person for her entire life, and she was especially happy to see that, that her mother could tame the six-headed crystal beast. She felt happier than if she were to tame it herself. This might be because one tended to hope for the people around oneself to become more powerful so that one wouldn't feel as worried. Pa! A crisp sound rang out. It was akin to the sound of eggshells shattering. In an instant, the big cocoon in the air fell apart and the crystal beast's brilliance appeared. When everyone saw the six-headed crystal beast, they were all stunned. It had gained an additional head. Seven heads. If it was just an additional head, it wouldn't be that big of a surprise. It was just that what the six-headed crystal beast had gained was the seventh head. In the world of the nine continents, demonic beasts' strength could be gauged based on the number of heads or tails they had. It was said that the legendary nine-headed snake and the nine-tailed fox were both extremely powerful beings. King Shui's ancient strengthening technique and nine waves great golden Buddha palm were also broken down into three, six, and nine sections. Seven was a very crucial number. There wouldn't be anything to be amazed about if it was the increment from five to six heads, just like it was for the three five-headed wind fire wolves. They became a lot more powerful, but it was nothing surprising. However, Going from six to seven was a great leap. King Shui's nine waves great golden Buddha palm currently stopped on the sixth wave. The ancient strengthening technique had also started to form a golden pellet when it broke through the sixth heavenly layer to the seventh. And right now, the six-headed crystal beast's seventh head grew right next to the main head. It was about the same size as the main head and looked exactly the same as well. It was hard to tell where it even grew out from and it was exuding an extremely violent aura. It still maintained the appearance of a crystal beast, but now, it should be called the seven-headed crystal beast. Its size hadn't changed, but it was much more powerful than before. Right now, King Shui didn't even have the confidence that he could defeat it in battle. He reckoned that it would be hard for him to confine it using the sixth wave of the great golden Buddha palm. However, King Shui should have no problem protecting himself. Woo woo. Its voice was like a wolf's howl but not entirely so. With a flash, it appeared before Yi A Jiang and King Shui and it intimately moved a few of its larger heads right in front of Yi A Jiang. Yi A Jiang petted it happily, unable to hide the joy in her eyes. I'm really jealous. Even if this crystal beast's voice was a female's, King Shui still didn't feel happy about it. Yi A Jiang turned around, blushing, as she knocked King Shui over the head. King Shui rubbed the part where he was hit and looked at the face which was as beautiful as the setting sun. He once again fell into a daze. The next day, King Shui found a spot for his morning practice the moment he woke up. He was already used to getting up early and not rushing to travel the moment he woke up. He wasn't the only one who was now used to this. It was the same for the rest. The world of the nine continents was very vast, and if people wished to go somewhere, most of their time was wasted on traveling which wasn't even safe. Traveling around was a huge pain since it really required far too much time. Things were good now and they had too much free time. It so happened that in this barren land, there were no humans. There were only demonic beasts around. Of course, they would occasionally encounter some cultivators or traders who were traveling between Central Continent and Northern Sacred Lu Continent. Even if they were traders, there would also be powerful cultivators amongst them. 
otherwise, there was no way that they'd be able to cross this vast barren land. Even with a strong cultivator, passing through this place was a gamble. A gamble where they would place their lives on the line. No one had the confidence to deal with waves of powerful demonic beasts, and if they were to encounter something like that, they could only blame themselves for being unlucky. Other than spending time in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, King Shui would also walk around the vicinity. He would look for rare medicinal herbs or fish in the lakes or rivers. His time spent was very fulfilling and the others also needed to cultivate. This was something that King Shui requested. Although Lin Zanan didn't have as bountiful an experience as King Shui, and would just cultivate occasionally, he had now fully recovered. However, he had already missed the best phase for his cultivation. With Ye Jiang gaining the seven-headed crystal beast and Luan Luan gaining the three wind fire wolves, King Shui felt much more at ease than before. He would feel safer when they entered the ancient ruins. Although heading for the ancient ruins was kind of a tough training and held the possibility of a chance encounter, King Shui was more worried for their safety. However, as long as they stayed together, they should now be able to protect themselves. The other thing was that he now felt more confident in heading to the Lion King's Ridge. This had been put off for over 10 years, or closer to 20 years. It was even longer for Yi A Jiang. The heavy feeling was an extremely huge burden. There were some things which one knew that one must never do, but yet isn't able to let go off. In the blink of an eye, one month passed by and he could see a hint of northern sacred Lu continent. The fluctuating heights of a stretch of the mountain range seemed to have no end to it when seen from the sky. It was just a feeling. A feeling of vastitude and boundlessness. The temperature here was already considered very low and there had even been a few rounds of snow. Each round had consisted of large snowflakes which accumulated to over two feet deep in just a short period of time. Even the paths were blocked. We finally arrived at northern sacred Lu continent. King Shui looked out into the distance and let out a long breath. King Shui stood on the top of a mountain, looking toward the distance, and spoke slowly. The last nine continents steps he used had landed them on this mountain peak. The others were also standing there and looking out into the distance. Their expressions were all different, but they all looked toward this young man who was tall and upright like a mountain. Chapter 1051. Arctic Wolf City, Who's Acting? When King Shui stood on the mountaintop, he could see northern sacred Lu continent in the distance. It was vast and boundless. At the same time, his companions looked at him, each with their own thoughts. Yi A Jiang, Luin Luin and Lin Zanan felt the most conflicted. They had waited for this day yet they couldn't help feeling uneasy. They were at sixes and and sevens because they wouldn't be able to accept the outcome if something went wrong. Dai King, Hai Dongqing, Yu Ruyin and the others were also worried. However, what concerned them even more was that King Shui planned to go to the other four continents, but they could not follow him because they were not strong enough. They felt as though they had failed to meet his expectations. This was the last stop in this continent before they reached northern sacred Lu continent. King Shui now felt a heavy burden on his shoulders. This year would be the most difficult year he had experienced so far. It was also a year which would determine a turning point in his life. After this year, he would face brand new situations. Arctic Wolf City King Shui and his group found themselves in Arctic Wolf City. It was not as cold and did not snow as often as cold ice city, but it was still a snow-covered city. Even though the ladies had already covered their faces with their veils, their svelte figures and alluring auras still attracted glances from the many passers-by. In addition, little Fatty's appearance was also very eye-catching. 
He stood tall and sturdy like an iron tower, and was dressed like a monk. There was no way he could even look a tad bit inconspicuous. King Shui was unconcerned about his clothes, so he dressed plainly. However, he exuded the sort of charisma that all experts have. Furthermore, his handsome looks along with the vermilion mark between his brows, gave him a unique aura that was strong yet gentle. Thus, he too caused many heads to turn. Even though they had already reached northern sacred Lu continent, they were still very far from the ancient ruins so they still needed more time to reach their destination. Since it was everyone's first time visiting northern sacred Lu continent, they decided to go and explore. They could learn more about the local culture and customs as well as find an inn to stay in. However, something bugged King Shui. He had previously killed quite a few people from Bei Ming clan and Wan clan, which were both guardian clans belonging to northern sacred Lu continent. Hence, he was worried that sacred land of Panacea in Green Cloud Continent and people from the other Guardian clans had also heard news of their arrival. Using their methods and resources, it was easy for them to obtain that information. However, King Shui was unsure if they would actually take the initiative to cause him any trouble. King Shui did not want to stir up any issue. He really did not wish to fight with anyone since they just arrived here. After all, they were in a foreign continent and who knows what sort of deep-rooted connections the people here have. It wouldn't do him any good if he accidentally offended some obscure experts hidden here. Even though he wasn't afraid, he had to protect the people he brought along with him. King Shui did not know if his enemies had any first-hand information about him. After all, he traveled here using nine continents steps effect, so it wasn't that easy to track him down. Even if they wanted to do so, they would need some time. Suddenly, King Shui felt a faint aura heading toward him. He saw a group of people heading in their direction and instinctively felt that they were specifically looking for him. The faint aura came from a man who looked like he was in his forties. The man appeared upright and righteous, and had a handsome face which gave people a sense of security. King Shui also noticed that there were two elders behind the handsome men. Besides them, there were also four other men who appeared to be guards based on the uniform they wore. The two elders hid their own auras, but they were unable to deceive King Shui at their level. King Shui withheld his reaction. He wanted to see what that handsome man had to say. Hi sir, you must not be local. The man asked in a friendly manner. And you are. King Shui did not answer him because it was obvious enough. Oh, I've forgotten to introduce myself. I'm Wen Jing and I live here in Arctic Wolf City so I do have some influence here. I saw you on the street and found you rather familiar. It is as if we know each other. So, I'd like to befriend you. The man answered amiably and looked at King Shui with sincerity. King Shui laughed. He did not believe that people would extend their friendship for no rhyme or reason. People who appear to be kind to others for no reason usually have an ulterior motive. It was either because that man was attracted to one of his female companions, or because that man coveted one of his items. Now, he wondered which item that would be. King Shui observed the man a little more closely. The man did not look suspicious. He looked like a righteous man with clear bright eyes. Yet, King Shui could still sense a slightly dangerous aura coming from him. Luckily, King Shui had nothing much to worry about. Even if something did happen, he could still keep everything under control. So he smiled and replied, I am Yan King. King Shui did not reveal his actual name, nor did he introduce his companions. Naturally, he did not appear to be friendly. Brother Yan, you and your people must still be looking for a place to stay. Come with me, I have an empty property. 
it is in quite a good location. If you don't mind, I will bring all of you there, Wen Jing said enthusiastically. Brother Wen, I don't think that is appropriate. It's too troublesome. We will just look for an inn since we are just staying here for a day, King Shui rejected politely. He did not want to act too harsh as he hadn't really confirmed if Wen Jing meant any harm. Look, fate brought us together. Since I have the honor of meeting you and you have already called me, brother, then just come with me. Come on, it is not far. It is very convenient and it is new. It is cleaned every day and no one has lived in it before. Wen Jing pulled King Shui's hand eagerly. King Shui quickly moved his Kuchi acupoint away. When the man grabbed his hand, the man gripped the exact spot of his Kuchi acupoint. Was this just a coincidence or was this on purpose? There were all sorts of techniques in this world. Thus there were definitely people who focused on sealing acupoints. There are even people who know techniques to sever others' spiritual energy. Though these were usually rumors, King Shui believed them entirely since he himself knew how to seal acupoints. King Shui moved his acupoint away but spotted no change in Wen Jing's expression. He turned and exchanged a look with the others behind him. Then he smiled and said, Brother Wen, we'll stay for one day. You don't have to act like this. It's nothing. We are friends from now on. You are my brother and we're one family, Wen Jing said, sounding very sincere and natural, as if he really meant that. Such situations only had two possible explanations. The first being that it was true, that the other party really felt like family the first time they met. As it was the case when he first went to look for King King. However, that was because she was his real sister, so the first explanation usually doesn't apply. Thus, King Shui could only conclude that it was the second explanation. This was all an act. The man had probably said those same words to many people before, otherwise he wouldn't be so good at disguising. Brother Yan, where are you from? Why did you suddenly decide to come to Arctic Wolf Country? Wen Jing asked innocuously. From the way they dressed, King Shui and his group were clearly foreigners. We're from Green Cloud Continent. We came here to visit our relatives. King Shui smiled. He actually wanted to say that they were from a nearby city, but he decided to say that they were from a much further place as it was his first time here and he was unfamiliar with this region. Green Cloud Continent. That's really far from here. Since all of you managed to travel through that wasteland, you all must be pretty formidable. Wen Jing commented in surprise when he heard that King Shui was from such a distant place. I won't come here again. It's really too dangerous. Luckily, we have a small treasure with us. Otherwise, we would have died many times over. It's so dangerous, I am even a little afraid of making the journey back. King Shui tried his best to imagine a horde of raging demonic beasts, so that he would look like he was frightened. As they chatted while they walked, King Shui noticed that Wen Jing knitted his brows slightly when he saw King Shui's fearful expression. When King Shui mentioned the small treasure they had, he also saw a slight change in Wen Jing's expression. It was so minute that one would miss it if one was not observing him carefully. They reached Wen Jing's manor. It was in a peaceful and quiet location, but it was still very accessible. A cross junction was just nearby and it provided one of the most convenient routes around Arctic Wolf City. Come in. Let's see if you are satisfied. Wen Jing beckoned for King Shui and his companions. The manor was very big and everything looked new. But King Shui could sense the presence of the people who lived here before. Unlike what Wen Jing said, many people had lived in this manor in the past and their presence lingered here, perhaps forever. King Shui's spiritual sense was very sensitive. After he practiced ancient technique flames of yin-yang, 
otherwise known as primordial flames, his spiritual sense became amazingly sharp such that he could even sense the last bit of yin qi that dead people leave behind. This is why King Shui was able to uncover the secret behind this manner. Yet, he was still shocked that the manner did not feel eerie at all. It was as if there was something sealing all the yin qi. Yin qi is not a name. Just like Emperor Qi, it is a type of qi. Basically, it is the yin from yin yang. It is usually associated with supernatural phenomenons, ill omens, evil winds, that sort of thing. King Shui understood that he and his companions had been led into a haunted lair which belonged to a few highly skilled bandits. But whether those bandits could prey on what they believed were a bunch of fat lambs, would depend on how powerful they were. Rock gardens, ponds, bamboo garden and stone bridges. King Shui looked at the ceiling of the main hall and saw a few golden bells hanging from the ceiling. Unless someone intentionally looked at those areas, there was no way to spot the bells. King Shui only knew a little about feng shui, but when he used his spiritual sense, he could sense where the yin qi gathered and the boundaries set by the golden bells. They definitely won't have a restful night today. He decided to take action. In the worst case scenario, he would just leave with his group. Without rousing any suspicion, he flicked his finger. A thread of key broke the chain holding the golden bells and they fell noisily to the ground. Ding dang. The abrupt noise was clear to all of them. In a split second, the atmosphere in the entire manor suddenly changed. The air grew cold and a creepy aura surrounded them. Perhaps, this feeling was from all the spirits in the building. According to folklores, people lose their yang energy when they die, so they are only left with their yin qi. This is especially true for people who were murdered and persecuted. It is said that their spirits will refuse to leave the place where they were killed. Of course, this is just a theory. King Shui did not really care if that was true, but it was undeniable that they could feel a creepy coldness in the manor. Just like in his previous life, old houses which have been empty for a long time tended to make people feel uneasy. Chapter 1052. Ghost Sect. You can ask three questions. King Shui looked down at the golden bells on the floor. Then he turned to Wen Jing and watched his expression. For the first time, there was a visible change in that man's expression. At that moment, Wen Jing had an extremely sinister look. His previously bright lively eyes were now replaced with a menacing and ominous gaze. The man turned around and stared at King Shui. King Shui was a little surprised that the man would turn hostile so quickly but he soon understood why. The blood-curdling aura that Wen Jing now possessed was the full-blown version of what King Shui had faintly detected. The golden bells not only kept the yin qi in this place under control, it also had another function. Right now, King Shui could sense the uncontrollable, erratic movements of the ghostly qi within Wen Jing's body. Is this something related to yin qi? King Shui was very certain that he was right. When the golden bells fell, and when all that yin qi pervaded the air, Wen Jing who previously presented the presence and mannerism of an upright man instantly changed. It was as if he suddenly couldn't control his aura. In a similar manner, the two elders also lost all semblance of control over their aura. Similar to how bloodthirsty men enjoy the sight of fresh blood, the two elders watched King Shui and his companions with a crazed unrestrained thirst. Everything happened so quickly Sige that it was beyond anyone's expectations. Apparently, the golden bells also helped the men appear as normal people. Since their strength would rise in an environment with a heavy concentration of yin qi, they could not stay there for too long. This was because, it would drive them mad. Once they became mad, they would do whatever they wanted, no matter how insane it was.
Rumor had it that such people usually use formations like Yin Omen Great Formation. Wen Jing practiced a very demonic technique. It required the Yin Qi from other humans. The high concentration of Yin Qi here was the leftover from Wen Jing's absorption sessions. To be precise, he practiced massacre techniques, or rather his entire organization practiced them. Wen Jing targeted King Shui's group and invited them here, because he could sense that they all had very rich and complex ki. He had already secretly informed his clan members beforehand and planned to deal with this group of people by other means rather than a straight-out battle. But he did not expect that the Golden Bells, which formed the ward to keep the Yin Qi controlled, would fall from the ceiling. He inwardly cursed his misfortune and decided that he had to just fight them right there and then. In fact, everyone who knew Wen Jing was well aware of his licentious nature. From the look in his pair of wicked eyes, his own people knew that the reason he chose the group was largely due to the women. But they would never point that out. They didn't dare do so anyway. Brother Wen, what's wrong? Are you possessed? King Shui smiled when he saw Wen Jing's vicious eyes. Though the women themselves were quite powerful, they were a little taken aback by Wen Jing's pair of demonic-looking eyes. Those eyes were filled with ruthlessness, perversion, bloodlust and insanity. Yes, I am indeed possessed. But you are all so unlucky because I spotted you. And oh, I just can't resist people like all of you. Wen Jing looked at King Shui and replied calmly. The surrounding Yin Qi spread uncontrollably throughout the entire manor. However, it did not seep out of the building as there was a sort of spirit sealing formation surrounding the manor. He had previously failed to notice it, but now, looking at the few men filled with that tumultuous ghostly Qi, he realized that they were stronger than expected. I am going to give you a final warning. I don't care what you intend to do, but you better not provoke me. Otherwise, you won't even have the chance to regret it. King Shui maintained his smile. There were too many villains and evil people in the world. King Shui had no ambition to eliminate all evils and protect peace. He never thought of fighting for the sake of justice. In the end, everyone was just trying to survive. As long as nobody provoked him, he really had no time to interfere in such matters. Anyway, considering the population of World of the Nine Continents, there was no way a person could solve all those problems even if they wanted to. If this was not happening in Northern Sacred Lu Continent, King Shui might consider dealing with it, but currently, he just wanted to quietly resolve his own matters. Ha ha. You're really an outsider. Don't you know that if Ghost Sect wants to deal with you, there's nothing you can do? Wen Jing laughed cruelly. Wen Jing appeared vastly different right now even though his facial features had barely changed. The change was mostly attributed to his aura. Ghost Sect. King Shui had never heard of them before. In Northern Sacred Lu Continent, King Shui only knew about Lion King's Ridge, Bei Ming Clan and Wan Clan. He knew them for other reasons, but beyond that, he really had no idea what to expect from this continent. Ghost Sect. Ye Jiang exclaimed in astonishment and gave King Shui a look of alarm. King Shui recalled that Ye Jiang had stayed in Northern Sacred Lu Continent for some time. So, she must have heard of Ghost Sect before. King Shui, Ghost Sect is a powerful demonic sect in Northern Sacred Lu Continent. Most of the influential people in Ghost Sect have the surname Wen. This must be a branch of Ghost Sect. They are quite formidable, said Ye Jiang a little worriedly. How are they in comparison to the Guardian clans? Though King Shui asked Ye Jiang, he already knew the answer. He could sense that Ghost Sect was definitely stronger than Bei Ming Clan and Wan Clan. However, there was variance between the different Guardian sects. 
One clan could easily come down on general manner. Likewise there must be other guardian clans which could control Wan clan and Bei Ming clan. Ghost sect isn't one of the guardian sects and they do not care about the guardian clans. There are strong and weak guardian clans. The head of Lion King's Ridge also comes from another guardian clan. Yi A Jiang shook her head and explained. King Shui knew that he could not wrap up this incident without a fight. He wasn't worried since his companions were all very powerful. Yet, his opponents seemed unconcerned with anyone whose strength was lower than 3,000 stars. How could they be so calm? King Shui was a little hesitant. He could sense that all his opponents had the strength of 3,000 stars. Weren't they afraid that he could just kill them with a single blow? King Shui created and condensed a primordial flame ball in his hands. He threw it directly at Wen Jing. He wanted to know why that man could be so arrogant. When his primordial flame ball touched Wen Jing's body, a black halo appeared around the man's body. The black halo also surrounded the three men and upon touching it, the primordial flame ball exploded before disappearing. The shield was activated automatically. So King Shui knew that it was due to a treasure that Wen Jing possessed. It was some sort of defense type equipment. Take out all the treasures that you have and I'll leave you with an intact corpse. The red and black capillaries in Wen Jing's eyes were very obvious and his voice became even more menacing. King Shui shook his head and looked out into the distance. He had noticed the swift moving silhouettes of over ten people rushing toward them. So, it seems that Wen clan isn't the head of ghost sect. Aren't you afraid that the leader of ghost sect will punish you? King Shui did not actually know which position Wen clan held in ghost sect, so he wanted to find out more. He presumed that Wen Jing would lower his guard since his clan members were rushing over to help. Ha ha! Wen clan might not head ghost sect, but even the leader has to treat us properly. Even if ghost sect found out about what I did today, they wouldn't say anything about it. Besides, you are from Green Cloud Continent. Even if all of Green Cloud Continent comes for Wen Clan, I am not even a tad bit scared, Wen Jing said slowly as he looked up at the ten plus people who were clearly reaching soon. King Shui did not have the time to ponder over Wen Jing's words. Right now, there were over ten men nearby. Five of them were old and the others were slightly younger. They each had an extraordinary presence, but they all had the same creepy aura, primarily due to the techniques they used. King Shui commanded the women and Little Fatty to stand in formation. Little Fatty and Lin Zanan stood in the middle of the formation. They were standing in the position of the Buddha Aura Great Illumination Formation, but they did not activate it. After seeing the additional elders, he immediately raised his strength. He held his big dipper sword and informed the rest to start activating the Buddha Aura Great Illumination Formation. The first five elders were about 70 years old, except for the old man in the center who was so old that he was like a withered tree. The creepy aura of the withered man could scare the wits out of any less courageous person. Ha ha! He has the body of the nine yang spirit medium. Jing Er, you have done well this time. Let me know what you wish for. I will grant you anything, said the old man in the center without even turning to look behind. King Shui did not react when he heard the man mention, nine yang spirit medium. He felt that the terms nine yang Buddha body, Nine Yang Marionette King and Nine Yang Golden Body all referred to the same thing, a Nine Yang Body Constitution. It was just that everyone had their own variation of the term. Old Ancestor, please cripple the people behind that man and give them to me. Your grandson, Wen Jing said cautiously. You're still young. Don't obsess too much about women. If you are powerful, you won't lack women. 
Women can cause you to become lazy. They will numb your mind. They will impede your growth and cost you your life. The old man's wise-sounding voice was calm and had a sort of infectious charm. Yes, old ancestor, I know. I just want to absorb the spiritual key from their bodies. Wen Jing lowered his head and said softly. All right. I'm feeling happy today so I'll accede to your request. The old man shook his head and laughed before looking at Wen Jing for a brief moment. Old ancestor, thank you. Wen Jing replied delightedly. One of the elders besides the old ancestor let out a faint sigh. He saw a hint of disappointment in the old ancestor's eyes, and knew that Wen Jing had been eliminated as a candidate to take over as head of the clan. King Shui observed them calmly the whole time. There was even a slight smile on his face. The members of Ghost Sect were all so egotistic and so overconfident, that he wanted to sigh for them. Young man, you are so composed and collected. This amazes me. The old ancestor kept his eyes on King Shui. Even when he briefly glanced at Wen Jing, he did not entirely take his eyes off King Shui. Can an almost dead man ask a few questions? King Shui laughed and asked. No, but I'll make an exception. You can only ask me three questions. I will take that as the price for your life, because I admire your calmness, the old ancestor replied cheerfully. The old man's aura may have been creepy, but he actually looked quite normal. It was just that he was insanely old. Then I'll have to thank you. Sir, can you tell me who is the strongest in Wen clan? King Shui asked with a smile on his face. He did not ask if the old ancestor himself was the strongest as he might not get the answer he wanted, and he would have wasted a chance. The old man hesitated for a moment. Since you asked, I will tell you honestly. It is my uncle. He is quite old and has therefore returned from the four continents, for his retirement. You know about the other four continents, right? I don't exactly know how powerful he is, so this is how I'll answer. Chapter 1053, Ghostly Hypnosis Call, Ghostly Key Devouring, Netherworld Formation. When the old ancestor brought up his uncle, he sounded exceptionally proud of him. King Shui suddenly realized why Wen Jing mentioned that even the leader of Ghost Sect had to treat the Wen clan with respect. That must be the reason. King Shui was shocked to hear that the old ancestor's uncle had come back from the Four Continents to retire. Perhaps that man doesn't have many years left. How strong is he anyway? At the moment, King Shui found the Four Continents quite scary. Luckily, once a person returned from the Four Continents, they were limited by the laws of the Earth. However, he still did not wish to meet anyone from the Four Continents. Old Sir, how powerful is the Wen clan in the other Four Continents? Before he asked this question, King Shui had a startled look on his face. Even though he was really shocked, he did not find the need to hide his emotion. Naturally, the old ancestor felt pleased when he saw King Shui's expression. Everyone acted the same way since having a relative of that level was an honor and something to be proud of. The Wen clan holds an average position in the other four continents. But the other four continents are much wealthier and the cultivators are stronger. I don't want to elaborate on this subject because it is beyond your comprehension. The old ancestor seemed to long for that place, perhaps even reminisced about the place. King Shui had a strong feeling that the old man must have been there before. Old sir, if your clan is bullied here, for example if your entire clan was annihilated by someone, will the people from the Wen clan of the other four continents send people here for revenge? King Shui asked after thinking about it for a few seconds. He had finished asking his three questions and so far he had found out a few things. Now, he was very interested in the last answer. 
he could see that the old ancestor of the Wen clan had a slightly moody expression. There are not many people in the five continents who can annihilate my Wen clan. Even so, they will not decide to do so hastily, because they will pay a high price. However, if we really are annihilated by others, then it'll just prove our incompetence. The Wen clan from the other four continents will never seek revenge in the five continents. It is a sort of pact. People from the four continents are strictly prohibited to abuse their power here in the five continents. However, if those enemies decide to travel to the other four continents, that would be a different matter. Perhaps, the old ancestor of the Wen clan did not consider King Shui a threat at all. Therefore he actually answered King Shui patiently. This was the first time that he had done something like that even though he would be unable to justify his own action. It could just be because he saw King Shui's unique constitution. Old sir, thank you for telling me all that. King Shui thanked the old man sincerely. You don't have to thank me. The answers are what you get in exchange for your life. They are what you deserve. The old ancestor looked at King Shui calmly. That's right. Then I won't stand on ceremony. Will you kill yourself or do you want me to do it? The old ancestor said stiffly with his weather-worn voice while watching King Shui. His words were cold and they possessed an unquestionable intensity, a mannerism of an expert cultivator. I don't want to die. So you will have to snatch my life away from me, old sir. King Shui took out his formation flags and starting throwing them. They stuck to each spot he targeted. In the beginning, the old ancestor was very doubtful of King Shui's ability. However, the old man quickly realized that things were not going well. His expression was immediately replaced with shock and anger. Set up the formation. The old ancestor was suddenly aware that he might have underestimated the young man. The main reason was because King Shui looked very young. But he was very confident that even a super genius would not be able to flip the tables. The old ancestor knew about formations, even his own clan had a few. So he quickly recognized that King Shui was setting up a formation. He knew how insanely powerful formations could be. Therefore they had to stop King Shui. When he remembered King Shui's last question, he somehow felt uneasy. The old ancestor took out his black onyx trident. Pushing his feet against the floor he propelled himself towards King Shui in a demonic fashion as the others fell into their formation positions. In an instant, the entire scene became a battleground, but it had not reached the stage of non-stop exchange between the parties. Nine palace steps, free spirit roaming steps. In a fleeting, elegant, unpredictable movement, King Shui moved closer to the old ancestor, as he simultaneously threw out his formation flags. The old ancestor was now feeling slightly anxious, he did not expect the young fellow to move so quickly. Phantasmic triplicate steps. The old ancestor instantly split into three figures. Two of the figures attacked King Shui from behind, while one of them attacked him head on. The three silhouettes were extremely fast. They each left a heavy trail of yin qi in their path, and the dark aura was spreading rapidly throughout the hall. Buddha's true eyes. Pack, pack, with two loud sounds, the two fake decoys shattered. Great Golden Buddha Palm. King Shui launched his Great Golden Buddha Palm directly at the last real figure. Pack, nine palace steps. King Shui saw his Buddha Palm attack utterly destroyed by the old man, but King Shui had already finished placing the last formation flag. He finally felt some relief. Even if there was an unexpected situation, he could always enter the formation. As he did not have much time, King Shui used his duality minutest formation. Descending Heaven's Talisman. King Shui was very cautious, but he was calm. 
His nine palace steps had reached a mature stage, and when he placed down his descending heaven's talisman, he clicked his tongue. Over 1,000 stars. The old man's strength was actually over 200,000 stars, almost close to 300,000 stars. The Wen clan old ancestor wanted to kill King Shui, so the old man could not help inwardly cursing King Shui. When King Shui used his descending heavens, talisman, the old ancestor became a little dazed or rather stunned. Subsequently, King Shui started throwing all sorts of talisman, such as his binding talisman, at the old man. At the same time, he used all the talismans with buffs on himself. He was also talisman master. The old ancestor felt like crying but he had no tears. He had just realized that King Shui was extremely cunning and could easily slip out of his hands like a loach. The old man waved his black onyx trident. Nine phantoms soul pursuit. Suddenly, a faint black flow of ki rapidly appeared around King Shui's body. Just like an intangible rope, it bounded King Shui tightly. At that very moment, the old ancestor rushed toward King Shui in a flash and launched his black onyx trident in the direction of King Shui's head. The large black onyx trident was just like a black jiao and it let out a loud ghastly howl as it headed towards King Shui. Ghostly hypnosis call. King Shui felt as if he had been marked with a target. Furthermore, his opponent also possessed a terrifying speed. In the blink of an eye, the black onyx trident was only three meters away from him. Shu, Shu. Suddenly, King Shui heard a series of piercing sounds that were so sharp, it was as though they could pierce through the starfield. This was a kind of sonar attack that was charged with spiritual energy. It was like lion's roar but weaker. The main purpose of that ghastly howl was to distract the opponent. The yin-yang image in his sea of consciousness started spinning rapidly. King Shui sealed his ears with his own spiritual energy and he defended himself against the black onyx trident with his own big dipper sword. Wave Essence this time around, he used his brute strength and took the opportunity to step backwards. He was unable to activate the chance of the multiplying 20% of his offensive force. King Shui flew backwards when the weapons clashed, but he was unharmed. This all happened in a flash, about the time it took for three breaths. When the Wen clan members had completed their formation, they were stunned to see the outcome of the few blows. Old sir, I used those techniques because I wanted to thank you for answering my questions. I won't hold back any longer. You better use your most powerful technique or join that formation. Otherwise, you will regret it. King Shui's Big Dipper Sword was now spewing a long primordial fire snake. The old ancestor was seething. He did not like being made fun of. His rather tranquil face was now extremely sinister. He drew a semicircle in front of him with his palm. Black flames of ki appeared and engulfed his entire body. Such dark ki was like toxic dust. It not only blocked the view of the opponent, it was also poisonous. Unfortunately, the old ancestor did not know that King Shui was also well versed in the use of poisons. If he had known that, he wouldn't have used that technique. Die. Soul chasing fatal pursuit. The old ancestor's black onyx trident headed for King Shui like a black venomous snake. Manifestation. King Shui's big dipper sword vibrated and a primordial fire snake rushed forth from it wrapping around the black onyx trident. A series of clear crisp metallic sounds rang out. King Shui raised his left hand and threw multiple cold steel needles at the old man. Ding! King Shui noticed a shield-like item appearing in front of the old man. It also surrounded the dark key within it. It was the same, shield, that Wen Jing used. But he sensed that it was more powerful. 
primordial flame dragon drill. King Shui channeled his spiritual energy and targeted the old man's protective shield. Such protective shields were powered by one's spiritual energy. Even if it had been created by a treasure item, it was made of something very similar to spiritual energy. Hence, it would be easier to destroy them with spiritual energy as well. When the primordial flame dragon drill hit the protective shield, the protective shield vibrated violently for a moment. Based on the old man's capabilities and given that his spiritual energy was at about 200,000 stars, the root source of the shield must be the old man's strength. King Shui's spiritual energy was at 7,000 stars. But his Arhat Rosary beads boosted his spiritual energy to about 105,000 stars without any restraint from the laws of heaven and earth. Similarly, the old ancestor's spiritual energy must also be free from these restraints. However, since King Shui's flames were primordial flames, even when they were not at their maximum lethality, they were already extremely powerful. When used with a technique like primordial flame dragon drill, they could only become terrifyingly stronger. There was no way that the old man could compare to a six-headed crystal beast. Once that attack hit his protective shield, the protective shield shattered into smithereens. In that instant, the old ancestor was totally shocked. He was not only shocked, he was also scared. When he recalled how the young man maintained his composure, and how he carefully posed those three questions, the old man finally realized something. Pack, the old man was whipped once by King Shui's primordial flames. To your positions, netherworld formation. The old ancestor positioned himself in the center of the formation that his clan members had formed. As soon as he finished his sentence, a large illusion appeared and enveloped all of them. Python-tailed lion. A large lion illusion appeared, but its tail was in the form of a large python and there was a malevolent-looking python head at the tip of the tail. The formation activated a demonic beast armor manifestation. Was that possible? King Shui could sense that this demonic beast armor manifestation was much stronger than the one which belonged to the old man from Buddha sect. The people in the formation channeled all their spiritual energy into the python-tailed lion illusion. As the illusion became clearer and clearer, it became obvious that the creature was pitch black and the python head appeared more and more vicious. King Shui targeted the python head with his nimble primordial flame whip. SS. The python head spat out a column of black key, which corroded the primordial flame whip, then it headed for King Shui. Ghostly key devouring. The huge python head opened its wide mouth and spat out a ball of condensed gray cloud. It headed toward King Shui traveling along the same trajectory as the primordial flame whip, then the huge python head appeared directly in front of King Shui. Divinity protection. Demonic beast armor manifestation. King Shui had not expected that he would have to use both divinity protection and demonic beast armor manifestation. Chapter 1054. Wen Jing's death, annihilation, King Shui's terrifying strength. Boom! The ball of condensed gray cloud, that the python head spat out, hit the glowing aura of King Shui's divinity protection. At the same time, King Shui hastily used his nine palace steps to dodge the attack. As the saying goes, it is always good to have more skills. King Shui felt that if he didn't have his divinity protection, he would have lost a layer of his skin. He only chose to use this tactic because he knew that he could deal with it in that way. Otherwise, he would have used his full power. He did not want to show the full extent of his power because he knew that there was yet another even more powerful expert in the Wen clan. Thus it would be to his disadvantage if his opponent knew how terrifying his true strength really was. 
King Shui's demonic beast armor manifestation increased all of his stats by one fold. So even if he was dealing with this netherworld formation, he knew that he should still be able to defeat it. Hiss. The gigantic python head rushed toward King Shui once again. The sound of its hiss was so chilling that it could even make one's scalp feel numb. Great Golden Buddha Palm. Roar. King Shui's earth diamond bear beast soul let out an indistinct roar. This roar wasn't loud, but it was very deep. It was as if it could create a pressure on one's heart. It shook the opponent's spirits. Pa! His great golden Buddha palm disintegrated one after the other, but the python head was also destroyed, even though it quickly regrew. Roar roar! The head of the python-tailed lion could also produce a deep resonating roar. Each time it roared, its strength rose a bit, and the python head's attacks became more and more powerful. It turned out that the formation was activated by the beast soul of the demonic beast armor manifestation. The strength of 5000 stars was used as a defense, whereas the main attack was generated by spiritual energy. Primordial Dragon Dance. King Shui swung his big dipper sword and the two primordial fire snakes doubled in size. Their heads gradually changed into the shape of a jowl. They intertwined and sped towards the gigantic python head in mid-air. Primordial Flames. Double Dragon Drill. King Shui swung his big dipper sword once again. Two primordial flame dragons intertwined and spun toward the python head. Poo poo. Roar. Hiss. Even though the noise was ear-piercing, the actually scene was not that violent. The clash between spirit energies was dangerous, but it did not create much physical impact. Instead it continuously created loud, thunderous noise. This was a sort of collision where the stronger party would swallow up the weaker party. Yi e Jiang tried to release her seven-headed crystal beast multiple times, but King Shui stopped her. Even though the seven-headed crystal beast was strong, its poison resistance wasn't as strong as King Shui. Anyway, it wasn't the right time to release the seven-headed crystal beast. Buddha's true eyes. Destroy that formation. The golden Buddha appeared and King Shui's strength shot up by another fold. King Shui's two attack, Buddha's true eyes and primordial flames, double dragon drill landed directly on the python-tailed lion. Boom! Roar! The entire formation fell apart and the formation split as if there was a huge explosion in the middle. Wen Jing, the weakest among him, as well as other weaker members were killed immediately by the aftershocks of the spirit energy collision. Wen Jing probably never expected that he would die like this. He did not want to die yet. He was still thinking of those women. They were the most beautiful women he had ever seen. Their charms would simply destroy multiple cities. Unfortunately, his life was too short to enjoy them. Roar roar. The old ancestors and some of the other elders were not badly injured. The python-tailed lion took on most of the damage so the weaker members in the formation died, while the other were injured slightly. The five elder that headed the formation had no visible injuries, they were now summoning their own demonic beasts. People who have reached their level would have at least one demonic beast. Furthermore, if their spirit energy is high, it would be easy for them to tame a demonic beast. Unfortunately, unlike a beast tamer, they will never have a demonic beast with a higher spirit energy than them. Suddenly, multiple demon beasts appeared. At the same time, Yi E Jiang called out her seven-headed crystal beast, while Luan Luan called out her six-headed wind fire wolf. Wu. The golden Buddha image behind King Shui was starting to close its eyes. The golden Buddha image that occasionally appear every now and then can now be summoned at will. This was the effect of Buddha's true eyes. King Shui was not very clear but he knew that he could summon the Buddha image whenever he wanted. 
Once the Buddha image appeared, his spirit energy will increase by one fold. This was as useful as demonic beast armor manifestation and the pair of eyes on the Buddha image was indeed the Buddha's true eyes. Due to the presence of the Buddha image, King Shui's spirit energy attacks were now scarily powerful. With King Shui's Arhat rosary beads and Big Dipper sword, his spirit energy was now almost 30,000 stars. With the buffs from the demonic beast armor manifestation and Buddha form reveal, his spirit energy already reached 100,000 stars. This was because King Shui's spirit energy was no longer bound by the laws of this earth, otherwise King Shui would only be able to use a miserable amount of spirit energy. Arhat rosary beads was indeed a heaven-defying item. This was King Shui's hidden ace. He would also rely on this to attack Lion King's ridge. This time, he will let Wen Clan feel his wrath and others know his strength. Chi Chi. His primordial flame whip appeared from the tip of King Shui's sword. It was 100 meters and as thick as one's calf. It was a simple gray, but the aura that it emitted made the old ancestor's face turn ashen gray. It exuded an all-encompassing pressure, a pressure which nothing can withstand. Pa! King Shui swung the whip at one of the elders. The elder disintegrated on the spot. King Shui was now like a Shinigami looking disdainfully at the opponents before him. Wait! Let me, an old man, say something. The old ancestor spoke with cold sweat pouring down his head like rain. The old man himself mentioned that there were not many people who could destroy the Wen clan and that there would be a terrible price to pay. However, the young man in front of him, was about to kill all of them in a mere few minutes. What sort of terrible price was there? The young man wasn't even harm a little. How powerful was this demon-like young man anyway? Don't beg for your lives. If I hear that, I will kill you immediately. The primordial flame whip in King Shui's hand flickered menacingly. The old ancestor had an agonizing look. The elders around him had the same expression. Not only did they feel bitter, they were afraid. Facing death, it was unavoidable that they would be afraid even though they have already lived for such a long time. Not many people could disregard the importance of life and death. Please let the other members of the Wen clan live. I will give you something of great value. The old ancestor knew that he and his group would not survive this. However, he did not want the entire Wen clan to be annihilated because of him. Unfortunately, this was just a last-ditch effort. King Shui just wanted to give the old man a chance to speak. There was no way he would let these people go. He also did not plan to spare anyone from Wen clan. This was because it made him uneasy to let any of them live. Thinking about that, this was the reason why he finally revealed his strength. He wanted to shock everyone. Even if that hidden expert was around, he wanted to intimidate that man. I can get whatever you offer with my own hands. Why should I negotiate it with you? King Shui looked at them coldly. No, no. I will tell you about a place which holds treasures. But it is not that easy to access. There is a powerful demonic beast guarding that place. If you let the other members of the Wen clan live, I will tell you that place. The old ancestors quickly explained. King Shui did not believe the man. He felt that the old man was trying to delay him. King Shui thought that the man was trying to wait for other members from the four continents to come over. Besides, if that dangerous place really existed, it may not have any treasures. It could be a trap to get rid of King Shui. These old men certainly knew that King Shui will not let them live. Lastly, even if there were treasures, that place must be extremely dangerous. I will give you a chance. Don't try to negotiate with me. You know you must all die. King Shui replied. It was clear from his firm tone that the situation had already been decided. 
Peng Meng Immortal Mountain lies north of northern Sacred Lu continent. There is a place there called Peng Meng Paradiso. It is said that there are treasures to be found there, but it is guarded by a powerful demonic beast guardian. As it is a dangerous place, it can only be challenged by people with incredible power. The old ancestor said as he recalled. King Shui knew that the old man was trying to delay him, but King Shui played along. It was so easy for him to kill them that no one would be able to save them. Are you done? King Shui asked plainly. Peng Meng Immortal Mountain is very large. I can tell you where exactly Peng Meng Paradiso lies. You can then call for more people to accompany you. It'll be safer that way. King Shui did not utter a word. He extended his primordial flame whip. The old ancestor started trembling. He couldn't believe that this was happening. He actually thought that the group of people were just lambs waiting to be slaughtered. Who would have known that the tables would be turned on them? He turned back to see Wen Jing who was already dead. He could feel his heart bleeding, but he had no other choice. The old ancestor quickly added, Peng Meng Immortal Mountain is a mountain range that spans from east to west. Peng Meng Paradiso is right in the middle. There is a gorge there, a very deep gorge. Once you enter, you will find yourself surrounded by mountains. Inside, you will see a large emerald green lake. That lake is the entrance of Peng Meng Paradiso, but it is very dangerous, as the demonic beast lives there. The old ancestor said this very slowly, as if he was deep in thought. From the way he spoke, King Shui felt that the old man was telling him the truth. There was definitely such a place, there was such a lake, and it was definitely dangerous. But who knows if there was any treasure there at all. Look, sir, the old ancestor looked at King Shui anxiously. The strength of the people in the room was significant in the Wen clan. Even though there were only a few people here, it was enough to prove that Wen clan was quite powerful overall. Before King Shui could reply, he sensed movement from afar. He could feel the aura of a number of people heading his way. King Shui shook his whip. Run! Save yourselves! The old ancestor yelled as he retreated backward. He was getting close to the others who were heading their way. He knew that the other members from the Wen clan were coming. Perhaps, he might have a chance. Nine palace steps. Great reversal. All of a sudden, King Shui swapped positions with the old ancestor. The old ancestor was not aware of this or rather he did not care as his life was in danger. The old ancestor was now heading towards King Shui at an alarming speed. Pa! Even after he died, the old ancestor could not figure out why he was heading in King Shui's direction. Wasn't King Shui behind him? The old ancestor's brain exploded as the whip touched him. Even his body disappeared into thin air. As King Shui saw the elders running away and the additional Wen clan members before him, he chased them with lightning speed. The seven-headed crystal beast also chased after one of the elders. It thrusted its claw covered with ice fire directly into the elder's heart. Chapter 1055. Seven Steps Nine Palace Crush. Destroying Formations. With King Shui, the seven-headed crystal beast and the six-headed wind firewolf hot on their heels, the people were all killed within seconds. There weren't even any corpses left behind. The seven-headed crystal beast was a formidable creature, but King Shui could easily defeat it if he used his Buddha's true eyes to summon the Buddha image. If he did not use that skill, his base strength was equal to that of the seven-headed crystal beast. Even that level of strength was considered very amazing. King Shui thought of the seven-headed scarlet serpent. He wondered if the seven-headed crystal beast would be as powerful as the seven-headed scarlet serpent, if it reached the sacred land of Panacea. There, 
its strength wouldn't be restricted by the laws of the earth. The seven-headed crystal beast was a heaven and earth spiritual species. Beasts which belong to these spiritual species were naturally unconfined by the laws of heaven and earth. The higher their spiritual power, the more powerful they were. When everything settled down, another ten people appeared not far from them. These people were about the level of the old ancestor. The person who stood out at the front was a gentle-looking old man. Even though the man was old, his condition was very good. He had long eyebrows and narrow eyes on a thin face. His white clothing, combined with his long white hair and beard, gave him a sort of unworldly deity-like aura. King Shui's spiritual sense was very sharp, so he could tell that the old man had very weak vitality. Once a person's vitality ended, he would die. A weak vitality was a sign that the old man didn't have long to live. From the man's aura, King Shui could also conclude that this man was indeed the uncle who had come back from the four continents to retire. The people behind him were mostly old men, but there were also some middle-aged men. Right now, each of them was looking angrily at the scene in front of them. The angry look on their faces was as if they almost wanted to swallow King Shui alive. The Wen clan had absolute power here. No one dared to offend the Wen clan, and most chose to avoid him at all cost. This was also the reason that the Wen clan had become arrogant tyrants, doing all sorts of evil in the dark. The ghost sect was not a righteous sect in the first place, so the Wen clan's status in ghost sect did nothing much to curb them. There were even some members in Wen clan who wanted to take over as head of the ghost sect. However, the ghost sect was a huge sect and not anyone could just take the position of head, especially not any kind-hearted, righteous soul. Therefore, the members in Wen clan did not dare to take any sort of risky action. Even though they were powerful, they knew they could not pay that sort of price. The previous fight with King Shui could not be considered a crippling loss, but it was still quite significant. The five elders had been top-tier cultivators. The old ancestor, the second most powerful cultivator in the clan after his uncle, was also dead. Among this new group, King Shui felt that only the single old man in front posed a threat. He had the confidence to deal with the others, but King Shui was afraid that they would use a formation. It would be troublesome if these men used that netherworld formation again. The people that gathered here were probably all the remaining elites of the Wen clan, so King Shui wanted to keep them busy here. This would be their retribution for their evil plot and a form of justice for the innocent people killed in the mansion. King Shui could not gauge how powerful the old man was. The sense of danger that hung in the air was very intense, so King Shui kept up his current equipments and buffs, planning to deal with the old man in his current state. If he could, he would kill that old man in front of him as quickly as possible to prevent the possibility that the situation would change. King Shui felt a little uneasy that he had this thought, because that meant that he still didn't have enough confidence in himself. Sigh, I am still late. Young man, you have enraged me. I don't have many years left to live, so why did you have to disturb my peace? The old man sighed, as if he was grudgingly accepting what was before him. The old man spoke in a normal manner, just like any other elder on the street. Do you mean I should have just stood there and let myself be killed? Don't you know what sort of trash you people with the surname Wen are? Do I need to spell it out for you? King Shui retorted furiously. He really hated people who used their seniority to avoid blame. King Shui's malicious words definitely riled up the old man before him. After all, the old man was also a member of the Wen clan. It was obvious that King Shui was insulting him, a man of even higher status than the old ancestor. 
The old man had not heard such words directed at him for many years. Although he still had a pleasant disposition, it did not mean that he was not angry. Ignorant fool! Do you think you are really undefeatable with your capabilities? What a joke! The old man said to King Shui contemptuously. King Shui was startled by what the man said. In his current state, it was not possible for someone to properly estimate how powerful he was, but his opponent seemed unbothered by this. Maybe, but you will find that it isn't that funny in a while. It must be difficult for the Wen clan to exist after today. King Shui was already fed up with talking. A huge primordial flame ball appeared from the tip of his big dipper sword. At this point, this matter could be settled with just a battle. King Shui took action first, summoning his golden-scaled dragon elephant and throwing the primordial flame ball towards his opponent. Boom! Vajra subdues demons. Currently, the golden-scaled dragon elephant's Vajra subdues demons had an area-wide weakening effect, so it hit the opponents before the large primordial flame ball's explosion with billowing smoke. With King Shui's current stats, his primordial flame ball was considerably powerful. With that explosion, the two weakest elders died on the spot. Some of the middle-aged man disappeared and many of the rest were badly injured. Now, the old man raised his brows, but his expression still didn't change by much. Evil Spirit's Dragon Trapping Formation the remaining ten people instantly stood in formation. The old man took out a large onyx black cane and swung it at King Shui. A large black phantom-like figure rushed towards King Shui. This was the ghost sect's secret technique, haunting phantoms. It was actually a type of technique that used spirit energy created by an accumulation of yin energy. It is similar to King Shui's golden Buddha palm which concentrated yang energy. Great Golden Buddha Palm. A large Buddha hand grabbed the phantom. The air filled with a loud, intense boom. King Shui waved his arms and sent two Golden Buddha Palms towards the old man. The old man reacted and blocked the attack with another two black phantoms. SS. The old man made a summoning gesture and a large illusory serpentine demonic beast enveloped him. Demonic beast armor manifestation. King Shui's two golden Buddha palms were in a deadlock with the opponent's phantoms. King Shui raised a hand and threw out a descending heaven's talisman. 4,000 stars. This outcome was a little surprising for King Shui. The old man's strength was actually slightly above 80,000 stars. King Shui now felt assured about the fight's outcome. Even though the old man could back his arrogance with his capabilities, he did not know that King Shui's Arhat rosary beads was a sacred object of heaven and earth. Five Waves Great Golden Buddha Palm A row of dazzling large golden Buddha palms appeared, imbued with sacred key, and headed in the old man's direction. For a moment, the entire place was filled with a golden glow. Underworld Jiao rushing the sky. The old man pointed his large onyx black cane towards King Shui and a large amount of black colored key rushed out. In an instant, the key transformed into a vicious Jiao head that grew larger and larger as it flew out of the cane. Roar! It carried an evil aura as it headed towards the five waves golden Buddha palm. Boom! Boom! The clash between the yin and yang energy created a large explosive sound. King Shui's golden Buddha palm were destroyed one after another. Meanwhile, the Zhao head flickered, its tail connected to the old man's cane. The old man channeled his own spirit energy continuously into the attack. Primordial Flame Dragon Dance. Dragon transcends the sky. A lifelike gray dragon with the girth of a man's calf appeared at the tip of King Shui's big dipper sword. This was a dragon totem that King Shui was familiar with. 
The dragon zigzagged towards the large black jiao. The two creatures created with huge amounts of spirit energy intertwined. Both men were very confident in their own abilities, and this head-on attack was not only a battle of how strong their spirit energy was, but also one of how large a reserve each had. King Shui was not afraid to fight with the old man using his spirit energy. His spirit energy expenditure was very low, and even if they wanted to compete on how destructive their spirit energy was, King Shui held an advantage. If the old man knew that King Shui had an item like the Arhat rosary beads, he would not have chosen to fight King Shui with his spirit energy. The old man already sensed that King Shui had a treasure which boosted his spirit energy, but he did not believe that King Shui's spirit energy was comparable to his. After this lasted for 15 minutes, the old man suddenly realized that something was wrong. He quickly gave a command, activate the formation. The opponent's formation started moving, but King Shui stood his ground. The skies turned dark as if a large cage hovered above them. Evil Spirit's Dragon Trapping Formation King Shui felt the surrounding ghostly ki devouring him bit by bit. This was counted with his nature energy. He did not know what would have happened to him if not for his nature energy. With the evil spirit's dragon trapping formation, his opponent's strength greatly increased. King Shui was not sure if this formation defied the natural laws or if it was because of the ghostly key. He only knew that he was not greatly affected by it. Taking advantage of the situation, the old man swung his cane again, and an invisible yin ki surrounded King Shui. King Shui suddenly felt as if he was stuck in a room which four walls closing him inside. Immovable mountains. Whatever happens, I won't falter, King Shui thought to himself. Hu hu. The spirit energy around King Shui became erratic and the old man seemed to grow stronger and stronger. But King Shui focused and realized that the old man was the eye of the formation. The old man was where all the energy of the formation was accumulated. King Shui started cursing inwardly. The old man's strength was now about the same as his. If the formation continued to boost the old man's capabilities, King Shui would only be able to protect himself. Emperor's Key. Once his opponent was weakened, King Shui stepped on his big dipper sword and leapt upwards in a spiral. Each step was heavier than the one before, but each was laden with profoundness. Seven Steps Nine Palace Crush. This was a powerful technique of his nine palace steps, which he had never used before. Even though he was trapped in a formation, everything was still within the logic of the nine palace. Once the nine palace of the formation crumbled, the formation would be destroyed. One step, two steps. King Shui moved slower and slower. These were heaven-defying steps, as if he were crushing the sky with each step. The old man tried to attack King Shui, but he was unable to do so. Each step grew heavier and heavier. The old man felt as though King Shui was stepping directly on his heart, and his face started to grow pale. Four steps, five steps. Stop him. The old man hollered. Six steps. King Shui felt as if his feet were ten thousand catties in weight. He lifted one foot and his face also turned pale. Seven steps nine palace crush. Once the seventh step hit the ground, the old man immediately spat out blood. The first step in using the logic of Nine Palace to destroy formations was that the eye of the formation had to be brought down. That was where the energy was consolidated. Chapter 1056, The Formidability of Nine Palace, The End of Wen Clan, Common Origin City. With the last step, the Nine Palace logic of the Evil Spirit's Dragon Trapping Formation was destroyed, along with the formation itself. The entire area was affected by the impact and the eye of the formation was utterly decimated.
Although the old man tried his best to move from his formation position, King Shui's counterattack was fatal. The old man's life was now hanging on by a thread. He was delaying his death by using his incredible strength. However, he could only live for another two more hours at most. The surrounding people in the formation were all injured and the weaker members even vomited blood. King Shui fell to the ground and a stream of blood poured from the side of his mouth. Using seven steps nine palace crush still placed a considerable strain on King Shui. The stronger the opponent, the greater the recoil, thus the cost for using this technique was quite high. King Shui smiled at the people in front of him. His injuries were healing rapidly. The members of Wen clan were stunned. They looked at the old man, the pillar of their clan, and then at King Shui. Their eyes were filled with disbelief and fear. How can such a powerful person exist here on the five continents? The heavens must be playing a prank on me. The old man howled at the sky, unable to accept this outcome. He howled like an injured wild beast unwilling to accept its fate. Hearing his howl, the hearts of his fellow members fell to the pits of their stomachs. This old man was a god to the entire Wen clan. Without him, the Wen clan would fall. Just as Wen Jing said, the ghost sect could not do anything to the Wen clan because of this old man. Now that this old man and the old ancestor were gone, the status of Wen clan in the ghost sect would take a devastating dive. Even if there were a thousand other lesser cultivators in Wen clan, there was no way they could defeat the man before them. Fight. With the dire situation laid out so clearly before them, they already had no motivation. When the Buddha Aura Great Illumination Formation was deactivated, Ye Jiang walked over to King Shui. When she saw the blood on the side of his mouth, her heart ached a little. She instinctively reached out and wiped it away for King Shui. Even though she was a pure, goddess-like woman, she did not seem to mind touching that blood. Her face was covered by a veil, so only her beautiful, unworldly eyes could be seen. She wore a veil to avoid the people from Lion King's Ridge finding out that she was in the continent, even though it had been years seen since she last saw them. It was her beauty that caught the attention of the young master in Lion King's Ridge in the first place. If there was news that a woman as beautiful as her was on the continent, it might alert the people in Lion King's Ridge and cause a lot of unnecessary trouble. Money and beautiful women are always sources of temptations. King Shui held her hand, while he used his other sleeve to wipe away all the blood. Almost as if she had realized something, her eyes which usually showed a nonchalant attitude towards worldly affairs turned misty. She pulled back her hand from King Shui. Are you all right? She asked gently. King Shui held onto her hand which had been tainted by his blood and kissed it lightly. I am all right. Those people are just laughable jesters. Ye Jiang pulled her hand back and gave King Shui a slight glance of annoyance. As she noticed the other women looking at King Shui with adoration, she felt her face grow red, but it was hidden by her veil. King Shui saw his own team stepping forward. The remaining opponents were still in combative stances. King Shui readied himself for a massacre and rushed forward with their seven-headed crystal beast and their six-headed wind fire wolf. As a man, King Shui knew that he could not afford to be soft-hearted. Indecisiveness would only lead to regret and unnecessary pain. He had to kill his opponents, even if he had to harden his heart to do so. Although there were many enemies, King Shui used his full strength. Furthermore, they had their powerful demonic beasts. The people from his party were also quite good at nine palace steps, so they could coordinate well with him. Overall, his team could not be underestimated. King Shui wanted to take this opportunity to see how his team fought together. 
Little Fatty was the strongest among him, besides the demonic beasts. This was a rare battle for both parties. The members of Wen clan here were all slightly above 5,000 stars. This was quite an incredibly strong group. In addition to that, they had their old ancestor and that old man to back him up. It was a fact that not many people in the five continents could harm them. Unfortunately, when misfortune befalls, one would die from choking on water. Young men like King Shui were rarer than rare in the five continents. However, Wen clan had the misfortune of meeting him and even offending him. The battle wasn't short and during it, King Shui made sure that his party was safe. After all, a chance to battle all out would be a good opportunity for them to advance and even gain some breakthroughs. The battle lasted for 30 minutes. The demonic beasts killed almost half the enemies. King Shui also killed quite a lot of people. The women actually killed a few people and King Shui could tell that they could coordinate with each other very well. King Shui could feel that it was natural for them. After the battle, dead bodies littered the ground. If other people came to know how powerful those dead men were, they would be shocked out of their wits. These men symbolized the top of the pyramid in the five continents in terms of strength, but they were all dead now. King Shui kept all the valuables they could find and burned all the dead bodies together. Then, they buried their bones. King Shui placed a boulder on their burial site. He hesitated and then carved the three words, Wen Clan Graveyard. They knew that they could not stay here any longer, they had to abandon their plans to stay for the night. King Shui did not have much interest in the items that the Wen clan owned. He had already taken multiple interspatial silk sachets which was where most of their loot was probably hidden instead of the clan's storage warehouse. Despite this, there were obviously some things that may not fit in the interspatial silk sachets. They left the mansion and using their nine continent steps, which could cover 400,000 li each time. After a while, King Shui and his group disappeared from Arctic Wolf City. When the people from the ghost sect rushed over, they only found the empty, creepy mansion. There were blood stains and signs of battle. Last, but not least, there was a boulder that indicated that this place was the Wen clan's graveyard. An elder with low brows and triangular eyes stayed silent. He was completely stunned when he saw the boulder or rather a tombstone. He tried to imagine the battle scene. It was obvious to him that there was a huge fight, but he had never expected this outcome. It was a hard for him to accept this. Who could wipe out the entire Wen clan? The elder turned to ask the other men behind him. Sect Lord, Wen clan has done too much over these few years. Could it be that they offended some mysterious group? After all, who could truly know what kind of experts exist here in the five continents? An old man replied slowly. I thought I'll be bullied by that old man from the Wen clan for a few more years. Who could have guessed that old man wouldn't be able to retire peacefully after coming back from the four continents? Such a joke. The old man continued still unable to believe what had happened. That is the end of Wen clan. But I am curious about the culprits. I wonder where they are from. How can they just disappear without a trace? Common Origin City. After four nine continent steps, they reached Common Origin City. Compared to Arctic Wolf City, this was a very normal city. It was underdeveloped in many areas. Different places and different cities displayed different levels of wealth and prosperity. As King Shui had been to many different cities, he naturally had a benchmark for this. Wen clan had made King Shui slightly cautious. Buddha sect and demon gate were slightly weaker than them. This was mainly because Buddha sect and demon gate were on bad terms with people from the four continents. If Wen clan did not have the backing of the old man, 
It had about the same influence as Buddha sect and Demon Gate. There was still a limit to how powerful a clan could be. It seemed that if a clan was powerful in the four continents, it was advantageous to their branch in the five continents. Just like in the Wen clan, they could still go back to the five continent to lead a leisurely life. However, this was a rare case. The branches in the four continents would usually lose contact with their clans or sect in the five continents as they established themselves in a new environment and community. Most of the time, their connection would only be in name. Perhaps, only if a person was originally from five continents and reminisced their time here would they actually move back to the five continents after some years. Thus, people from the four continents would not interfere directly with the people in the five continents, unless the person of interest travels to the four continents. After a few generations, the descendants of brothers do not really have much of a relationship anyway. King Shui was certain that there was no need for him to worry about that sort of possible scenario. Even if the people from the four continents wanted to travel to the five continents, it would still take them a couple of years. After a few years, relationships would grow weak, thus motivations would also dwindle. Even without the restrictions in place, no one would waste ten years to travel back to the five continent for revenge. Besides, if those people couldn't last in the four continents, King Shui was sure he could handle them. Once King Shui realized this, he felt very relaxed. He felt his burdened heart and body lighten. They found an inn and stayed there soon after. This time around, everything went well. Since he had already used up the quota for his nine continent step, King Shui decided to go back to his room to cultivate. He had quite a few enlightenments today so he wanted to quickly examine them. King Shui went into his realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. He did not have to fear that he would run out of time once he entered his realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. He only needed to use six hours of his time in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, so it was comparatively less taxing for him than before he had that realm. If one wished to be the best man, they must be prepared to suffer the bitterest of the bitter. Behind every genius was an unspeakable loneliness. When everyone was enjoying life with laughter and women, they were busy practicing. They spend most of their time practicing their art. Instead of seeing the glorious front that they presented to everyone, one had to consider the effort and hard work that they put in, which was not something that just anyone could bear. Even if King Shui had his realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, he worked very hard. In the morning, they traveled and at night he practiced his martial arts. Even the attractive women around him did not distract him. That was how resolute he was. After entering the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, he looked at the pile of interspatial silk sachet on the ground. These interspatial silk sachets belong to those powerful men, so there must be many good items in them. Kill and steal. That was the fastest way to make money thus many people risked potential dangers to do that. King Shui actually wanted his group to just distribute the interspatial silk sachets amongst themselves, but they wanted King Shui to choose the items he wanted first, so they returned the sachets to him. In the end, he kept the sachets, planning to see how he could distribute it back to them. Chapter 1057 A Familiar Aura, Luin Luin and Ye Jiang Many interspatial silk sachets awaited King Shui. When he looked through the contents, he discovered that it was quite a treasure trove. There were medicinal pills and medicinal herbs, that sort of thing. He found that many of the items were not bad. If the dead men knew that King Shui only rated their items as such, they would become so angry that they might come back to life. King Shui decided to leave the items for his companions. These items would help to increase their strength quite significantly. As for King Shui, 
He only hoped to get some breakthroughs in his spirit energy. In addition to that, King Shui found a few secret manuals in the interspatial silk sachets. However, King Shui was unsure if he could actually use those techniques since they were based on yin qi. There were also many weapons, metal ingots, as well as some bizarre items. However, King Shui did not find any powerful magic treasure. There were some pretty good items, but they were not useful to him, so he placed them back. This entire search took about half a day. Based on the needs of the women, Little Fatty and Lin Zanan, he distributed the items so that everybody had a share. His heart of rock was still at the large success stage. He was still unable to reach the great perfection stage for that skill. To him, it was like a itch he could not scratch as heart of rock is a powerful passive spirit energy skill. Rock spreading wings was also another skill that King Shui wanted to improve on as it could boost his speed. If he could reach the great perfection stage for both heart of rock and rock spreading wings, he knew that his strength will instantaneously increase by leaps and bounds. His rock smite was still at a very basic stage. Other than tampering with his magic treasures, he practiced his nine waves great golden Buddha palm. It was now at the six layer realm. Once it reached the seven layer realm, it would be a turning point for the technique. Demonic beast armor manifestation was still at an infancy stage. But King Shui looked forward to the future progress of this skill because of its impressive power. However, he had no idea when that will happen. He only hoped that it will be sooner. King Shui had already taken a more casual approach towards his training, perhaps because he had sufficient time now. He treated everything as a cycle and did not have an extensive plan because he found that quite redundant. In the presence of time, everything else is powerless. King Shui does not possess an infinite amount of time, but the time he gained through his realm of the Violet Jade Immortal is enough to change whatever situation he meets. It has already created a huge change in his life. They had nothing planned for the next day. Since everyone was in quite a good mood, they decided to explore Common Origin City together in a group. King Shui wanted to explore all the spots they visited as he had time. As long as they were not in a hurry, this was what he usually did. But the others could not afford such luxury of time. As the weather was cold, most of the people wore thick coats. King Shui and his companions also wore their fox fur overcoats. There were many other people who wore fox fur coats, but the quality of fox fur could be classified into different grade. It was not particularly because they needed it since they were already powerful cultivators. They can sense the temperature by the cold did not feel uncomfortable nor does it threaten their lives. But it was just a feeling they have. With the cold weather, even if one did not really feel cold, wearing thin clothes will trick the mind into thinking that one was cold. Similarly, one would feel warm wearing thick clothes in a hot weather even when they are not supposed to feel that hot. When people feel cold, it is because they receive a signal in their brain from their skin. The skin sends such a signal as people will fall sick if they are too cold and might even lose their life. However, strong cultivators can feel cold because all their senses are enhanced. However, they don't feel uncomfortable, so they will still choose to wear thick coats when it is snowing in winter. Every so often, huge flying beasts flew above the city. All of the riders looked very arrogant as they looked down on the people below. This was just like a natural instinct. Because one had the advantage of being above, they could look down on others. Different people at different levels had different goals. Not far from him, they saw a marketplace. There were many adults and children there. The space was huge. It was much larger than those King Shui had seen in his previous life. It was very lively and there were all sorts of goods. 
There were even some performances and even a fighting ring. People enjoyed martial arts everywhere in the main continent. That was the reason why there would always be a fighting ring where people gathered. The fighting ring was not merely for people to spectate. There were also betting tables for people to bet on the contestants they think would win. One would earn a little from the right bet. But a wrong bet would mean that the gambler would lose his entire bet. Common origin city was just small city and an exceptionally backward one. When King Shui and his group saw the people fighting in the ring, they immediately recognized that the people were just using very basic, primitive skills. They don't even have to worry that some expert would come over and interfere with their affairs. Every social circle had its own purpose. Just as one would not find interest in two ants fighting, King Shui was not really interested to find out who would win or going up to fight with them. In front of true experts, these men were just as insignificant as ants. King Shui and the women decided to place bets on a few rounds. They did not observe the contestants, but just bet on what they wanted. They just called the contestants, number one and number two. If King Shui were to bet on number one, the women would bet on number two. Rather than gambling, these people were just doing that just for fun. They were just trying to see whose luck was better, so they each have their wins and losses. But King Shui would not waste this chance. The condition was that the biggest loser would have to spend the night with him. With the conditions set, they challenged King Shui with their luck. They usually set the contestant on the left as the number one. Regardless, the change in position during battle, the person who ends up on the left of the ring would be number one. Thus, this was basically all down to luck. In the end, the biggest loser was Yi A Jiang. King Shui did not understand how it happened nor Yi A Jiang's reaction. She gave him a few angry glares, and swung her hips walking away. With this, everyone returned to the inn. Every time they reach a new city, King Shui would buy some souvenirs. Regardless how expensive they were, King Shui would buy whatever he liked to keep as a memento. This was a habit of his so he bought some lovers locks here in Common Origin City. He gave each of the women one, even Yi A Jiang. He felt awkward when he was giving him the locks, but Yi A Jiang received hers happily. This surprised King Shui and he felt delighted. Lover's locks were just any random thing that people could give and receive. It definitely represented something in their relationship. King Shui had a relaxing and happy time that day. So he made himself remember the name of the city. After 10 days, they had left the city and reached a small hamlet where the mountain villagers lived. They had to travel through this place to reach the ancient ruins. Even though this area was covered with mountainous villages, the road was wide. The road had lots of ups and downs but it was smooth. If one were to speed down this road with a car, it would definitely be fun due to the smooth bumps and ditches. Perhaps because he was raised in a mountain village, King Shui had a good impression of this place. This place was slightly north of the center of the northern sacred Lu continent. The further north a place was, the colder it was and the more powerful the people were. The locations at the border of the continents also harbor very powerful people, just like Ghost Sect that was located at the south border of the northern sacred Lu continent. The villages were spread over a large area. It was very different from the layout of a city but it felt very homely to King Shui. The air and environment was extremely good. The environment in the world of the nine continents was well maintained and very good. But this place impressed King Shui the most with its serenity and cleanliness. It was definitely quieter here than in any bustling city. King Shui and his group followed the large road in the middle of the hamlet and chatted light-heartedly. Roar! A roar could be heard vaguely from afar. It was deep and forceful. 
King Shui and his group looked in surprise at the area in front of them. There were very little wild beasts here as the wild beasts do not dare to approach the villages. Demonic beasts lived even further from this place as the hamlet would certainly be destroyed if they were nearby. However, this was a Xianxian demonic beast. The few of them decided to investigate. If they were in another location, they wouldn't care if there was a Xianxian demonic beast. Even if a martial saint demonic beast appeared, they won't give it a second look, as they were on a different level. They walked closer and closer. Suddenly Luin Luin and Yi A Jiang exchanged glances with each other. Mother, can you feel that? It is a familiar aura. It is so familiar. Yi A Jiang nodded. Luin Luin, let's go over. Quick. They ran toward the direction where the roar came from. Ya. Yeah. They were shocked when they saw the scene before them. A boy, with three armored mountain boars, was holding a bow staff and fighting ferociously with a fire leopard. The fire leopard was a Xianxian demonic beast, while the three armored mountain boars were all late Hushan demonic beast. However, with their tasks and their ability, they managed to defend themselves against the fire leopard forcing it backward. The roar of frustration was indeed produced by the fire leopard. The armored mountain boars made very soft snorts. The boy's eyes were lively and clear. He had a jade-like face. It was clear that he would become a beautiful man when he grew up. He would occasionally help the armored mountain boars with his bow staff whenever they were in danger. Each time he will poke the fire leopard's privates. A demonic beast's private parts were their weak spots, but they were usually protected by their tails. However, the boy was as nimble as an ape. Each time he somehow managed to move in an odd angle, which allowed him to land his blows on the demonic beast's weak spot. As the fire leopard was male, there was an additional. Just when King Shui was about to say something to them, he turned back and saw Yi A Jiang and Luan Luan staring at a boy in a daze. The boy was about 11 or 12, and he looked a little like Luan Luan. He even looked a little like Yi A Jiang. When he saw their expression, King Shui's heart reacted. Mother, I am so nervous. This aura is so familiar. I am sure he is related to me. But this is such a coincidence. Luan Luan said as she pulled Yi A Jiang to her side. Yi A Jiang wasn't looking any better but she acted very calm. You don't have to be nervous. In the end, it is still a good thing. You should be happy. Yes, I should be happy. Luin Luin was extremely excited. She remembered the day that her father sent her away. Could they be still alive? They should be alive, right? Luin Luin exclaimed joyfully. She looked at the battle scene. There was the path up the mountains to the village. It was only ten over Li from the village. Why would there be a demonic beast here? Is it normal for demonic beasts to appear here? As they walked along the streets, King Shui could tell that normal people made up a majority of the population in the city. Even those that look well built cannot stand up to a Xianxian demonic beast. He did notice some Xianxian cultivators, but they were quite uncommon since he only sends one every now and then. Chapter 1058. A fated reunion, her brother, Yi A Tian. Raw. In a moment of carelessness, the fire leopard's abdomen, which was one of its weak spots, was scratched by the armored mountain boar's tusk. As a Xianxian demonic beast, the fire leopard might be way more powerful than the late Woshan armored mountain boars. However, the armored mountain boars had a very high defense so their bodies were as hard as rocks. At that moment, the boy viciously thrust his iron bamboo bow staff into the fire leopard's left eye and directly into its brain. Despite how powerful it was, the fire leopard only was the size of a cow. Most demonic beasts wouldn't survive having a staff pierced through their brain. Likewise, the fire leopard quickly died from the injury. After all, 
It was only a single-headed creature. The boy had a muscular and well-proportioned body for his age. He didn't treat the affair like it was anything out of the ordinary. So it was obvious that this was not his first time doing this. The boy had only noticed King Shui and his group at that moment. Once he saw them, he was visibly startled. He could tell from their clothes that the group of people before him were not from his village. He gave King Shui and the others a puzzled look. Ye Zhang and Luan Luan walked forward and removed their veils. A brief moment of delight appeared in the boy's eyes, but he quickly hid it. What's the matter? King Shui could sense that this boy was mature for his age. The boy's eyes were clear, but vigilant as he asked the question in a calm tone. Hi. Can you tell me your name? Luin Luin smiled. I am Yi Tong. The boy replied after some hesitation. Yi A Jiang and Luin Luin were stunned for a moment, but they quickly regained their normal composure. His surname was Yi and not Yi A. Of course, it is possible that his surname had been changed though people don't usually do that. Unless it concerned life and death, one wouldn't change their surname. It was a disgrace to do that, and could even be considered as the worst form of submission to fate just to survive. Luin Luin could sense a special aura from the boy. She felt an incredible connection to him, an immense feeling that made her certain that the two of them were related. She couldn't help but to tremble with emotions as her eyes began to turn misty. King Shui could tell that there was something odd going on. He knew the backstory as Yi A Jiang told him about Luin Luin and herself. However, Luin Luin was not that clear about the past because she was still very young then. King Shui also began to feel very emotional. He hoped that what they had expected was true. If so, Luin Luin's heart would be complete. After he talked to Luin Luin, they still maintained their father and daughter relationship, but it was no longer like when she was young. Furthermore, King Shui was usually away. If she could find her real parents, she would be healed. Even if bones were broken, they could still be held together by sinews. This was also the wondrous power of familial ties. When the boy saw Yi A Jiang and Luin Luin's expression, he had a strong feeling that they looked very familiar, but he knew that this was the first time he met them. Suddenly, he felt that the two women looked a little like his father, one of them also looked like his mother. Something suddenly struck him. He remembered a conversation between his parents that he had overheard once. It was about how old a girl was. We have to pass through here to get to our destination. What about you? Do you live here? Yi A Jiang asked with a faint smile. Due to the key in the world of the nine continents, people matured and grew up very fast and healthily. Thus, even though the boy was only about 11 or 12, he was already quite tall. Yes, I lived here since I was young, the boy replied honestly feeling no ill intent from the woman. Are you the only child? Yi A Jiang looked up at the village ahead. Yes. Where are you from? We rarely have visitors here. The boy said with a grin. King Shui could still see a hint of caution hidden behind the boy's eyes even now. King Shui was secretly quite impressed. He could tell that the boy was quite gifted. This was rare in mountain villages like this, and usually meant that the person's parent may be from another place. We have traveled for some time to get here. Is it possible to visit your home? Luin Luin probed. The boy hesitated as if he wanted to say something. He scanned the people in the group with some excitement in his eyes. Seeing that Luin Luin looked like his parents, he had a good impression of her even without any rational reason. Don't worry, we don't mean any harm. I just feel that you look a little like us. We have lost a few relatives, so we just felt that you could be related to us. Yi A Jiang explained gently. The boy was still hesitant. Luin Luin summoned her own six-headed wind fire wolf and laughed. Don't worry. 
We really have no ill intent. I mean if we really want to hurt you. Do you think you can do anything against it? Lass, don't scare him. Ye A Jiang quickly added. The boy was shocked when he saw the demonic beast, but he still nodded. Let's go. Just as she said, you could easily see my parents if you held me hostage and went to the village. After he said that, he led the way with his three armored mountain boars, while he dragged the fire leopard along. Oh, did you tame those three armored mountain boars? Luin Luin exclaimed with some surprise. She started a conversation with the boy as they had nothing else to do while they headed towards the village. Yes, they helped me out a lot. If I were to fight with that fire leopard myself, it will be tiring. With him, it is so much easier. Yi Tong was exceptionally happy when he spoke about his armored mountain boars. Yi Tong's house was right at the entrance of the village as if it served to protect the village. Yi Tong, are there many demonic beasts like that in the mountains? King Shui asked as he surveyed his surroundings. Just a few, they will appear every now and then and the people in the village will deal with them. I just happened to meet one today. Yi Tong said happily, feeling rather accomplished. After all, he was already a Xianxian cultivator even at his young age. Without them knowing, they had entered the large house. All of the residences in the village had a large courtyard. A house with a courtyard was considered as an expensive property in the cities. Even though the world of the nine continents was very large, that didn't meant that the land was cheap. In fact, land was expensive so only rich people could afford having courtyards. The doors of the large house was made of jujube wood which was readily available in this particular region. It was stronger than pig iron, so normal wild beasts could not damage them. One of the magenta doors was opened while and the other was closed, and they could look into the courtyard through the open door. The courtyard was about 660 meters squared. King Shui saw a few chickens, Jesus and a large dog. There were also a patch of something green, maybe some vegetables. Even though it was winter, some vegetables were like evergreen plants, so this was no longer a surprise for King Shui. Come in. Yi Tong welcomed them into his house. His three armored mountain boars had already rushed in. As Yi Tong tied the dead fire leopard onto one of his boars midway of the journey, the fire leopard was naturally brought into the house as well. King Shui and his group followed Yi Tong into the courtyard of his house. As they were near the entrance of the village, the passing villagers greeted Yi Tong when they saw him. They seemed to get along very well with the boy. Yi Tong also politely greeted the villagers back. He was quite a sweet talker. He also only introduced King Shui and the others as his relatives. When they had reached the edge of the courtyard, they saw a woman walking out. It was difficult to gauge how old she was. She carried an elegance and a well-endowed body. Her simple clothes did little to hide her natural beauty. Her general appearance looked rather similar to Yi Tong and even Luin Luin. Yi A Jiang was rather stunned when she noticed this, but she did not know this woman. When she escaped with her brother, he was not yet married, so she wasn't sure if this woman was her sister-in-law. Luin Luin also looked blankly at the woman. She tried her best to run through her memories and recall that face. Yi A Jiang was at a loss when she saw Luin Luin's expression. Luin Luin could sense a familiar aura from the woman before her and she suddenly started to cry unconsciously. The woman was also shocked when she saw the group of people that her son had brought to their house. She didn't even had the chance to speak when she already noticed a beautiful girl looking at her, crying. Children are like the flesh of their mother's hearts. It is said that a mother would be able to recognize her own daughter, even if her daughter looked different as a child. Besides, Luin Luin still retained some of her features. 
The woman trembled as she walked toward Luin Luin. For a brief moment, she didn't even dare to confirm if the girl was truly her daughter. Luin, Luin, is your name? Luin Luin. The woman held Luin Luin's hand and asked with overflowing emotions as her tears poured on her cheeks. Luin Luin was dazed. Everything was real. When she spotted that woman from a distance, she could already confirm the woman's identity. Her heart of seven orifices was very accurate when it came to such matters. Mo, mother, I am Luin Luin. I am Luin Luin. As she said this, her tears started flowing uncontrollably down her cheeks. Ye A Jiang also started to cry. Just then, a man came into the courtyard. He looked at the group of people and saw his wife hugging a girl as she cried. Before he could even wrap his head around this scenario, he heard a voice which made him froze on the spot. Brother, is it really you? Ye A Jiang immediately recognized her brother. After all, he was already a grown man when she was separated from him, so his looks didn't change that much. Jiang, Jiang. The man walked toward Ye A Jiang, unable to believe his eyes. King Shui only saw the man clearly at that moment. He also could not tell how old the man was from his appearance. The man looked like sort of a mature, family man. From his mannerism, one could tell that he had been through a lot. He even looked a little down and out. Ha ha! This must be a blessing. Ye A family lives. The man hugged Ye A Jiang as he looked up to the skies and exclaimed. He was filled with happiness and helplessness that he even bent backwards a little. Brother, that is Luin Luin. I found little lass and lived with her all these years. Ye A Jiang pulled Ye A Tian and pushed him to look at Luin Luin and his wife. Luin Luin, my daughter is alive. Ye A Tian was overjoyed when he saw Luin Luin. Daddy, when Luin Luin saw Ye A Tian, the memories of that day returned to her clearer than before. She hugged him tightly and cried. Yi Tong looked at them motionless, he was too shocked. King Shui felt a tinge of jealousy when he saw Luan Luan with her actual father. After all, the girl had acknowledged him as her father all these years. It was weird for him to hear her call another man, Daddy. He had fed her washed her clothes and even wiped her butt. No matter what, he would always treat her as his daughter. As if she understood what King Shui was feeling, Ye A Jiang walked over and asked, Are you jealous? Chapter 1059, He is my daddy too. As if she understood what King Shui was feeling, Ye A Jiang walked over and asked, Are you jealous? I am jealous because someone else hugged you. King Shui replied moodily to hide his true feelings. That's my brother. Why are you jealous? Ye A Jiang retorted and threw a glance at King Shui. After she said that, she felt her face turned red. She didn't know why she felt this way. It was as if she had grown even more closer to him. She had already decided that even though they were only married in name, she would still choose to be with him. All right now. I am not jealous. Actually, I am more happy than any of you. You don't know how my heart aches when I see how lonely you were. King Shui said as he held Ye A Jiang's hand. When she heard King Shui words, Ye A Jiang felt a warm feeling in her heart. This man had changed her life. If she didn't meet him, she reckoned that she would never be able to see her brother or Luan Luan again. This was also the man who opened the door to her heart. Somehow, his feelings had reached her even without her knowing how. She had never imagined that the young man who once called her, Master, would reach this status in her heart step by step. When she thought about it, everything seemed like a dream. Well, you should treat me better in the future. Ye A Jiang smiled. Gentleness poured from her eyes like water as she looked at King Shui. Needless to say, even if you want to eat my flesh, 
I'll cut it for you. King Shui laughed. You're so annoying. Who wants to eat your flesh? All right. Let me introduce you to my brother. Ye Jiang pulled King Shui over and gestured for the others to come forward. Ye Jiang walked over to the dazed Yi Tong first. Kid, I'm your aunt. Let me give you something. She gave him a 10,000-year-old peach wood bow staff. This staff was just right for the boy's current strength. As he was still young, it was unsuitable to give him a better weapon as he wouldn't be able to handle it and it would be a waste. Yi Tong rubbed the back of his head, appearing to be a little reserved. Yi A Jiang patted his head and placed the bow staff, which have a length that reached his brow, in his hand. Thank you, aunt. You're so beautiful. Yi Tong laughed heartily. You are quite a sweet talker. Definitely better than your dad. Yi A Jiang praised happily. At the same time, Yi A Tian held Luin Luin's hand. His face was red with excitement and joy. Yi A Jiang and Yi Tong also joined them. Yi A Jiang turned to the woman and introduced herself. Hi sister-in-law. I am Yi A Jiang. I'm his only younger sister. Jiang, I know you. Though this is our first time meeting, your brother told me a lot about you. It is great that I finally got the chance to meet you. Now, we are all reunited. The woman said warmly as she held Yi A Jiang's hand, she was also overjoyed. Yi A Tian smiled and nodded at King Shui. Jiang, why don't you introduce your friends to me? Yi A Tian requested. Let me do it. Luin Luin volunteered. Daddy, he is also my dad. He brought me up. He had fed me, clothed me and even cleaned up after me. I have always called him my daddy. And, he is also my aunt's husband. Luin Luin hugged King Shui's neck as she introduced him to her biological father. Yi A Jiang explained briefly about how Luin Luin met King Shui. Even though she didn't go into the details, she had covered most of the important points. Yi A Tian looked towards King Shui and gave him a 90 o bow. Hi. I won't say anything else. It is Luin Luin's fortune to acknowledge you as her father and I really want to thank you so much. No matter what, she'll always be your daughter. Dear brother, you don't have to do this. Jiang will skin me alive. Luin Luin is your biological daughter, but it does not conflict with the fact that she is also my daughter. No matter how many children I have, in my heart, she will always be as important as my own biological children. King Shui used his arms and straightened Yi A Tian from his bowing position. Brother, I still have to thank you. Regardless of the reason, we were unable to raise her ourselves. Just let me give you a bow as thanks. The woman said stubbornly and King Shui could not dissuade her, so he quickly stopped her when she bowed down. Sister-in-law, please don't. After everyone was introduced to each other, they all went into the largest hall. The huge hall was filled with all the necessary furnitures, but the craftsmanship was a little lacking. After all, Carpenters here in a mountain village were not that skillful. The sumptuous food was prepared very quickly as the women all went to help Yi A Tian's wife. They had managed to make a few delicious dishes with the fire leopard. King Shui measured Yi A Tian's strength. The man was an early martial saint. Without King Shui's help, Yi A Jiang and Luin Luin would need many more years to reach their current strength even if both of them had a unique constitution which would help them grow stronger over time. Yi A Jiang may even took several decades while Luin Luin, being more talented, would still need at least 10 years. Brother, our parents. Yi A Jiang sighed as she asked despondently. Jiang, before he died, our father told us to never go back and to flee as far as we could. He exchanged his life for ours. Yi A Tian gave a heavy sigh. Brother, 
Didn't you let Luin Luin run away by herself, because the Lion King's Ridge were after you and your wife's lives? Ye Jiang thought for a moment before she asked. Luin Luin was very small when she met King Shui. Ye Jiang was curious to know how the little girl had reached the Green Cloud Continent. At that time, we were both afraid that they might catch us. So we decided to separate from one another and ran in different directions. I reached the southwest edge of the northern sacred Lu continent and met my wife there. But, I inadvertently brought misfortune on her entire family. I sent Luin Luin away because I wanted to kill myself, but the people from the Moon Palace sect intervened. That region was controlled by the Moon Palace sect and they could not tolerate the Lion King's Ridge members acting so arrogantly on their territory. Just like that, I escaped with just some minor injuries, but I had lost Luin Luin. Your sister-in-law nearly went insane because of this, Ye Qian recalled calmly. Ye Jiang now realized that the little lass only managed to survive the journey between the two continents because of her heart of seven orifices. Otherwise, it would have been impossible. Her meals were also provided by the demonic beasts that she met during her journey. On the way, monkeys would even feed the girl with fruits. However, Ye Qian and his wife, Ye Lan, couldn't help but to feel frightened when they think about their daughter's past. After all, they were unaware that Luin Luin had a special body constitution and didn't know how powerful King Shui and his group were. Luin Luin held on to Yi Lan's arm as she spoke to her brother, Yi A Tong. Luin Luin was very curious about her younger brother. Her parents only had him after they settled down for some years as they missed their daughter too much. Yi Qian looked at Luin Luin's white feathered falcon. He remembered riding on it to escape and how his daughter also escaped with its help. Moments before, the white feathered falcon wrapped its large wings around Yi Qian affectionately when it saw him. Once again, Yi Qian couldn't control his tears. He did not know how many tears had fell that day, but they were all tears of joy. Today was a happy day for all. Previously, Luin Luin had introduced King Shui as Yi A Jiang's husband. Yi A Qian didn't find it surprising as Yi A Jiang should be married by her age. However, he did not know the details. After their meal, King Shui said that he and the others would be going to the mountains to explore. This was just an excuse for the recently reunited family to spend more time with each other. After all, they must had so much they wanted to say to each other. Little Fatty was happy that the Ye family had managed to find each other, while Lin Zanan was similarly happy for them. It gave him a small glimmer of hope that there might still be survivors of the Lin family. Grandfather Lin, if we managed to find any other members of the Lin family alive, we would definitely be happy. But that happened so long ago, if all of them had really passed away, I hope you won't feel too disappointed. King Shui consoled. I know, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to live till today. I have already moved on. Lin Zanan shook his head. They were at a small mountain peak. The air was fresh and the winter sun brought some warmth. From where they were, they could see all the way over the horizon. With the boundless sky above them, they suddenly felt so small in the very vast world. Dai King, Yu Ruyin and Hai Dongqing chatted and every now and then King Shui could hear their laughter. Sometimes, one of them would sound angry as if that person was offended by the conversation in some way. Actually, Yi A Tian came to this place to look for his daughter, but was afraid of the people from the Lion King's Ridge. Thus, he had changed their surname from Yi A to Yi. At that time, he and his wife were unwilling to entertain the thought that their daughter would travel through that wide wasteland between the two continents as they think that she wouldn't survive that sort of journey. As such, 
they chose to believe that their daughter was somewhere within the northern sacred Lu continent. That was until today, when Yi A Jiang brought their daughter back to them. King Shui smiled as he stroked Yi A Jiang's head when he saw that the corner of her eyes was still red. How old are you? Still crying like that? Let me help you wipe your mucus. You're so detestable. Yi A Jiang stomped her leg and complained as she pushed King Shui's hand away. King Shui grabbed her hand and said, My dear missus, you are so attractive when you are embarrassed. Yi A Jiang blushed and rolled her eyes. She touched her face, as her expression turned gentle. Before King Shui could fully enjoy that sensation, she grabbed his ear and twisted it. Hey, not so hard. It will fall off. King Shui played along with her as it didn't really hurt. King Shui knew that from the moment a man and woman fall in love, a woman would slowly change. Even a woman with an icy personality would eventually warm up. People will change for their lovers, sometimes even without themselves knowing. When he first saw Kang Hai Mingyu, she gave him the impression of a beautiful woman with a disdainful look. But now, he only saw her elegance and not that air of disdain. King Shui looked at Yi A Jiang blankly, feeling a little distracted. She suddenly grabbed a handful of his hand angrily. You may be looking at me, but you are thinking of someone else, right? Oh, sour face. Master is jealous. Smack. You are making me angry on purpose. Yi A Jiang punched him again but quickly soothed him after that. A smile appeared on her face, as if she was a goddess who fell from the skies. I don't have that courage. Your husband is wrong. Please let me serve you tonight. King Shui looked into Yi A Jiang misty eyes and chuckled. Die. After that, Yi A Jiang ran away in embarrassment. Chapter 1060 Yi A Jiang's flustered heart. When they returned to the house, the sky was already turning dark. King Shui didn't know what Yi A Jiang and Yi A Tian talked about, but from their expressions, he could sense that they had reached a mutual understanding. Luin Luin was elated. She knew that her parents had chosen to send her away, risking their lives. This was a sort of parental love toward children which wouldn't change no matter what happened. Now, she could also fully be embraced by their love. Yi A Jiang also looked visibly more relaxed. This had been one of her worries and now it had been finally resolved. This event was quite significant to her, perhaps as important in her heart as annihilating the Lion King's Ridge. If she had to choose between exterminating the Lion King's Ridge and the safety of her brother's family, she would choose the latter without any hesitation. This fateful incident was really a blessing. Even if she had not hadn't sought revenge for her parents, Yi A Jiang would feel satisfied right now, as she knew that the Yi A clan had found a successor. If her parents were alive, they wouldn't want their children to seek revenge for them as their safety, and that of their grandchildren, was definitely more important. However, if there was even a tiny chance to get rid of the Lion King's Ridge, she knew that she could not give up. She found it almost impossible to live on, knowing that her parents' killers were alive. King Shui could sense that Yi A Tian was worried. When he had first met Yi A Tian, King Shui had felt that the man seemed to carry a constant worry. Though it did abate a little, it seemed to have worsened when they came back from the mountains. King Shui could tell that Yi A Tian had been informed that he would go with Yi A Jiang to the Lion King's Ridge. Yi A Tian took a broader consideration about matters, as he was older. He was not as impulsive as he was before. After all, their entanglements with the Lion King's Ridge happened so many years ago that it was not something they needed to settle in a hurry. The fact that Yi A Jiang managed to meet with him here proved that his sister already decided to head for Lion King's Ridge and that she was relying on someone, his brother-in-law, King Shui. Yi A Tian was not afraid of death, 
but he knew it was unwise for them to risk their lives if they already knew it would all be in vain. He couldn't help feeling uneasy, despite being very grateful to King Shui. People usually don't realize it when they are doing something foolish. If they did, they wouldn't be doing it in the first place. Right now, Yi e Qian could not shake off the feeling that his sister had made a questionable decision. Over the years, he had heard quite a lot about Lion King's Ridge. However, limited by his resources, he knew that the information he had was just the tip of the iceberg. Unfortunately, even that bit of information already gave him the feeling that the challenges before them were like an insurmountable mountain. After dinner, King Shui sat in his own room thinking about some matters. Just then, the door opened. King Shui smiled when he saw that it was Ye Jiang. Jiang, are you looking for me to spend the night with you? King Shui teased the beautiful goddess. As her mood was good, this was a chance he couldn't miss. In the past, he could always feel her deep bitterness, but she seemed to have lightened up a lot and now, she was expressing a greater range of emotions. Naughty kid, you are asking for a beating. Yi e Jiang retorted with a smile as she sat down beside King Shui. Jiang, I miss you. Come, give me a hug. King Shui held her waist and gave her a light hug before letting her go. Yi e Jiang thought that King Shui would continue hugging her for longer, but she didn't expect that he would just let her go so quickly. For a moment, she couldn't believe it but she started smiling. King Shui, I already told my brother about our plans. Can we stay here for a few days? We have to show him that we have the capabilities to carry out our plans. Otherwise, he will be troubled. Yi e Jiang smiled as she said this, keeping her gaze on King Shui. Sure, how will you reward me? King Shui grinned as he looked at the smiling woman in front of him, one who possessed transcendent beauty. I'm already yours, so how else am I supposed to reward you? Yi e Jiang narrowed her attractive eyes, her lips curling upwards in a mesmerizing manner. For a moment, King Shui was stunned by her alluring voice and that slightly seductive look. He couldn't control himself and planted a kiss on those sexy lips. Yi e Jiang was startled by King Shui's sudden action. People usually opened their mouths when they were shocked. This was just the right moment. King Shui thrust his tongue into her mouth, his kiss wild yet meticulous. Just like an invader, he was trying to get as much as he could from the moment. Yi e Jiang's mind became blank and her body became very stiff. This irreproachable woman had no prior preparations for this and for a moment, her brain stopped. When she could finally react, she found that he was already kissing her and immediately felt some embarrassment and shock. She only felt the same sort of affection after a while. She instinctively closed her eyes, forgetting to push King Shui away as she let her emotions take over. She only pushed him away when it became difficult to breathe. A red, flustered Yi e Jiang touched her own lips when she saw King Shui smiling at her. She could see a cheekiness in that smile and a bit of romantic sentiment, so she averted her eyes a little. How is it? Yi e Jiang asked bashfully. Her voice was very soft, but she continued looking at him. Great. It's great. This is the best taste in the world. Oh, let go. I was wrong. Yi e Jiang pinched the flesh at the side of King Shui's waist, a rather sensitive spot. King Shui did not feel any pain but just played along. Anyway, having fun with Yi e Jiang was also a way to get closer to her. Indeed, their relationship improved quickly in just one day. You were getting audacious. Didn't we agree that you'd let me decide when we'd get intimate? Yi e Jiang said, somewhat happy and angry at the same time. Of course. But we are just holding hands and kissing. We're not doing that really intimate. Unless, of course, 
You're the one that can't hold back. You're really a scoundrel. Ye Jiang couldn't help but feel that the man before her was really thick-skinned at times. Come, kiss me again. No, why won't you kiss me? I'll get angry if you continue to be like this. Ye Jiang said, lowering her head a little. Okay, I promise I'll ask you first next time. Before he finished his sentence, Ye Jiang ran away. He couldn't help but feel that it would be very hard for him to go all the way with her. He mentioned before that he would let her willingly take off her own clothes for him. Was that even possible in the future? King Shui felt that it would be difficult, because she was Ye Jiang. In a flash, they stay had already lasted three days. Ye Qian already witnessed Ye Jiang and Luan Luan's capabilities and was shocked when he found out they were that powerful. Mostly, he was in awe. Ye Qian knew how powerful the heart of seven orifices was. He was also very grateful to King Shui when he found out that his daughter would live past her 30th birthday because of his efforts. He even asked King Shui to help him see if Ye Tong had the same talent. The boy had tamed the three armored mountain boars when he had been very young. However, since Luin Luin already had the heart of seven orifices, it was unlikely that Ye Tong would also have it. There had never been an instance where there were two holders of the heart of seven orifices within three generations. King Shui checked and shook his head. He doesn't have the heart of seven orifices but still, he is very talented. Luan Luan can guide him in the future if she is free. He will definitely go far.